city. Bright lights. They say that everyone gets their 15 minutes of fame. But why is it that some stars shine brighter and never seem to dim? Names like Knuckle Dude. Make some noise for your official Capcom Cup 2016 champion. Mena RD, Gachi Kun, Adon. They've proven that they're different. They've etched their names in history and made moments that we'll never forget. But here we are, Capcom Cup 9. The world's finest have fought for the cup. And we've seen flashes of greatness, but we've also seen plenty of lights flicker. 16 players remain, but the spotlight is only big enough for one. This is the Capcom Cup. Top 16. Beautiful, a magnificent, an astounding send-off. Let's take a look at this top side bracket for the top 16 winners here at Capcom Cup 9. It's a beautiful sight. There's a lot of Europeans in this winner's side, Steve. Yeah. That's what I like to see. <laughs> uh, Takamura from Belgium who upset the bookies by defeating Idom in the pools. <laughs> He's going up against the 2017 champion, Mena RD, who's feeling hella confident. What an incredible group stage he had. Ending Walker, the 16-year-old oh prodigy. The young man. Who looked like he cannot lose. The young man. All season, he's going up against one of the most electrifying performers of this week, both in Capcom Cup and in Street Fighter League. NL of South Korea. We've got Kawano, the Woo! man, the man who is looking to do something that's never been done before, Steve. The triple crown. He's the Evo champ. He's also the Street Fighter League world champion with a good eight squad. Can he add Capcom Cup to that? Well, Zen from China, Ooh. the last chance qualifier who came out of nowhere yeah. and surprised us yeah. all, has already dispatched an unbelievable list of previous Capcom Cup champions, previous EVO champions. Is he going to add Kuano's name to that Ooh. list on his run? And then the last talk that match talk, Logan we have got talk on the talk. winner's side, VX Bao, another unknown quantity from China. He came in and swept a stacked group uh -huh. with his Cody. He's going up against the incredibly informed Angry Bird. Ooh. Both undefeated players will collide in our last winner side match. And now we have Idom, our last USA hope, still alive in this bad boy. One of my favorites to make it out. Of course, the unstoppable Pugera, holding it down very, very, very adequately with a boxer, I might add, a Balrog, I might add, and then M. Lizard. I love Bro this guy, one holding of the, it down for the working man, the, the older players. Man, one of the oldest players here in our bracket, and honestly, I feel like it's um, incredible to see him here performing at this level, especially in the last legs of Street Fighter V. Vega Patch, one of the three fongs to make three it out fongs. here to let you know what he brings to the table. Of course, a character we don't get to see that much. Vega Patch has been putting in an amazing time, especially to get this far. But then, of course, you see it right below. 
Phenom, the young Phenom, always out of his grasp, has had an amazing Street Fighter V run, but has never been able to clinch that Alt Soul title. I feel like my man's about due in all honesty. And of course, Momochi, a legend known for being here and showing up to every Capcom Cup, I might I add, as well as Phenom, as well as Phenom. Phenom and Momochi are the only two the players only that two. have qualified for every, every Capcom one Cup in Street Fighter V. And think about that. So now we have Phenom going up against Momochi, and once again, I feel like this is going to be an historic match between two legends. A young legend on one side, Momochi being one of the oldest. And then we see at the Mewi! end, the, the Val Master going up against Mr. Crimson. The Chun-Li still alive and kicking, coming from an immaculate, an amazing SFL EU run, so adequately told and narrated by you and the boys. And like I said, it's a uh, one of those things you have to take into account is how hard it was to, I feel like, stay alive past the group play here on across all fronts of these players. Absolutely. Of course, Mr. Crimson uh, and Foulmaster both from France. It's going to be That's uh, the thing. a heartbreak to see one of them leave. But let's see what these guys are playing for. Of course, on the stage, you've already seen the cup, the coveted Beautiful. Capcom Cup. But there is a very significant prize pool on offer here as well. Let's take a look at that. $120,000 for the winner. The guys that are not even in top 16 that are sitting in the crowd, they've already picked up one and a right, half. Game. Right, exactly. Yeah. 1500 right there. Of course, that 3000 for the tail end just rounded it all the way up to that big prize pool. I mean, honestly, life-changing money right there at $120,000. Do you know what? Community changing money. We've already seen what Mena RD I has been able to hand, do for man. the DR with that money. Uh, who will be taking that home and changing their life and possibly the lives of so many people around them? That is going to be the big question. Mena here looking to recapture that glory of 2017. He's going up against Takamura. It's time to start the action. Let's make some noise for Capcom Cup 9 Top 16 winner's side. Takamura, of course, with the incredible run in the group. Yes. And as I said, he already got the big upset victory against Idol, but Takamura seems to take big names every time he travels. He exploded on the scene, CEO, he beat Tokido yep, yep, in that yep. Akuma mirror match, and since then, he's had an incredible career every time he steps on the oh, yeah. But if we talk about Mena being a returning champion, knows he has what it takes to be on this stage, has proven it before, wow. uses his community as well just to get that level up, to get that power up. You see Kaba out there cheering the entire weekend, to the corner we go, just to make sure my man is doing well. Great challenge coming from the corners right now. Very interesting to see the character picks as well. Yeah. We've seen this matchup a number of times in Street Fighter League US. Of course, Mena on the same team as Angry Birds, who have run this match a number of times. But Takamura has a very unique individual style. He beats out the DP with the EX Tatsu, and he's back in the corner. The damage and the Oki. There's the throw, and he has to respect it. Oh, Yo, he doesn't no, have to I don't. The no, I don't. Afterwards, though. Activated on a B trigger right here. Oh, gets the cross up to the Tatsu, puts yourself in the corner, spins a little bit of that B trigger as well. Oh, he rushed activate. Oh, Turns the out, oh my god, he does get out. Manage to get the full punish there, though. Oh, big oh my god, this is gonna hurt. Got another CA there, on the right? table, though. CA on the table right now. But Mena. One bar EX still there, lingering for Takamura. Yeah, they've got to do this the old school way. No V-Trigger available to both of them. And low forward will get the kill for either of these. But of course, Luke has far superior projectiles here. It's down to Takamura to get his way in. Nicely spaced, and he wasn't ready throw. for the dash. Mena catches him asleep at the wheel. Round First two. round, wow. Mena's run. Point. This last year, I feel like offline, online, no matter what you look at, I feel like it's been him kind of molding his crew, his stable of characters to be able to deal with a Capcom Cup top eight, especially one so diverse as this. It's this knockdown, still fighting, get closer and closer to that corner, men in control. Fight back and move with these medium buttons. Just outside the range of that move forward, and he gets put back into the corner for his troubles. Doesn't manage to check the run cancel, oh. but doesn't matter. There's the stun, and it should be the first game from Mena. No drops here, finishing his plate. And he puts the first game on the board. Kaba. Like I said, the entire... 
the entire weekend. When I'm talking about the entire weekend, Kaba has been in the crowd making noise for Men of RD, taking that first game over Takamura. And like you said, those the character selection is something that you pointed out early on. And it was strange to see. I was thinking we were going to get the Akuma. Obviously, Men are prepared for the Akuma coming into this. He tries out the game firsthand. That's going to cost him that first The thing for Takamura here, right, is like, even if he goes Ken or Akuma, Men is very comfortable in both yeah, of those matches yeah. anyway with the loop, but he's also got the birdie if he needs to switch, and that matchup is really difficult for both of those characters also. So, you know, the strengths there with Mena, and of course, Mena's been on this platform before, many, many times before now, uh, going all the way back to 2017. He is no stranger to the pressure. He's going to just execute his game plan that he's worked on. And as I said, begin. he's got a tremendous amount of experience in this matchup. Street Fighter League, he was on the same yeah, team yeah. Uh, as Angry Bird, who of course uh, is down there on the Brown other side of the bracket with the Ken. So he's got this clear experience. But Takamura's no. going to have to really show something. He's shown a beautiful cross cut. Okay. He's here. Testing at this range. Fighting back mid, mid screen here. Takamura coming in on this corner, though. Ooh, nice nice. punish on the forward fist, and he's in the corner, catches him with a counter hit combo into the crouch fist. Nice damage and stun. And again, Mena refuses Ooh. to take the mix up. Beautiful, beautiful with punish again. Oh, and that time he gets him to bite, plays it safe. And Takamura gladly takes that round. Excuse me, excuse me, Takamura. First round, game number two, looking a lot more calm. And that's the big difference here. Takamura and Angry Bird have very different approaches yeah. to their pressure. Mm -hmm. Ken is so very good at making you guess on the wake up, and right now Mena has generally Ooh. guessed very well. These whiff punishes are beautiful. And at, at the perfect range, is that not far enough? Go for it. Gets a knockdown mid screen with the EX. It goes right back to zone, and this little tail range that he's playing at, putting him in range. Ah, oh, does catch him. Oh, a cheeky side switch, but he blocks it. He's actually minus as well, so he could have challenged. Oh, the forwards, two throws in a row. Okay, heavy, nice sweep. Trigger on the table. There's the activation after the sweep. Oh, little shimmy right here with the crouch immediately. Take that, punch. There's no real follow up afterwards, and he's still got the life lead. Right. Falling he's back. Wait this out. Oh, tries to enter goal for Tatsu. Yeah, so three frame Tatsu after that. I'm trying to beat him to the punch if he wanted to steal frames. It's the activation. Takamura that looking for a big, big jump in and he gets it. And we're 1-1 one, one now, all level. The hard reads. The Tatsu didn't kid. come off. And I feel like, you know, Mena could have got a much bigger punish than that, but Doing Tatsu, you're not really ready for that in that yeah. situation. It's a very, and that's the oh, thing Takamura's play style is that's very, very it lends to that. It lends wild. To that. It's always been very wild. Unpredictable. Oh, big crush here. Yeah, that back roundhouse really clipping the start of that fireball. Great usage of the tail in his range here. He has to be careful not to whiff though, because Takamura has shown that he is very adept at punishing. Yeah. For that low forward confirm, both of them are. Right there in that same range. Got the medium kick. Whoa, whoa. Imagine if he with that. Yeah, men are just going for the light after that block DX tattoo there. Target knockdown. Plus frames for your reversal straight away. Wow, steal some frames to the stand fierce. Looking for a delayed throw, but nothing came from Mena, which was brave. He could have been back thrown into the corner. Another, Another jump. huge. Oh, and he oh, doesn't the finish drop. the combo. Just believe in it, gets the throw tech. EX Tatsu once again blocked. Check, activate with the target combo. V reversal to take the momentum oh back. Oh my Steals God, he the got turn, two hits, but it doesn't matter because he still back throws him. And now the pressure is on. Is he going to wake up? He wakes up with buttons this time instead of the DB. On to meter, the EX catches him trying to move. Tatsu to get in and a throw from Mena to close out this first round of game number three. I'm telling you, the first time Takamura's got two bars and he has EX Tatsu on block. Wait for this EXDP to come out because Mena is challenging every single time. Low forward and he spends the bar, gets the damage and the stun. Corner carry and then backs off. Yo, okay. Doesn't get the full punish on that one. Definitely within range to get the target. Oh, nice anti air. He said, I'm not going to risk the DP here. Control in this mid screen game still. EX Tatsu will get right back to the mid screen. He's really been liking having this, making sure he's got a lot of stage behind on the fight. This offense the men has been throwing on right here. Crouching, medium punch, and the tail. Oh, that was clean! What a beast of punishment! That was clean! Oh, 
D-Shift just to get a little space. Confirm into the target combo. Wake up, crouching, medium punch. Not gonna do it. That staggered pressure again. Here comes Takamura. Stand heavy punch. Oh, D reversal here after the pressure. Backing up a little bit. Goes back in with the EX Tatsu. Dex to throw the standing heavy kick. Backs up a little bit. No activation. Oh, and the confirm. That's a... What? Oh, big damage. A guess Still away alive. from losing. A guess away from losing. EX. Oh, oh. You. oh just jump. Oh, out. my Trade. God. Where was the invincibility? In favor yeah. of Mina R. D. And Mena pulls into the lead 2-1. Mm. What an incredible match to start off. These guys are swinging it out. That beautiful V-shift punish. Now, Ken, if um, if Luke does stand fierce and cancels into the heavy flash knuckle, Ken can just DP uh, and it will always catch the charge. But Takamura mm. went for the V-shift and got the full punish yeah, instead. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful stuff there. He's jumping and starting to get a lot more constant. Great leads. Just standing at this tail end range. Oh, oh my what God. an interrupt! Oh, he didn't get the juggle. He's doing the hard stuff. Knuckle. Oh my word, he's leaving damage on the table left, right, and center, and he gets crushed out of now. Full charge. Both of these guys. Nerves on the table, I'm calling. I'm not sure what's happening here. Oh no. Oh, yeah, not sure what's going on, but. It looks like Mena has got up, and we're trying to work out what's happened here with the controller issue. We've had no controller yeah. issues all week so far. This is the first time I've seen this, and honestly, I don't know what's happening. We saw a couple of dropped opportunities yeah. in that round, uh, uncharacteristic dropped opportunities in that round as well. So once we find out exactly what's going on here, the action will continue, but of course we see Mena in the lead. Yeah, Mena in the lead on the last count, but... Gonna try to get these controller issues sorted out. Obviously, sometimes you just can't avoid it. Not sure what it is, but I'm sure we will be uh, getting back to it. But the way Mena has converted that last game there, what we were seeing, really is a back and forth kind of battle. Takamura all hot on his heels, though. I'm gonna tell you right now with some of the plays he's been calling out. Absolutely, you're really seeing uh, both of these guys at the top of their game. They both ground out their group stages and overcome some incredible names. And they're really showing why they've done that, to be honest with you. Both of these guys, despite that last round with a couple of issues with the controller, we've seen some amazing conversions. That beautiful V-shift punish. Oh my we've God. We've seen some wonderful whiff punishes as well. But Mena, I have to say, Mena has been incredibly brave as well. He's been waking up with EX. He's yeah. been challenging with buttons as well. You know, he has not been allowing Takamura to really run right over him. Takamura's play style, though, very difficult uh, to deal with because I've seen a lot of normals cancelled into run there's right. a big big gap there a lot of that's actually punishable even on hit yeah, because yeah. of the speed uh, the the length of the run animation yeah. but he's just catching uh, men are off guard so very very difficult difficult situation to be in and we talked about how it was just the fact that he kind of plays in an unpredictable pattern right yeah. like as good as a player he is and it's really good call outs at time because it throws even players like men are off at times to so where you're like i'm not sure if i'm supposed to commit to something it's definitely the strength of ken you know he's able to throw so many different things yeah. at you sometimes he's gonna steal he's gonna you know throw some stuff at you that realistically on paper by the numbers he shouldn't be able to get away with so we're gonna run this match back from the top it's still 2-1 to Mena, and we're just going to go uh, back into it. All right, Fireball. Once again, stand at this tail range. Oh, he actually does follow up the target combo. Back throw. But we've but seen Mena. great whiff punishes from Takamura. Here's another throw, though, for Mena in control. Respecting the meaty low forward comes out, and there's the confirm. Oh, back back throw, throw straight into the, the corner. Good, good check. Those that was wake up buttons we were talking about that before. Slightly delay button as well. Very smart from him. You know those throws. Definitely will become a problem, especially for uh -oh. Ken in the corner. Straight out, and you'll see him, Mena, going for that anti-air option. He's not going to get baited out by that EX Tatsu. Oh, dash up once again. This time, Bugs from Takamura. EX Tatsu to get nice. out of the corner. Full CA on the table right now for Mena RD, though. Takamura, no trigger in sight. One bar EX. Ooh, oh, and my nice God, empty, empty jump low jump forward. Low forward. In, and he oh. catches him with the target combo. And we talked These about guys, this. man.
And we talked about this, the unpredictableness of Takamura coming in play. He's playing at this range. I've been looking at this the entire set. He's playing at this range, crouching medium, crouching medium punch, low forward. He can get these confirms. Speaking of a low forward confirm, here comes Mena, fades out the EX uppercut. Big punish, big damage on the table, and knocked down in the corner. What's next? Take throw, tries to use that suppressor for the frames. Takamura not taking the bait. Yeah, Takamura doesn't want a V-reversal there. He knows he needs the V-trigger activation for the comeback. That could have been Ooh, it. Big He's going to get it here. Activate off the standing heavy kick. Dash up. No. Oh, my bait word. for bait. Big damage. The EX not going to work out your way. Light Tatsu not going to be enough. Wake up punch from Mina RD. He's still alive, though. Oh, and he wakes up into that sandblaster. The V trigger usage from Mina right there. That turnaround after the activate was so perfect. Takamura again, you're seeing. He's just trying to throw him off his game there. Not finishing up the combo with the traditional style and going for the Tatsu to mix him up. But Mena is not being thrown off and he's now at set point. Constantly challenging on Wake Up. Takamura's even been backing up, giving him a little space. And still, Mena insists with the buttons. He's like, Takamura no. Takamura needs to shut the door on him and uh, just tighten these strings up because Mena. Back throw. No. Again, he's not getting baited out. It happened a few times in the first couple of games, but now Mena not anti airing with that DP. And Takamura needs to find a different answer to get in. Oh, that's just straight a into a counter hit jab. Oh, to get Yo, through that straight knock through the straight block string. Let me in. Big damage. He's not still alive. dead yet. Takamura has a chance. Meter. Crouching hit. Medium punch. Oh activate. my god, he went for the reset. Ooh, oh, and, and Mena is punish. aware. The awareness of Mena, he knew that at that range, it was not a true string, there was a gap. You're not getting a free V-Trigger activation on me. The CA through that tiniest, tiniest of gaps. What a play. Mena RD. But still, what a set though. Oh my God, Bro. the back and forth. The twist and the turns already on our first set of this top eight. Let's go. Excuse me, top 16. Oh my gosh. Well, it's Mena now that is going to be in the top eight, winning that first winner's match. Hey, look, I'm going to tell you right now, you've seen it kind of evolve. First, we saw Takamura playing this range. Honestly, I was already surprised by the fact that we weren't going to get the Akuma. But the ranges he was playing at, crouch medium punch, crouch medium kick, confirming a lot of times spending meter to fight back to the other side, typically the middle of the screen. We saw a lot of that mid-screen battle, but we also saw Mena making the adjustments with the reads, whether it be crouch jab for the check in the target, or just crouching heavy punch to get under that EX Tatsu. But look at Mena RD in this first game, though. And look at Cabo. <laughs> Enthusiastic as ever. Beautiful whip punches here, but Takamura brought it back and he was able yeah. to really make uh, mm. Mena crack a couple of times. Put him here into the corner and I believe he opened him up in the end. Good There's jump. The jump in. Yeah, that's the one we saw I really start to open up. A couple of successful jump ins coming from Takamura. Big damage conversion right now. Man. Yeah, that time we didn't see the activation. Got the step kick. I'm not sure what happened there. Mm, back throw once again. And actually just trying to shimmy it out right here. Goes for another throw. And this is really scary. Had to hold that BD right there and wake up. It's still a challenge. Yeah, that empty jump low. Caught him walking. Oh. There's the target combo that sealed that round. Oh, that like Tatsu. Yeah, what have a got check. The... Oh. No, but go on. He that got tech the... on the back throw was so, so on point. The composer there, Takamura looking for the cheeky reset, Oof. the Ken back throw into the corner to give him not just the positioning, but of course the pressure as well. But Mena wasn't having any of it. And, you know, being able to close it out with the sound blaster as the heavy tattoo went straight over his head. But boy, that interruption on that low forward EX fireball V trigger activation attempt was beautiful. Oh, That's the kind real. of play that is deserving of Capcom Cup. And Mena is the player who advances into the top eight winners semifinals. As we oh. move on with the young prodigy himself, 16 years of age, the youngest player ever to make it to the Capcom Cup against the seasoned veteran. NL, well into his 30s, he is quite of a late bloomer. Street oh, yeah. Fighter V was his first competitive game, yeah, yeah. which is incredible to say, but what an amazing career he has had in this title. I was about to say, Street Fighter League has been there, coming off of one of the back of their most successful season league appearances yet. 
playing amazing throughout this entire Capcom Cup week and now sitting on the stage with the potential to go on to this top eight. But Young Ending Walker, we were talking about this as well, playing games with his father. You know, started from a, a completely different first-person shooter game and now here playing he, Street Fighter he picked this on game the big up stage. Basically at the start of lockdown. Mm. And he got to a point where he won 13 online events back to back to back. And that's not just online events with, you know, a small handful of players in. This was five World Warrior. Yeah. He won all five of them. And then he won the finals. And alongside of that, he won another seven Salt Mine Leagues, I think, back to back. Yes, that's where I'm he familiar was with so him. dominant. He went on to win UFA, his first ever international event. This is only his second yeah. ever international event, and here he is on the winner's side. This eight, so, so deadly, and of course, we've seen much more at this season than ever before. Here we go, game number one here, NL. Interesting Andy to see Walker. NL go for the loop pick. I mean, I feel like this has been this tool yet, but we all know Andy Walker. More than enough XP to deal. Oh, nice. Great checker gets the target knocked down. Back to the middle of the screen. They go. The with a light kick into the EX flash. Not for me. Dash is underneath. He knows it's not a real setup. Didn't have the EX to confirm into the knuckle there. No anti air. Guard by that. Cancellation stations. Here we go. Full combo and the dash under. I love it. Oh, what a check. Uh oh, that looks impressive. Real reset. Plus of the plus. More down. pressure. Look at the carry. Still bit got of the gray. bar as well. So he gets another two turns of pressure if Ending can get in. There's the trade. The flicker. Needs to be careful. Oh, oh beautiful the whip, whip punish. punish. Beautiful whip punish. It's so difficult to whip punish. The flicker and NL showing his composer there fighting out of the corner. In L, this year has been pretty good compared to his other years. Especially looking at the results to get him onto this stage. Making it out of group play as well. The loop holds the well and the stun oh on Young Ending Walker. This is not looking He's good. He's going to spend it all and close it out into the DPCA. And that's going to be uh. golden letters on the screen, I believe. Dead tour. And in L. Yeah, Andy Walker comes back from this. He's looked so composed all week on the stage, but he told me that underneath this cool exterior, he's really fine inside. Let's see how he comes back from that round, because what a huge statement that is from him. But also, he's been that excited. I want to get as much challenge as I can out of this event, and a lot oh, he's of games being well played. Right? Right? Yes. He's playing. Yeah. Challenge against Chris CCH. He's playing about 80 games the other day against Idol. He's playing NL a bunch of games in the practice rooms as well. There's the whip punish. This kid's happy to play in there. He just wants to level up. Oh, the job of contesting, but now that medium kick, B trigger activating back throw. Here comes NL. Small check. He backs up just a little bit to that charge knuckle. Oh, nice anti-air. Yeah, really great awareness of the range as well. That jump angle. Goes for a mini shimmy right there. A little mini shimmy right there. Not going to take the bait, though. Oh, he's framed. Oh, oh my the God. DP what out was of that? NL, and it's going to cost him a round. Round two. All right, here we go. Round number two. Ending Walker steals his match. Still in a round. Trying to make it a match. Flicker EX knockdown. The bar. There you go. Ready with the anti air. Gets the big chunks. Four throw ending Walker. Needs to wake up EX. Uppercut from Luke. Oh my god. He lets it fly. And then oh. Press counter. Big damage on top of it. Dash. Up gets for the round. He interrupts with the jab. And back into the corner as well. Pressure. Not spinning any of that D trigger just yet. Oh, got oh my god, he catches him landing, trying to interrupt. Ending Walker comes back, game number two. He thought the air reset him. He tried to challenge, but he landed straight into the follow up of the fireball and got opened. That's 1 1 from Ending Walker. Bringing it back, and we have got a real match. He saw the breathing just to steady himself before that next game, and it paid off. Round one. It's the game from NL. 
NL known to be Whoa. used to this kind of pressure. Sheesh! Jump back there just in case it was that charge and Go back throw. Ending Walker. Just walks in there to the corner, tries to. Walk straight into a medium punch. Though. Right? Uh huh. Just check it. He's about to be in Ooh! Oh, low. Activation from downtown. NL not biting. Even his composure. Key reversal right there. Reversal. Ooh, EX works out this time. NL at a slower pace. It gets interrupted. NL takes that momentum back from the side of Ending Walker. Yeah, in the game of chicken, and NL didn't flinch. To right in the eye. Disrupts it. Close the round out. Oh, flicker backdash. Gives him a little space, but also gives NL a chance to get out. Cross up, not successful. Text to throw, and they're fighting back now to this middle of the screen. And now reacting to that fierce by just jumping back in case. Careful in this corner. Four heavy kick. He shifts. He just gets himself out of that situation. Spends the bar and puts NL straight back into the corner. Plus frames and NL challenges afterwards. To this range for the check. Oh, oh anti air as well. And he's ready and once again. again. Eno's doing such a good job of mixing up his defense because he's actually stealing back turns as well with the lights, making it very difficult for Ending Walker to read what he's going to do. Oh, There's the punish on the side blaster. We got the tech from the projectile. Nice. Ending Walker. Uh oh, Flicker EX confirmed, gets the knockdown, and we're right back to this corner again. Nice. And the full forward, uh oh, this is not looking good for NL. Right there, 50% life, getting closer to it. Oh, oh my no. god, I've seen this, I've seen this week on week on week in Salt Mine League. This corner pressure is where Ending Walker thrives. He gets it to bite, and it's 2 1. Oh, 1 0 down. Ending Walker is looking to take another major international name. Check, look what at the composure of the young man. Do here? Standing room only in the Avalon. Hundreds of people assembled. Let's do it. The I'm championships, baby. Everybody wants to be here for this. Is NL going to go for a character change? Or is he locked into the I see the nine. He's reassuring himself right now. I see the, I saw the head nods from there. He was reassuring himself. He's like, no, we're going to commit to it. All right, this means he's got to go loop the whole way now. Yeah, yeah. Got to take it to the finish line. Ender Walker looking good with the momentum, though. What? February 12th to the 19th, that's where we are right now. Better be watching. Fight. Otherwise, you wouldn't hear me say that. <laughs> Give him a little space, checks the range, steals the range with the flicker there. But uh oh, there comes in M. Oh, stay medium kick. Oh, oh that little defensive shimmy. Oh, he didn't kick a little too early right there. Neutral jump. Oh, oh my the god, trade. the conversion. Look at the damage off that as well. Forward the flicker, EX knocked down to the Get corner. In the corner. Activate. Lancer gets. Punish on the flicker. To be Small wary though, game. ending with the activation. Plus. Uh oh, uh oh. And it's straight back in. Oh, wow, a little fake out, a little stack. Oh, and again, he challenges. In L. He says, I'm not going to let you get this corner pressure on yeah, me. I'm Andy not going to let you. Walker wanted to get that low forward into the fireball to get another couple of turns, but the three frame jab came out from NL. Well, a stop to that, these guys. Oh, back to the corner we go. So situationally aware. Quick jab right there. Wow, the up back. Gives him the recovery. He almost get a punisher versus NL. NL fighting out of the corner. Turns the tides with a back throw. Here comes NL. Oh, stops the run out with a cross of medium punch. Big damage converts here. Oh, wow, tries to move after that big heavy kick. Not going to work out, though. And just dashes out. Oh, Yo. One too many. And he'll give him a little space. Nice with punish on the roundhouse and he go. Oh, no, he doesn't get the full charge, though. Oh, but he gets the forward throw after. Interrupts with the light. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Whoa, just, oh, and the raw CA coming from NL. And 
That is gonna do it. Oh my god. That's about it. He's starting to play. That's that's something NL does. That's something NL's gonna do right now. I feel like that's pressure. Round one. Alright, we're going into our fifth and final deciding game here. What? Oh, Andy Walker just holding forward on the stick, walking NL down, but he keeps walking into buttons. He wants to get this corner. We've seen how well he's done. Another bar to cover off that flicker. But again, he's just walking him down. NL backing himself up to the corner, trying to defend space. Oh, just wow. whips on the upper. Great whip punch there from NL. Oh, this was so far away. It's crazy. Right. Goal four confirmed into the EX once again. Big knockdown. Oh Cash God, out. Moss. And that's going to do it. The first round of this last game is going to go to NL. Set point here to NL. That will take him into the winner's semi finals on top eight of Capcom Cup. Ending Walker looking to fight back. And the crowd is definitely kind of. I feel like they feel the Ending Walker. they behind Ending Walker, it sounds like. Yo, the links. They sounded like they're behind Ending Walker. He's won over so many people with his play and just, you know, he's just general. Oh, enough. the stand medium kick confirmed. And I'm out of this corner now. NL fighting back. Life lead. No. Still on the side of Andy Walker. Great anti -air. And again. He's had such a great hit rate on that. No, he didn't get enough for the light kick. Uh -oh. One more touch will do it, though. Oh, stand medium kick. No confirm, no. NL knows that he can't use Sandblaster at that range as well. We've already seen the V-Reversal punish. Back oh my throw. god, but he can dash up a back throw, though. That's a medium punch. Andy Walker just walks out of the corner, activate, in the check crunch the challenge. Jam. There was it! NL didn't get the hit confirmed. Oh, oh the first scout! Straight through! And we're going to a final, oh, final oh. round! Andy Walker. Everyone that's bought a ticket for this Capcom Cup in live attendance is getting a show. Look at Andy Walker Spencer with the bar flicker into the corner. We a lot of you know, do other than just space it out, but he just walks himself back to the corner anyway. The confident walk forward from Andy Walker in his head. Still trying to find the butt. Big crush counter. Confirm it to the EX flicker knockdown again. Here comes Andy Walker. Oh, V reversal. Removes the trigger option, Andy Didn't Walker. Have the bar. A series and away. And where's the anti-air and Andy Walker takes another name and he has made it to top eight on winner's side at Capcom Cup. The fist bump from NL, the head nod he has to acknowledge. Wow. And his mum and dad who have flown across the world to support him are here in the crowd. They've done so much to support him throughout his career. Young Andy so Walker, happy man. Their son put in such an amazing, amazing performance going. Listen, we already know how dangerous the ending Walker was in the UK, but to see him do this again, we've got to see a glimpse of it at UFA, but to see him do it here on such an enormous stage, oh, he's ice cold, man. I don't care what he says about whether he feels it inside. This man's got ice running through his veins. The young man, literally, I was there got for that in UFA. The first game. He perfected him blink. in the first game. And you saw him going to the breathing. You saw him slow himself down. I'm like, let me get control of this. And it made such a big difference, even with how relentless NL was with the adaptations. Baits out. A rare uh, bait. A, a very rare bait. That was unfortunate. He tried to challenge and uh, got clipped. No, we were talking about the support, and you can hear this audience. Every time Andy Walker got the advantage, looked like things were going his way. The crowd was right behind him. And I the, can't just, believe the crowd weren't behind, uh, you know, Street Fighter League U.S. representative NL. Well, look, first off, we, I think it's more about the story, <laughs> Logan Sama. It's more about the story at this point. They want to see this young man succeed. Look at that crowd out there behind young Andy Walker. Look at this, this series man. in the corner and the fight back from NL. My man was not trying to let it go. Oh, oh my God, the raw CA in the middle there trying to get the plus frames. He says, nah, I, I'll take that. I'll take the CA, and get again, the round, neutral jump. Oh down my. in the Dude. last game, and he still maintained his composure here. The that V skill. skill. We haven't seen him really it, use that V skill. I was skill. Just about to say, the reaction. Like we forgot it was even there, and in the end, NL, the hard read, tried to jump out of the corner. But we this young have. man was ready for that as well. He seems to be ready for everything. He is never cracking.
the V reversal on the fireball in the corner to get the punish. Oh, the sandblaster, and you got the full oh punish. Oh my yeah, gosh! Like the we've guy seen so the many tech. really cute pieces of tech already. We saw Mena with the CA through the activation attempt from Takamura. That beautiful V reversal punish on the sandblaster. It was oh great to see these guys just executing this tech when it really matters. It's all well and good finding it and you know making clips, but. You bring it out on this stage to do it while you're under this crowd, kind of pressure. Under this pressure, yeah, hugely impressive, man. That says a lot, though. But we talked about Young Ending Walker that was actually playing sets with every top player that yeah. he could. Even talking about it on his Twitter, say, hey, you talked about the Idom set, Tokido as well. Just a lot of players. But now he's not saving anything for regionals. He's not. He's, he's not. Look, he's not afraid. <laughs> right now, he'll take on any comers. He's the real world warrior, man. Like we saw the memes when he won UFA. He walked off the stage looking for the next challenge while well, he's here. This is the next challenge. And his next challenge is going to be Mena RD on the winner's side of top eight of Capcom 9. What a story to tell for the rest of Street Fighter V. But we go on to the, the next The stories one. continue, Steve, because we've got the man who's looking for the triple crown, like, mm -hmm. you know, like the great Muta. <laughs> and we've got the man who has gone on an epic journey. His Capcom Cup path has been unlike any of the other a story 47 in its own. players. A story in its own, Zen man. flying out here, an unknown quantity, this 19-year-old from China. I'm went through some fan, of the man. greatest names of Street Fighter in that LCQ, and then he made it out on top of his group as well. Crazy. What an unbelievable performance, and what a great story we have, these two names. I mean, Kawano, not long on the scene as well. He's only in like his fourth competitive year mm -hmm. of Street Fighter. Already reached the lofty heights. And we saw Kawano perform, overperform at EVO. Mm -hmm. One of the craziest runs ever. I mean, obviously, Idom was there as well, yeah. but Kawano being the one who took that. And oh. then, of course, coming from Street Fighter. Let, League, me, let me just point this out as well. You know, obviously, Idom's run was amazing and epic, but for Kawano to maintain his composure right? on stage with 18,000 yeah. people in the Mandalay Bay Arena, Behind Idom. Behind Idom. Let's be real. That's the, that's the USA <laughs> chance were there. My man was cold. I look. And cold as ice. He didn't flinch. Co with the cold in, cold as ice, bro. Yeah. Well, we'll see what he goes for this time. But Zen, he's like he's you said, added before. the Luke. He's added the Luke to his uh, arsenal. But Zen, though, I feel like you can't say any. If you can't say anybody else in this tournament has it, my man's got momentum on his side. Coming from the LCQ, one of the craziest oh, the list, LCQs. The list is run. It's actually crazy He's if you beaten. think about it. And now here he is in his top 16, going up against an Evo champion at that, bro. Like, think about that. Kawano, no. This is not his first Evo champion as well, by the way. Right? That's not the first one on the list. But it looks like we may be the Colleen versus the M Bison as we're on the V skill. He's already v beaten two, Evo uh, two Capcom Cup winners. Gachiko Nomomochi. Yes, yes, He's beaten yes. an EVO champion in Problem X. Yes. Oh He's beaten God. an EVO runner-up in Big Bird. The list of names that Zen's beaten is scary. ridiculous. It's scary. There we go. He is no longer fake Problem X. He is the real Zen. The real deal. Oh, the little shimmy here. Hold on, Kawano. It's the sword throw in the corner. Looking for the same throw as well. Dancing in and out. Great check on nice. the X. Fishing for a crush right here. That stun's already built up for Kawan. Oh, stagger pressure to the crouch. Medium back throw. Not the stun just yet, but getting close. Oh my word, that was a scramble. He's still, oh, he risked it all on the EX counter. And the delay from Zen right there with that crouching medium punch. Getting the read in the first round against Kawano to bait out that counter. And instantly, that slow bison walks casually. Nice stand like King Lee at Parabellum. Takes the Oki Devil Dash up. Answer back with that heavy punch from Bison. Stand like kick right there. Ooh. In fact, you can see the buffer, the EX confirm again. Kawano. Oh, throwing the corner is not looking good for Zen right now. Stay there. Where do you think you're going? Light kick again. The spacing Ooh. on the parabellum, but the slide, the crush counter, activation time. Ooh, All right, right it's time to guess. The bomb is planted. The idea is there. 
the pressure like kind of is taking alpha right here we go oh, oh my god the roundhouse big crush zen a guess away for taking the first yeah, he game explodes it so he can close this from out Kawano, and if it's gonna be the Zen. psycho crusher very smart and Bison Zen look at the speed run look like Kawano had him you know like this the, the throw baits the light kick with punishes like Kawano was showing everything but Zen how quick the ties turn Logan how quick the, ties the stun turn. the stun was crazy He's got a real read on the timings. I mean, but the we saw what happened. We saw what happened. Zen really had a, a really good read on Kwano wanting to get this counter in the first game, nonetheless. Yeah, are we gonna see Kwano switch back to... No, oh, no. Stick it to the guns. Kwano said, we're not gonna have to Anti-air. Nice challenge with the jab. One quick rise from Zen, very smart. Hailstorm is right there. Again, a light kick. Oh, punish on the target combo. Jumps out of the corner, tries to go for a throw. Kawano nice takes the lead. Staying like it, Bear Bell. Activation station, stay there. Ooh, that Stan Light Kick is doing damage right now to the momentum. And the check. Every time. Spins the EX. Able to react to that purple stuff. Getting caught out. Activation of his own. Pressure. Wow, crouch. Short Zen kick. calling out that throw bait. There's the implant. Oh, oh the counter missile! No. That donkey the kick, hard bro. Hard read. So much damage. Not working out this time. Though. Saw the big bait last time for Zen. Kawano finds the mark this time. Big damage to close out the round. Oh, big jump in with the heavy kick. Dash up throw. Kawano. And light kick into EX Parabellum once again. That should oh, be the stun. That's the stun. Need a reset here. Oh, he's just going to take the knockdown and the Oki. Yes, he does. There's the throw. Not going to be enough either. And Zen is still in it. Activation. Activation. There's the trade. What conversion? That was clean. But the jab. Kawano. Not afraid. Wakes up with the button. Bro, that's it. Zen trade was cold, but Kawano is colder. This adjustment for the second game, Kawano. What's cooler than cool? Round so. one. <laughs> Fight. Right back to his range. Stan Heavy's from Bison has definitely been one of the controlling factors here. Yeah, Zen, like a lot of Bison's I've seen in this week, has really been looking for the anti airs He's been happy to just block the jump. Oh, yeah. Notice that with Dogra and Problem X as well. They're really focused on their ground game. Oh, the jab into Ruth. Interrupts the Psycho Axe. Got that delay get up once again. Zen really trying to make sure he's not putting up on your head at all. He needs to be careful whiffing that fierce. We've already seen the light kick punish. Oh, you just Bravo. talked about it. Taking the milk, just knocked down and using a hailstorm. There's the throw again. Yeah, he gets out, he spins the bar, there's the activation. And again, he smells out Zen trying to steal frames. Checks it with the stand light kick, now has the momentum. Kawano has an opportunity. Oh, oh and another interrupt Kawano again. And not dash on Kawano. Just changing up this entire program right now. Oh, another, just, just start off, stand like kick, confirm, and just quick to spin that bar too to get the corner. Almost at the confirm on the hailstorm. Back it's throw. Match for that. Oh. In the air to air. Look at that stun bar. Pressure. Though. Oh, out of the corner. You want the EX there? Very slow and patient game right here. Kawano in trouble. Light lead on the side of Zen. There's that stand heavy again. Confirm on the knockdown. Nothing big, but starting to walk to this corner. Great anti-air. Activate. Dash up with the crouch short. Clips out of a jump. Activate of her own. Here comes Colleen. Uh-oh. Ooh, and the Psycho Axe. Says you're checking my dash. I'm going to check your walk. Psycho Axe.
back to this slow pace. And uh, just instantly, we've seen it two rounds straight now, the sand light kick. Start up with the EX Parabellum confirmed. So he gets out of the corner, throws Koano back in. Oh, back throw. Where do you think you're going? Back in there. Little mini shimmy right here. Neutral jump. Yes, he'll probably try to catch a walk out of that ring. Get that. Reversal out. Oh, and again, he doesn't get the punish. I don't know what happened. The button didn't come out. Dash up after the knockdown. Back throw once again. Zen wants this corner. EX. Stay there. Makes the jump. He lands the throw. Oh, he expanded it to get through. Activation time. Here we go. Kawano has a chance. Back throw out of the corner. Zen gets a little room. Life lead oh on the side days, of Zen, and he cashes connects. out! V-trigger activation, and Zen cashes out. And Bison wins. Checking notes on the phone. No time for a call. <laughs> the fact that this, this set has boiled down to I can't let you take a step forward in neutral is crazy. Checking every dash from Bison we saw coming for Kawano at first. With, how's he with punishing walk forward? <laughs> Round one. Yeah, this light kick buffer is really, really painful. Let's see how uh, can take it. Just, no, he can't. He can't. He needs to really be wary of what's going on. Crouch fears to have been covered so much. Oh, just a bit oh, the space outside in track. the range. Kawano. It's a rough with the stand light kick. Go straight for the EX. Not gonna do anything for his favor though. Kawano still with the pressure in the corner. Activate, little tick throw. Not gonna work out. Shimmy's gets the throw out of Zen. Big damage here. Takes one guess away. Oh, tries to go through. What an activation off the stand medium and plants the bomb. Time to take the mix. Zen's got a chance. No anti air, but Zen like it. Into the air. Another come on grab. This is oh! not good. Jen is too good. It's set point. Whipping in that range. You see he's got the bar. He's looking for the confirm already. Uh-oh. Great spacing right there. Got to get him to the orb right here. Back get throw. Back in there. Tries to walk up oh and get another God, the throw. Chase down. Oh, Ooh, this counter no, working out this time. This time, yep. Yeah. Hasn't really been too predictable with that, and he's read it correctly. Two times in a row now, air to air, wastes the bar, and he keeps sending the corner. Activation, plus frames, and he challenges with the jab to send. Activate on his own, gets right out of no range with counter a counter for you. The plant works out. Knockdown, EX. Off side, the explosion. blocks, plus frames, but that's gonna be enough, and Chen closes it out. This man takes down another EVO champ. That's two Capcom Cup winners, two EVO champions on his reign of terror as he advances into the winner's side of top eight. This is with the Bison on top of that. A dominant force coming from this LCQ. The young man, the second youngest. What, he's 19, right? Oh, man. Incredible performance from Zen. And Kawano looked like he was playing out of his mind. His Kawano Colleen, like this, this, this Colleen like is, is looking ridiculous. The spacing was immaculate. How many times did we see this confirmed? How many times did we see the bravery to stop every dash coming from Zen, especially to try to advance? I honestly thought it looked like Kawano had the read the whole time. Small adjustments, though. They'll stand medium kick started to work out. Big crushes in the corner, challenging what Kawano was trying to get away with. All of the hits that Shen was doing were converting into a big stun. And there were so many rounds where he just snowballed. And that's what Bison does. Like, it's just looping offense, especially with this V trigger as well. If you can land that command grab, it's a big risk, but. If you land it, you're just going to make them block for a good 10 seconds. And that's what he did. He was able to convert into damage there. He gets the implant again. And I think here, oh yeah, God, that was that the correct counter. read on the low counter. Kawano, big cash out. This trade is oh sick. My what a beautiful conversion. The Inferno cancelled into the Psycho Crusher as well. But here we go. Defense here, but he does get opened up eventually. The big gap. 
And that's the thing that's so difficult, right? We saw this when Problem X was playing against Pugera. You're really guessing, and Pugera had some great reads and some great reactions, I'm not going to lie, but a lot of great reads on when the Bison wanted to steal frames, yes. when they wanted to keep it tight. But Shen is so good at mixing up this, like, wheel of fortune offense that Bison has where he makes you block, you're minus one, you may be minus two off a knockdown, and he's just so good at cycling. And as soon, as soon as you show him a defensive option, he's ready to adapt immediately and change it up. The button that he liked to go to, he'd switch it up. He's like, you know what, now I'm going to switch to these mediums now. Started shimmying back and forth at that range. Saw a lot of confirms with the stand medium into the V-trigger. And I feel like that up-close scramble really was what got Zen back into the game in a lot of these situations. Especially considering how well we saw Kawano spacing out. Just to be like, you know what, I'm going to tease with this stand light kick. Even if he didn't have the meter to confirm into the EX and get the push out, he still kind of reset the situation. A lot of times he's getting that knockdown and trying to push to the corner. Yeah, and Chen was just at no point put off by that. It was just incessant pressure. Yeah. Right, you're going to whiff punish my button. I'm back in anyway. I'm coming back. I'm coming back for more. Let's, let's change this spacing. Let's change the timing up. And he was able to do that and close it out. What an enormous victory for him to add to the list of names that he's already overcome. Uh, this week so far. There he is in top eight on the winner's side. Kawano down into losers. He's, you know, the, the chances of him now getting that triple crown drastically reduced, but he's still in it. Still in the running, still in the running. But talking of Chinese street fighting oh. prodigies, VX Bao, I've seen him uh, over the years now that we've got these regional CPT qualifiers online, you know, I've noticed the name alongside some of the other players that there, you know, we might have been more familiar with, you know, guys like Shu Chu and all of the Urian players there. But VX Bao, he's gone to the Cody this season and he made it out of his bracket completely unscathed, yeah, yeah. undefeated. But he's going up against another player who's not only undefeated, but what an incredible year Angry Bird has had. Oh, Angry Bird, another one of those players we've really been looking at. Uh, honestly, I feel like if you're going to talk about somebody that could even remotely slow that stop, Angry Bird has been here. He knows what it takes, and you know he wants that W more than anybody else. But let's talk about some of our awesome sponsors that we've worked with here at Capcom Cup 9. Street Fighter Duel, the new Street Fighter mobile game, is now currently available for pre-registration. Pre-register now and earn rewards on launch like characters, gyms, and more. A brand new adventure awaits the World Warriors teaming up to fight against a rising Shadowloo organization with 40-plus characters at launch, some with unique character outfits. Visit the website streetfighterduelgame.com for more details on how you can pre-register and join in on the action. Well, all right, the atmosphere inside the venue is crazy, and we have Mr. Hollywood himself in the building. Let's throw it over to Rob TV. Oh my goodness, as you can see, I'm in here amongst the people. Can we make some noise for those last matches? Yes, yes, yes. So I gotta make sure y'all know who we actually have in the crowd right now. I wanna make sure we talking to the people. So we're gonna start with the young queen right here. What's your name? Skylar. Skylar, oh my God, Skylar. Okay, okay, and where are you from, Skylar? Um, Long Beach. Okay, Long Beach, we got anybody else from Long Beach in the building? Okay, well that's North Side Long Beach, North Side Long Beach. Okay, and as far as these matches so far, what has been your favorite, who is your favorite player so far? Like character? Oh, or actually that's fine too, it could be character, the actual players, anyone. The Indian Walker player. Indian Walker, yeah! Okay, much love, Scholar. Much love, Scholar. Okay, let's let's head over here a little bit. Follow me, cameraman. Pull up with me, cameraman. All right, what's going on, brother? What's your name? Daniel. Daniel. All right, where are you from, bro? Chicago. Chi Town Midwest. Okay. All right, and as far as all of the players so far, who do you think has the strongest chance to take a Capcom Cup? I think Grand Finals will be Ending Walker versus Zen. Ooh, Ending versus Zen. All right, let's switch it up a little bit. Let's switch it up a little bit. Who are we going with? My man's sweater is beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it look like you hosting it or something, man. Okay, okay. Good, too. Okay, and this, this, this for the last one right here. So, for one, what's your name and where are you from? I'm Andrew. I'm from California. From Cali. All right, all right, all right. And as far as, first, I'm actually going to ask you, who is your favorite commentator? Rob TV, of course. All ah! right. <laughs> My dog, my dog. And actually, that answer was so perfect that I don't even think we can ask any more questions. One more time, can we make some noise for these matches so far? 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have more amazing Capcom Cup action coming at you live after this break. Was obsessed, you see, with finding an appropriate vessel for this power. Hmm. Showtime, baby! Prepare. Fight with all your heart! An honor, to be sure. You won't be disappointed. These two don't give me what I want. I may have to come in there and bust them up myself. Amazing awareness there. She makes dangerous look so good. Gotta remember, a cornered animal is the most dangerous. Oh wow, someone just got turned into a hashtag. You hope I answer. This is where things are gonna get very interesting. Making him sweat with these shurikens. <laughs> we live for these kind of fights. They got the advantage. We gotta start clicking here. That's what happens when you have an irresistible force meeting an immovable object. Time for some good old violence. This is how you stay limber. You gotta crack every last limb.
It's been five years since you last made top 16 at the Capcom Cup, and here we are, you've come out of your group, undefeated, made out of the group of death. So what's the difference this year? What, what is it that makes you more of a threat? I think my character choice is like uh, everybody is so focused on Luke while I played Ken. I played a different character than the, the character that everybody is looking out for. So I think that's the main thing that put me on the, on the threat side. And now people started to realize that Ken is a threat, but it's a late realization, <laughs> which, is, which is good in my favor, so. In top 16, you're going up against another undefeated player in VX Bow, but you're a seasoned pro. Does that give you the advantage? Uh, actually, he plays Cody. Cody beats Ken. So I think he has that advantage in terms of character choices. But in terms of uh, competition and in terms of experience in the stages, I have that advantage there. I'm excited to see how that is going to turn out. How do you practice for someone who's so little footage of them online? You see how they play throughout the tournament and you realize, because especially in tournament, you see different habits of a player. Whether he gets nervous, whether he takes here and that, his defense, what does he press in neutral. So, and you take that into account and then you just play your game, but based on his habits. Your game based on his habits. Records building. We're right across the street at the amazing Avalon. We've been here before. I'm glad that we came back for more Street Fighter and a great send off, I would like to say, for how good this top 16 has been so far for Street Fighter 5. It's your boy Tasty Steve, Logan Sama on the mic. Bro, these matches have been crazy. Yo, make some noise if you're enjoying this Street Fighter 5 one time. I'm telling you right now, the matches are so good. I'm seriously sitting up here in awe at some of this. Logan, how did you feel talking to Angry Bird about, you know, some of his uh, potential winnings? Bro, if he you feels get out of here? like he's got this air of, you know, confidence, but not arrogance. He just seems so comfortable. Yeah. He just seems ready to execute. And you've seen that in Street Fighter League, obviously. Uh, I'm from then, he's just gone on from strength to strength. He just got the job done. Some amazing wins in that group of death. He made it out at the top, and here he is going up. Undefeated clash of the five and O players here. Mm -hmm. VX Bow, though, as he said, uh, it's a tough matchup. Uh, Cody into Ken. Cody proving very, very difficult for Ken at range. And of course, Cody has that same explosive damage and reliable Oki that Ken has, but he doesn't have the reversal. So we'll see exactly how Angry Bird can make the most of that. Well, that's the thing, man. Cody gets knocked down, and it's really hard for him to wake up and try to do something. You got to be brave, because a lot of times you're going to hold this pressure, especially coming from a Ken. I know you was just talking to him about this, but how do you feel? He's saying he's, he's playing Ken in a world of Luke's. Yeah. Do you feel like that's a valid strategy? And, I think that's very smart, because, you know, Ken is up there this season. Yeah. He's a very strong character. You know, I think the difference between, um, you know, the power level of a Luke yeah. and a Ken is, is certainly not enough to rob him of the ability to win a tournament and of course he's got that added advantage as he pointed out where everyone is running this Luke matchup yes. but where do you run the Ken matchup at this level it's very hard to find that Looks like I can have a look here we go said it in the interview and you see it in front of you we got the Ken from Angry Bird ending Walker ending Walker VX bow with the Cody here we go Damn, I mean they've got similar hair I guess <laughs> Oh, the stand line kick. Up already off the crouching medium. Oh, nice there is the beat scale. Yeah, that sway very good against projectiles, but we're not really going to see Angry Bird use that a lot. Combo conversion here. I'm Head hoping charge. we get to see some of these crazy VX Power level 2 Zonk combos that we've been talking about so far this week. It's the throw. That's a crazy conversion we've been looking at the VX Bow play. Oh, Ooh, wow. He didn't actually let go of the sweep because he knew that he uh. wasn't going to connect and he could have been punished. Oh, oh my God, he's still alive. He catches him with the jab. Lots of scaling. A series of fortunate events there for Angry Bird, but he is not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. He closes out the round. Looking sharp. That medium right kick's going to be a problem. Ken can outrange that, of course. Ooh. He's got two really good medium buttons, but that medium kick, it 
occupies a lot of space. Very difficult to whip punish. Yeah, up crouch medium punches combo gives the stun. Bit build, build a little yeah, bit right here. We said about that explosive damage potential. Oh my Ooh. god! Ooh. That was two combos. And just like that. That was two combos. And just like that. <laughs> Final round. Cody, big damage payout. Still got one bar EX left seven. over too. Oh, low forward after the shimmy. Uh -huh. Just inches up to this corner. EX foul. Jab into the EX song. Baits oh out the EX DP. Big punishment. Get the charge. Stay there. Oh, we didn't go, go for it again. If in doubt, flash it out again. Uh oh, B trigger. Dyson slice. Flash into the corner and he's out of there. B trigger gone. Angry Bird looking to build his. He's going to go for the step kick into the activation. No, he fakes him out. Mm -hmm. Still got a little ways to go for. A trigger activation. Oh, he's ready. Away. That was sick. Got you hit this time. Backing up, the exhaust, the reversal to stop the pressure, and just like that, an instant check from Angry Bird to take this first game. Angry Bird win. is so good at playing a numbers game. His Ken is so very, very solid. He very rarely steals frames or plays in a way that is unsafe. Round very one. different from Takamura, who's like a lot more chaotic in terms of his pressure, a lot more dangerous, but Angry Bird is so solid. That's why he's so consistent. This is fourth throw. Here's the bum rush. Here comes the pressure. But backs off a little bit. Puts himself into the corner. He doesn't get the standing short. He goes for two crouching shorts. Yeah, foul. Let that stun guess. go oh down a little God, bit. Delays a little bit. And catches something. Cross the crouching medium punch. Stun tracking up but again. Side switch. Tatsu back to the corner. Fourth throw. One more guess. And that's going to be it. The counter hit link off the crouching light. Angry Bird. Round two. Angry Bird. Getting get worked up. A lot of people saying this might be his year. Once again, another one of those players. You can definitely see nice with punch. a Capcom Cup title on him. Nope, you're not getting out of that that easy. Back into the corner. Here's the throw. He's going to walk up on pressure. Early V reversal. Crowd jab. Charge off knuckle. Light kick. Ruffian knockdown. Just wake up throw here. Angry Bird still in control. Angry Bird trying to fake him out with these uh, empty runs into nothing. For that hit confirmed. And I was saying, still playing in this game. This range where he can keep hit. Activation here. Gets the medium kick Ruffian. And now, forward trigger. Super will do it. Nice anti -air. Ooh, the whiff That's punish. That should be it. The hard kick Ruffian to close out the X bow. I love it. Turning around and taking advantage of those. Empowered the normals with the knife. Taking Ken out of here. Oh, nice. Now putting him back in the corner with a significant life deficit, and the DPs are all coming off. Baited what? One of those? The rest have all hit. Angry Bird. There's another throw. A little creep forward, and that low forward fireball. He's so good at poking away with that, but he needs to not be predictable with it because Cody can definitely sway through. Sways the step kick though, anti-air. Uchu jump gets you hit by that uppercut, so activate after the fireball. This poised. The pressure though. Oh. Oh, cross up Tatsu, VX Bao ready, not and ready for the throw though. that's going to close it out, 2-0, and it was just incessant pressure. VX Bao wasn't able to activate, he wasn't able to turn the tables. Angry Bird able to do whatever he wants here. VX Bao needs to start dictating the pace because Angry Bird He's just approaching him like like a wall yeah. of death. Castle at night. He's doing nothing. He's done nothing to dissuade Angry yeah. Bird from walking forward. He's literally just like, you know what? I'm, if you're not gonna stop me, but we've seen a few whiff punishes, right? We've seen the stand medium kick. We saw yeah. that confirm in the V trigger. Uh, we saw the stand medium punch as well. Which you do, you can confirm, but I feel like the foot speed is what he's using against him. You said it before. Yeah. B skill, okay. he can run into that range at a moment's notice. And he won the round before as well after um, challenging. Angry Bird trying to cross him up and he turned around with a knife, blocked him down, opened him up on the floor as well there. So it's not like Angry Bird's getting away scot-free, but he's definitely getting the yes. better of all of these exchanges. I go to the suit. Oh, he's shining right now. Under the lights. Back throw again. We've seen how successful VX Bow has been. Those hit confirms though, man. So reliable and those just outside of range and that medium punch comes out. Like it rough here. Does give you the plus frames after the dash. Get a beat.
immediate hit time, right? You gotta be careful if they have me. No! Oh. The link. Gives Angry Bird the momentum. Oh, another one. Yeah. Sits him down there. The reversal. Oh, wow. Catches him with the EX Zonk. There's airborne, though. So oh, oh, there the we go. Crime to Told get you through. he can't become too predictable with that. Crime Sway shot's a good answer to the man like kick. There we predictable go. Predictable fireball cancels. Round two. Some We've seen big old right. gaps in between those low forward fireballs in certain ranges. We've seen the success of the crime sway and how it's worked out for VX Bath. Oh, crouch jab. That's a brave challenge. Dash up. Oh, wait for the delay. On the throw, neither gonna get it. EX Tatsu, though. Another EX on bro. They are swinging. Yeah, beats him to the punch there with a jab. Activate. Angry Bird loves playing at this fast pace. Anti air. Stand blast, heavy punch blast, from Cody. Blast, blast, take the chip, and he's got the life lead here. Oh, oh my God! Recovering time. Oh, ho, 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 ho. he's Angry in the corner. Bird. Right, one more confirm will do it. Oh no, he backs off, and VX Bow challenges. He could smell the shimmy attempt. Stops the bleeding here, gets a game Cody, on the board, William. and stays alive in this set versus Angry Bird. Angry Bird just needed that low forward into the light tattoo. It would have hit once. He would have got the double DP follow up for the kill. But VX Bow with a great challenge. Perfect use of the crime sway at that range as well. Not getting caught off guard at the start of the round. Man, that kick has so much range. Yeah, it's crazy. Like minus six as well. So for a lot of characters, it's very difficult to deal with. Especially at the Not range Ken, though, because he's got a heavy DP. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. God bless the heavy DP. That medium punch confirm here from Ken. Ooh, uh -oh, the nail oh, it's gonna hurt. And activate on that V-Trigger 1. Oh, and little again, shimmy here from VX in reaching, the stun racking up. Oh, no, but back throw into the corner, and it's going to be activation time real soon. There oh. we go. One, two, three, oh. and the CA closes it out. A beautiful sequence from Angry Bird. Oh. Oh, Angry Bird. I'm going to clip that one. That's going in my high right now. Save it. You got to save it for later. That's going in my commentator show. <laughs> These guys are looking Ooh. to whip punish. Yeah, whip kick, punishes. Heavy, punch, heavy kick as well. Oh, uh -oh. gets the crush. Here comes Angry Bird. He loves to play this fast pace. Set point. You've got to take that. Unless you want to get underneath. Reversal. Waste the bar. Brav, the late cancel on the standing medium punch. We're playing 144 hearts. Way stand medium kick. Not gonna get a full conversion. Ready for the throw though. Not ready for the jump in. One more touch will do it for Angry Bird. And again, VX Bow with a great interruption. He's gonna need more than that though. Oh, oh the, the overhead well He doesn't get the punish. And the V trigger's gone. No and the crouch, crouch sure is all he needs. VX Bow had the opportunity to punish that overhead for damage and a knockdown, but he wasn't able to do it. Seems like he was a little bit out of range, but still, no punish there. That leads to the victory. Small scramble there to close out. Angry Bird. Ken looking so solid. Beautiful. You're a Ken player, you really appreciate that. I always appreciate it. You know, every time I get the opportunity to commentate Angry Bird's matches, I, you know, I love the waxing lyrical. Well, let's go. Let's check out this replay real quick from that beautiful set between these two. That fast place gameplay definitely came in the, into the major factor of the win when it for Angry Bird at the tail end here. But it was a lot scarier at the beginning here for VX Bow. Lost these first two games, but it wasn't for lack of trying. That was very fortunate. Just oh got caught gosh. by the recovery of the fireball. Oh my god, this guy Angry Bird. Looking too sharp, too clean at the first part of this set. But still, yeah, that light kick ruffian really did do a lot of work for VX Bow. Gets a little meter on top of it. Look at the damage from Cody right here. And then the crowd short to the EX as well. I think one of the big things here is Angry Bird was able to show the DP on Wake Up. What perfect timing. Thank you very much, production. <laughs> Angry Bird was able to show that EX DP on Wake Up, but all VX Bow was able to do was really guess, you know, is he going to challenge with a button or not? Is he going to block? Is he going to try and take the throw? There's no kind of thought process that Angry Bird needs to entertain in terms of is there going to be a reversal coming out here? And it just allowed Angry Bird to put that pressure on. And we saw the fight back at a couple rings, right? The stand light kick, the crouching medium punch as well, but still, 
could not stop Angry Bird. We talked about him just being able to walk forward in a lot of these instances, that time but that it. interruption, yeah. Oof, big crush counter on the heavy kick. Yo, this combo was sick. Oh my gosh, That's all it was the hits so as well. Didn't even need all the hits when he killed with him. And, the and then he closes it out. Right. He had the opportunity to get that punish, as I said, off the overhead, but he wasn't able to connect. And boy, it was just all uphill from then. The V trigger was run out, and uh, Angry Bird was just on him. Back. The X Bow did make a valiant effort to fight back, though. I will say that. Great turnaround. Started spacing a lot better versus the Ken. We know once Angry Bird gets started, he's little, I call him a little snowball of hate, bro. This is what I call him on Street Fighter League. He gets started and you can't stop him. The momentum <laughs> is so strong. It's so hard to stop my man once he gets his game going. VX Bow did such a great job of interrupting a lot of times, using a lot of that crime sway. Uh, a couple of great anti airs as well. Tried to force Angry Bird out of his comfort zone, but. I feel like he lives so well in the scramble that it's really hard I to stop. To, I have to really give Angry Bird a lot of credit as well for how he dealt with the neutral, because that's the re that, that's really the realm in which Cody uh, is able to uh, to defeat Ken in this matchup, and Angry Bird kind of traversed it so well. Uh, you can see he is going to advance. We're not going to get an all Chinese winners semi final as VX Bow is sent to the losers bracket, and Angry Bird will be facing Zen and of course Mena RD and ending Walker. Now it is time oh, to go oh, down oh, into oh, oh. the last chance saloon. This is the loser's bracket. You lose here, you go home. Well, you don't go, you go into the crowd yeah. and enjoy the action, of course. But first up, the man who many consider still the reigning champion, 2019, it hasn't been defended since then. Idom, the last United States of America hope in the tournament. And what a prime draw for him against Pugera. Now, if this was anyone else, I'd like Pugera. You know, okay. Pugera has looked incredibly strong. We've seen him play in SFL. We've seen him come through uh, and a number of uh, events this year. He's yeah. been so solid. He got the job done in SFL Japan as well, yep. closed it out there. He wasn't able to beat Mena RD in the first day of group stages, but since then, he's been on track. He looked like an absolute monster in SFL finals, but he is going into a matchup potentially here with Idom's Laura that's problematic. And we saw how problematic it was because Shax in yes. SFL yep. World yep. Championships gave him a big fright. Let's see. What Pugero comes back with here, because I know he's going to have lap this real Yo, crowd, I got a question. If you guys would like Pugero to take it, make some noise. That was real quiet. That was Steve. real quiet. Now give him the one that you want to ask. But what about the returning Capcom Cup champion? If you like Idom to take it, make some noise. You know I'm a man that likes some hometown bias. Yeah. Round one. Here we go. Right. So well known for. It. Here we go, though. Very difficult, but one of the things that I was so impressed with Pugera is his spacing on interrupting that fireball with the sweep. Every because the time. heart box on that sweep is very high. The spacing has to be absolutely perfect, otherwise the fireball will actually interrupt the sweep and he'll get a counter hit call. Oh, big crush. Uh oh. You guys, I'm going to tell you right now, Pugera plays that range so perfectly. But right now, caught in the vortex, a command throw vortex. D shift, and I'm back dashing out of there. Oh, for it again. Command throw. I on with the scoopage. Oh, nice oh. use uh -oh. of the V skill straight through to cancel. Back throw, Meaty. No, he dashes up and checks again. Dashes up, and Idom's not ready. But Idom now has those three bars. That is the scariest place to be in all of Street Fighter Five. The command grab gets the first round. There is nothing more terrifying it's not. in Street You're Fighter right. Five <laughs> than Idom when he activates that feature. Game changer, bro. That spark show. Uh oh. That's not a V-trigger, that's like a level 3 X-Factor. There we go, <laughs> perfect. Perfect spacing on that sweep. Ooh, and he gets the link and the follow-up. Like one more touch for the perfect, no, he takes. It's not I gonna be a perfect, but it's done. a get perfect. What a huge round for Pugera. Idom not able to activate. He holds the, the X-Gage and he's gonna go to the next round. Oh, mid green side switch. We've also seen how Ooh, successful the wake-up buttons have been for Idom. It didn't work out that time. touch from Idom. Not going to need he it this time, out. it seems. Stun going to go down here for Pugera. Yeah. Ooh, dash punch. 
And you see that reach. Oh, Jeez. that stand heavy punch. And he just backs up to swing it back to the perfect range. Crouch medium punch. Gets to confirm another forward throw. Pugera in the lead. As soon as those four, uh, sorry, as soon as those three red bar. bars. Not by that line bar, though. Momentum. He's looking real strong for a second there. Dash up. Pugera challenging his range. In the oh dash! my god! Punch confirmed! Him. Not alive. dead yet! Oh, it tries to jump out Pugera! Now we saw Pugera drop that against Mena. Ah. He did it on block, remember? Mm -hmm. Now it's far more comfortable. That single hit confirm on the dash straight into the critical art. And that and was Pugera. Pugera. It wasn't even looking that bad for Ida. Pugera, Told you though, Pugera's gonna be in the lab. That second round, excuse me. Tail in there, that crouch medium punch. Backing off, doesn't want to engage with that projectile. You see Idon backing up to that dash straight range. Big crush counter here. Yeah, side switch as well. Dash up, trying to find something. Pugera with the perfect piece here. Oh, wow, this is not looking good. Close enough to get uh -oh. that roundhouse. Medium kick confirmed. Here comes Idon. round has now begun. Oh, B reversal once again to stop the pressure. The X Thunderclap. Yeah, he's back in the heck up. Pugera does not want to engage. Trigger just about done and waits out to B trigger. Still gets clipped by Idom in the corner. Has to hold it. B reversal gets thrown. B trigger still there. B reversal is absolutely everything. Catches him low. Idom trying to jump again. Trying to jump again, getting caught by Pugera. And Pugera basically played a game of complete non-engagement the whole time Idom Heavy was in V-Trigger. Trigger. Yep. And you did see him actually try and go for that trade with the screw upper uh, when Idom puts out the projectile. We saw him do that a few times. Uh, again, Shax, there you see the danger and the risk of trying to sweep that fireball. It has to be perfectly spaced. Side switch goes for the throw this time last time. Oh my god! Off. What a conversion! Pugera now is in the lead right now. Activate after the block screen. Still ready for the throw. Slight charge on the thunderclap. That's the throw. Not down. Change up his timing now. He catches him crouching and the overhead links in V trigger for the round. Item is so, so good at changing up his pressure strings. His V-Trigger, so good for him. Perfect timing on that sweep, nice and early. That first to three here. Oh, I love that string so much. Look at this pressure from Pugera right now. Interrupt this time again, activate. Back throw. Oh, again, get back into the... Oh, big crush, just a oh, slight delay. he'd already delay. committed to the charge fireball. What? Clips the start up on the dash. That's gonna, that's gonna catch gonna it. Idom gets the big stun, and it was gonna mean a lot. Idom gets one on the board, and you can hear this crowd. You can hear this crowd behind Idom. Round one. Pugera just misjudging the timing, and he ended up with a raw activation rather than an activation off of something. Got stunned. That's what Laura needs. You never need to ask if he's gonna kill me. <laughs> like you said, the party don't start. So that V trigger comes out from Idom. Pugera, so on point with his face in again. A crash of medium punch. Buffered and it's corner pressure time. Idom for that two and a half frame jab. Fishing with that stand heavy kick. Pugera just backing up this time. We've seen it the success of it. Thunderclap this time. Dash up, gets the counter hit confirmed. Side switch, command throw this time. I don't realize it as well that Pugera didn't want to inter interact. Unless uh -oh. he's going to get a clean hit. Conversion trade goes for the V-Trigger activate. He shift. shift. He gets out and look, he's not going to interact. There's the trade. Oh, the interrupt again, I don't. Two, excuse me, three games in. I do now up around. Block on the dash Big damage on that stand heavy punch. Big damage on that stand heavy punch. Uh oh. The command throw is coming out from Idom. Tick throw. Command throw again. EX this time. 
Yes, he's ready. He's going to spend another one. No. Wake up, Just the one. once again from Item. V shift to get out of there. The V shift break to get the hit. Fights back to the middle of the screen. Command throw, Item. Item. Goes into the lead. Behind him. I domination behind him. Round one. Fight. Playing a slow pace game here already. Jeez, wow. Okay. Oof. Leads him to the punch, literally. Oh, dash up jab. Tick throw Pugera is in the mix right now. You are no. in the mix right now, and you're in the stun right now. Hold on. Big damage for I up the lane. Reset. Counter reset. I domination. Set point. I am looking to eliminate Pugera and advance in this top 16 losers bracket. Again. Just miscalculates. Oh, Dash big is crush. straight into a cross counter, and he's in the ground again. Dash up, double jab, and it's Pressure City here. Pugera not able to interrupt. Idom's changed his timing round, and Pugera's a sitting duck. There's the interruption, oh, oh, oh. though. Fishing for the cross counter. Thunderclap. He shifty. doesn't go for the break. Pugera not going to engage. Oh. Counter hit leaks. There's the command grab. One, One more. more touch. Oh, oh my God, speaking interrupts. of a touch. Oh, the oh. trade! Oh, no, he doesn't. Speed reversal this time. Says I don't need the V-trigger item. Oh, wow, what a jump back button from Pugera. Uh-oh, needs to be real careful right now. Another V-reversal. Single touch, and that's all he needs. Pugera didn't have the time to interrupt. He gets lit up. I domination. Slow paced games definitely starting to pay off there. The road to retaining. The Capcom Cup is still open for Idom, and we say goodbye to Pugera. But what a valiant fight from Pugera as well. So, so much incredible tech in that matchup, so much spatial awareness. But boy, when Idom's right next year, and that V gauge is flashing red, yeah, I don't know if any of that matters. It, look, it doesn't matter how good you're playing until you survive the V-Trigger. But we also saw Kawano just not engaging on a lot of fronts, especially he didn't want to deal with the mix coming from Aydam, especially after the Thunderclap pressure. We saw early on, was he was very ready well, to deal with it. Oh yeah, that most of activation through the string twice. But Aydam, as we said, as soon as he smells fear, it's like a shark in the water. Yeah. Dash up trade right there. The buttons don't wake up not working out in his favor that time. But we saw how successful it was. And just a slight delay right there. And this time, getting the mark on that CA confirmed. And that's one of the situations we saw Pogara do very well. But Idom, once he got the swing of things, it became a lot more evident that the mix-up game, the command the, the, the throw, thing the regular is in this throw. this matchup, right, when you miscalculate something, and it's like a such a fine margin, when you miscalculate something, be it the timing for interruption, be it the spacing, Oh, you get punished so heavily by Idom, the very best in the game with this Laura in V Trigger. So terrifying. Pugera showed some great stuff, some great play, but you miscalculate even a frame. And Idom's there to cause you a world of pain. I feel like we saw Idom just slowly figuring out the range to where he can play comfortably yeah. against Pugera in this Balrog, right? The standing heavy punch found his mark so many times. He had some great interruptions as well. Just so he can stand and just to get maintain control of that range. Look at the hype from the crowd right there on that support from Idom, man. It's good to see. And then, of course, we saw the real vortex, the command throw. Am I going to throw you? Is it going to be a button? The reset after the crush still. And uh, that just lets you know just how comfortable Idom was in those last few rounds, those last few segments. But once again, Pugera going to be going home. Absolutely, Idom advances, Pugera eliminated from the bracket, the reigning champ, Capcom Cup 2019, the path to victory, the path to reclaiming that cup is still open for Idom, and of course, the hundreds of Americans in attendance cheering him on inside this Avalon venue for Capcom Cup 9. What a great atmosphere it is regardless. They're here to support Great Street Fighter, and we've had that. We have. All for a week we've had it uh, coming from Street Fighter League. We saw Pugera and the good eight squad take it as well. And then, of course, now 
we got our next match. M. Lizard going up against Vega Patch. I said this earlier, the Fang that made it. Out of three, he was the one who made it. But M. Lizard as well, another story. The Vega. A lot of players tell you who play Vega, the, the Vega communion will tell you that this guy is kind of the architect. He is venerated mm -hmm. right now. Online at Tony K. Been seeing replays and clips of this man for many years. But again, Street Fighter V is the first game that's actually seen him come out and compete on this level. Young really flirted with Street Fighter IV. I think he had a C Viper from when I spoke to him back in the day. And it's five that's really had him come out. He just loves Claw. Mm -hmm. But talking about people that love their character, it's a special breed of person that, was about that to say. plays fun. These guys are, you listen, you know, if you're looking for a partner, go out with a guy that mains Fang, because he is the loyalist <laughs> man. He is never cheating on you. That's These men are loyal keep, to right? the soil. I'm going to tell you right now, that is true. Because <laughs> it was looking slim pickings for Fang for quite some time there. But here we go. M. Lizard going up against Vega Patch. A Vega in the Capcom Cup top eight. That's what I like to see. A I would look to see. In the Capcom Cup, possibly right? top eight. Right. Either way, they got to win two games to make it there. One of these is going home. Oh, that Ryu Bennett just to make sure. Vega's got great buttons for this range. We all know that Fang has great control of range as well. I mean, that's literally uh, Vega's character design, though, right? Controlling that neutral space. And instantly throws off that mask. He said, I want all the damage. Getting real comfortable at that range. Eating a lot of poison, though. Jump in on the coward stance. Oh, that's beautiful. That's just outside the range, though. Okay. He's trying to stand inside that range where he can really interrupt the recovery of that rear bender. Walk nice jump back into it. Yeah. Yeah. See, Look at that. Away, so confident at that range. Him. So confident. Big damage here. He absolutely yeah. knows what he's doing in this matchup. Them Lizard, of course. Father Look at this most pressure. Of this tech chases Tries him to get down. Out of there. And still. One more touch is all he needs for the stun. Them Lizard on the verge. Not now. Trigger is on the table for Vega Patch right now, though. Yeah. Trigger is there. Activate. Ah, the trade on the anti air attempt. Round is it takes the first one right here. Yeah, we really haven't to spend much bar at all. Again, the mask comes off. With that damage. Yeah, that coward stance pressure. Vega Patch. And that poison there as well. Looking to challenge. Every time that trap comes down, the cow crouch. He is punished. Oof. Man, look at this pressure from M. Lizard. Whoa. Nice with punish with the EX sleeves. This is Oki, plus frames again, and M. Lizard is out of there. Back to the neutral. Oh, that coward stand starting to come out a lot more. Vega patch. Seems like he's got a plan. Oh, nice anti air as well. Very reliable. Activating to the trigger. EX to get through. Keeps him poisoned as well. So oh. we'll just tick off with the, the chip damage. Yo, Vega, Vega Patch. Patch has got a significant life uh -oh. lead. But here we go. Come on, grab. Stars change. Real careful. Oh, the EX command throw scoop it, and that's going to do it. M. Lizard with the patience, though. Yeah, it's very interesting. He picked this moment to, stay, uh, to change into bare hand stance. Put the claw away and started to show that command grab and Vega Patch didn't really adapt to that. The range that he's playing at against this poison is he's very interesting. Seems so confident in dealing and really trying to bait out these jumps, right? Sees that he goes for Ryu Benda and literally just jumped over to get that big damage. Great momentum. Yeah, he's as well. got a lot of answers to that because of the range. He's just walking in and just flicking out that stand jab as well. Right. Clean over again. Backs up. That's what you get that mask off. Go for damage. That's a little small poke to get over right there. There we go. Oh. Perfect range on that. And being aware of that range, Mega Patch seeing that he knows this now, really going to change us at all. Another big jump in. Big damage as well. Hold the throw. This is not looking good. Quick B skill, yeah. great anti air after the wall jump. Oh, catches him, and a counter hit, so it's gonna be a big conversion. 
activation stations, and he gets rolls out of there. That's very smart. Doesn't want to deal with the mix. V Trigger doesn't catch him. The EX dash to get out I'm of there. I'm not gonna lie, I've got absolutely no idea if I get some money shot of EX. Same. Oh, and great Eager patch puts a round on the board. That was scary. Round two. It's a trade, so he's still gonna have to hold his point. Uh -oh. A crush here. Into the cancel. Again, the mask comes off at the earliest opportunity. He's down a lot of life here. Flips the jump right there with the EX. Get closer and closer to this corner. Nice confirm. Vega Patch starting to find his uh, comfortable ranges to start playing at. He's stopped relying on these rear benders. V trigger. EX. Takes back control of the corner. Master Claw beats him to the punch. And Lucha Jump once again. We've seen it work out a couple times. Vega Patch trying to get out of this corner. M Lizard finally knocks off the claw. Pulls up the sleeves. He has to get through. What a whip on Vega Patch! Beautiful. From Vega Patch puts him on the board. One apiece. He's looking a lot more confident now. He's finding the ranges at which he was a lot more comfortable playing at. We've and Lizard showing that he's willing to interrupt a lot of these traps. And they're put down right in front of him. So Vega Patch, the next level of pressure. A lot of these Fang players are so good at adapting uh, once they see how you deal yeah. with these multiple layers of traps that they have. It was perfect space because you saw last time. You noticed that he did that, that EX too. Space one. He just backed up that last time to get the round. Look for the whiff punish. Big crush counter on top of it. Gets Vega Patch back in the set. Oh, wow. Oh that shit ain't going to do it, though. Big damage. Ooh. Right here in the corner, goes for the throw. Vega Patch tries to float out, gets out of the corner, and now gets this hit and a knockdown the with his poison. Traded. Nice Great. air to air. To air. Nice block from M Lizard. The V reversal doesn't do anything other than keep him in there. And again, he's ready with the EX rollout, using that projectile invulnerability. He walks into range and gets that cancel again. One more touch will do it. Has to be wary of the activation. That's what Vega Patch is looking for. Oh, didn't take it. Had a couple here of times. Here we go. Breaks the claw, jump back. Uh-oh, Ryu Ben clips him out of the air. And that poison. No anti-air. Oh, crush him. Oh, what? My oh God, whip the punish fierce. again. Again with the stand fierce. The second time that button has saved the Vega Patch. Vega Pito. Fighting out here. Very reticent to put these traps down because Ed Lizard is so aware of the spacing. Interrupts him with that jab. Yep. See it again. Now you see Vega Patch. Woo! Miss Space Slide needs to be wary of that. Catches him in the air. Plus frames again, and now he's back in the corner. Ooh, Beautiful. We saw him do that uh, in the first game. Jump back, V Trigger. Gets him out of there and gets him a chunk of damage, but Vega Patch still with the life lead. Once again, completely comfortable getting this poison, trying to maintain it. And let the time do its job. Let the poison do damage over time. Yeah, I like Vega Patch putting these traps down when he's nowhere near in range to punish. Trigger activate. We've seen that response before. Pushes him out of the air. Conversion. There's the jungle. Hold the poison. Cross up not going to work. Anything Vega will do patch. it for Vega Patch. This is going to be so difficult for M Lizard to mount any kind of comeback, and he doesn't. And Vega Patch pulls into the lead 2 1. What a turnaround this is. As I said to you, these Fang players, they know so much about these matchups in such detail. As soon as you show them some kind of knowledge in the matchup, they're able to change their pressure strings, they're able to change the ranges that they're interacting with. Because let me tell you, you're not a fan mate, without exploring these matches all the way to the depths. It gets unlocking everything tough. you can find. You don't have any XP in this. It gets significantly tougher. And of course, we've got a level. bunch of really good Vegas in Europe as well. So when uh, Vega Patch is playing in the offline events or online events, you know you're going to be coming across some pretty good Vega players out there in Europe as well. Round it's actually the same caliber as M Lizard, right. given his performance now. 
shout out to the lads back on. Mask off. Straight into the trap. He wanted to walk up, and again, Vega Patch doing a great job of making sure these are. Oh, he just walked into it that time. The confirm. That's an uh -oh. interesting choice. So back in the corner. There's a stance change. Shimmied himself. <laughs> wow. Nice! Beautiful from Vega Patch. It's all going his way. All the There's the start. And it's going to be set point to Vega Patch. Are we going to see a Fang make it into top eight? Round a Fang two. in the top eight? Unheard of. Let me see it. On the, la uh, on the last a one. A Fang here. <laughs> on the Entirely last. Entirely contained within the top eight. Oh, sir, I don't believe you. Show me. Oh, I almost got the whiff punish. Nice. Oh, the EX at that range. Damn, I can't. Dissuading M Lizard from walking too comfortably in. So important for Fang to keep him poisoned for as long as possible. Because that just does all the work for you. You don't even need to do any damage. He's just doing it for you over time. Oh, here's the throw. Got it opens him up. One more touch. There we go. Catches him standing up. That's one set point defeat. Uh, defended. Final round. Okay, wait a minute. M Lizard. The head extension. Oh, bar to work on as well. That's poorly spaced, and he gets a big punish there. DA on the table, too. Not so many resources for Vega Patch. That coward. Low profile in the jump in. Ooh, full CA spin it all. Actually, this is the last team. round after all. Also Big noticed damage. as well that uh, M Lizard had stopped throwing that mask off at the start. Of the round. The damage may be racking up a bit too much. Uh oh, confirm. Uh oh. Into the trigger. Here comes Vega Patch. Damage. All right. Gets the knockdown. Not gonna take that neutral jump bait in the corner this time. Were you Bender to get through? Excuse me, the to get through the that. Right reversal Bender? straight into. Oh, what? the V trigger. Gets the knockdown with a slide. Doesn't stand up this time. Oh, oh. the off the wall awesome. jump, so much range. And look at that. The big <laughs> exhale and lean back in the seat. <laughs> Like you said, you work in double time. So no good. man, even if you so, do know the final matchup. Man. He's not moved in 10 seconds. If you, even if you do know that matchup. There we go. Still this is stressful. This is stressful. Mega guys, Patch not making it easy. These guys are working so hard right? with characters. <laughs> Them lizard trying to loosen up the shoulders over there. Yeah. Them lizard changing his strategy. Ever so slightly. Round Not throwing one. the mask off to get that damage boost, but also take more damage. Oh, there we go. And it starts again. Stan Light. Great poke at this range. We've seen how it's worked out. We've seen a few, co a few conversions as well. We've also seen that Nutri jump start to come out a lot more from Vega Patch. Corner pressure once again, tries to swing there. And that poison is doing a number on M. Lizard's life bar. Oh Another days. conversion. What a round from Vega Patch. Well, staggered pressure. Round Offense, two. excuse me, in the corner. Just dashes the mask throw. And he's put him in the corner already. Uh -oh. Straight to a button and again. Said in the last round. That poison doing a lot of the work. That flick doesn't really get him anything other than trapped in the corner Yo, and he's opened up again. Plus frames all over the place, spacing traps all over the place. Vega Patch is flowing. He only needs two more touches to do it. M Lizard can't fight his way out. V reversal. And Still. A fuzzy to close it out and Vega Patch with the fist pump. One step closer to top eight. The last remaining Fang in the bracket is still here. And M Lizard is eliminated. Unfortunately, gonna be going home. But Vega Patch gonna be going up. Staying alive in this bracket here. Man, working double time with the Fang in top 16. That's crazy. You know what? It's Unheard of. It's such a shame that these two guys had to play each other because I don't think there's a more you know, dedicated 
group of players than Vega no. mains and Fang mains. And they're so You're such right. a great community. They all help each other out. They all trade uh, tech with each other. They're all so supportive of each other. Uh, and it's great that we have communities like that around Street Fighter Five. It's definitely uh, been one of the coolest things about the game, definitely. Uh, here we go, and it started off really well for him, listen. It looked like he had a number. He was perfectly spacing everything. Uh, he was really, really aware of the ranges at which he could encroach. Uh, and then at the end, closed it out with the uh, command grabs. It started to be the jump-ins that were looking really good for him as well. Um, but Vega Patch just completely changed his focus, was able to start putting this corner pressure on. Yeah, that poison did so much work for the boy Vega Patch. Like when I mean, literally, there were rounds where he just ran it back just based off of the fact that, hey, I'm just gonna back up. I'm just gonna play back. Beautiful yeah, whip punish, punish right so there. Nice on the Beautiful. Oh, oh. And, and another one as well. The stand heavy punch, just a perfect spacing. Those small changes you yeah, talked about well. that these Fong players be using. They have to have the conversions on deck. A lot of times they're not gonna get that ability with these clean hits. The stance change. Yeah, it's only very specific openings that Fung actually does big damage. That was so nice as well. He'd been hit by that jump back V trigger activation a couple of times, and Vega Patch immediately showing the adaptation. But M Lizard did defend the set point. The corner pressure was enormous here. He just incessantly peppered away. Uh, and then the jump in closed out, got a counter hit on something. But boy, how big were these two rounds, Steve? This series right here, I'm going to tell you right now, that series of Vega Patch having you in the corner, you can see the panic. You can see the scaredness in the character play right there in front of you, uh, especially coming from the fact that Vega Patch really starts to get some snowball this momentum. And it's really hard, especially if you don't have meter. He's making you spin V reversal, and you have a backflipping V reversal. So you're not even getting out of the corner. You no. literally just have to fight your way out. Well, the, 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 the things that we did see, the corner escapes were the EX roll. But when Vega, e Patch, realized, when Vega, Vega Patch realized that I don't actually need to jump yeah. to give you that gap to get out, it just was in front of him spacing traps plus frames putting the traps down and they really like you said there's no real way uh, for Vega to interact with that uh, we are gonna see Vega patch advance we lose M lizard from the bracket and Vega patches reward for that oh my is God. facing the Evo champion well that's how good you are you, you're facing the Evo champion that's how good you are you've made it to this part round two Get ready for Kawano, but of course, another one coming down the line. I think we see it on the stage. Phenom versus Momochi, our next I match coming up. I can't wait for up. that one, man. Two of the players that we have seen at every single Capcom Cup for Street Fighter V. We've got that one to look forward to, but of course, none of this would happen without our awesome partners, specifically Max Factory. Uh, and we are very excited to announce a new figure from Max Factory. If you haven't seen this beautifully detailed one six scale figure of Chun Li throughout the week here on the stream, and I can tell you it's based on an illustration by one of the co creators of Street Fighter 2 and an absolute legend of design who brought Chun Li to the world in the first place. Akiman, the designer of the figure, was originally recorded requested by Momochihama Chozai Pharmacy in Japan, and it was released uh, in 2022, but it's now finally coming to life as this beautiful statue, thanks to Max Factory. Uh, it stands just over 10 inches tall, and it is a loving recreation of that original artwork, as you saw by Akiman there. You can find out more uh, by following the Max Factory official Twitter, and they will let you know as soon as you are able uh, to get your hands on that. It's a beautiful piece. Uh, of artwork there and we've got more beautiful matches to come here at Capcom Cup Phenom and Momochi up next but I believe we're going to go to a quick break before we go any further in this Capcom Cup we need Cup to take bracket. a break I we have to everybody needs to you take a break you guys need some refreshments at home we'll see you back on the other side to fly, time to fly. Distortions. They're still 
puking out dinosaurs all over the planet. So, Vicatoa Island's been sealed up for three years, and Ivius won't own up to Leviathan's malfunction? Can you address the reports of exofighter patrols on the island? Reports of exofighter patrols are simply untrue. IBS is committing all possible resources to the investigation. Exercise results logged. Sunsetting temporal instance. Come on back. Drinks on me. There are hundreds of exo fighters running around out there. Everyone's armed, and nobody knows what'll happen next. One minute, they could be helping you. The next minute, they're shooting you in the back. You need to keep fighting until we can figure out how to destroy the Vibe. It's trying to build stronger exosuits, so it's pulling any exo fighter in their holding back in time to these bloody war games. Like it or not, the exosuits keep it is alive out there. But the more we use it, the more it helps Leviathan. Well, that's not an option. One way or another. Value team members, prepare for dimensional integration in 10 minutes. You stay alive, man. Only you. If you give an AI like Leviathan the directive, improve our exosuits, it has to complete. It doesn't matter whether that takes a hundred tries, a million, all for the perfect suit. More than that. But at least do me the courtesy of looking me in the face whilst you do it. Okay, pinky forefinger, back to middle, full wrist articulation. Then we do it in reverse. Begin. What the hell are you guys doing? It's a secret robot handshake. Good morning, Victoria. This is for my fellow hunters! You won Capcom Cup in Street Fighter 4, and in the first season of Street Fighter 5, you saw success, but Street Fighter 5 has proved to be a bit more difficult for you in terms of achieving uh, the same levels of results. Why has that been? Street Fighter 4 to different players あとは全選手だったりとかっていうすごい若い 10代のプレイヤーが出てきてて、ま、それは 
、ストリートファイター4の時にも、まあ、ナックルドゥだったりとかあの若いプレイヤーはいたんですけど、まあ、自分もまだその時は若かったんですけどもう今となってはベテランプレイヤーで多分今トップ16位に残ってる選手でエムリザード選手の次に自分が今年齢が高いので、うん、やっぱり若い選手がどんどん出てきてるっていうのがすごく大変になってきてると思います。Uh, your organization, Shinobism, does so much great work、uh, in supporting younger players.、Uh, and of course, you run、uh, events as well and build a, a great community、uh, for fighting games. How do you manage to balance that whilst also trying to compete at the highest level as a competitor?、Um, まあ、それはチョコブランカだったりとかあとはそのシノビズムのスタッフ、まあ、あとは一緒にやってるシノビズムの,そのチームメイトとかがまあすごく自分の周りに恵まれてるいいプレイヤーというかサポートしてくれる人がすごくいるので、まあ、そのおかげで頑張れてます。You met your wife through Street Fighter? Um, what's it like having a partner that is so passionate about the thing that you love as well? まあ、同じ趣味、まあ、もともとはプロゲーマーになる前から一緒に付き合って、まあ、その時は趣味だったんですけど、まあ、それが一緒に仕事になって、まあ、当時イービルジーニアスにチョコブランカと一緒に入って、まあ、本当にそれで世界のファンの人から応援してもらってっていう本当になんかずっと一緒というか運命共同体っていうふうにやれてるんですごく幸せなことだと思ってます。Here we are, it is Hollywood, California, and we are continuing here along Capcom Cup 9. We are halfway through this top 16 to find out who the top eight are going to be. My name is James Chen, and I am joined by Mr. St. Cola. How are you feeling right now? Brother, people at home, everyone here, you can't see it, but my hands are shaking. You might think <laughs> it's the nerves from doing commentary, it's not that. It's electricity that I feel in the air for this. Magnificent, ginormous event that we have. The cup is here. This is the final one for Street Fighter V, and we today are going to see who's going to get it done. We're leaving people by the side. Unfortunately, Pugera is out, and we also see M. Lizard out too, as well. And between Phenom and between Momochi, one of these cats is going to leave right now. And you just saw the interview with Momochi over there, you know, talking about this. He, he said in Street Fighter 4 he was one of the young cats, and now he is definitely a certified veteran here.、Mm -hmm. But Phenom also been playing the game for a very, very long time. So you can consider both of these guys veterans. And again, every matchup here that we're seeing, there's so much storyline behind all of these players and、right. history, and just so much of the, the, the blood, sweat, and tears coming into this match. And, It all culminates into this single event ooh, 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 here. Ooh, ooh, and so it is going to be Phenom Momochi, who is going to continue forward here in the top 16. Let's go! Yo, shout out to Doc Fugu. Had a translation of what Momochi was、uh, talking about in his,、uh, one of the recent interviews in his videos. Said that he died twice. <laughs> that he died twice, but resurrected here to take down Phenom. But however, Phenom is one of those cats that people just, I don't know why, in the English words, they don't rate him. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't put him up on the great.、Right. He is so consistent. He's so strong. Can he take down the likes of Shelby as a bride? That's right. I, I, I forgot. It, it's not Momochi. It's Monochi. Monochi. My Monochi. bad. Yo, shout out to Mono. Monochi. <laughs> Monochi from Puerto Rico. Here we go.、Uh, but the anti air from Phenom obviously busting out the loop. Phenom definitely has a lot of side characters. We've seen the Nikali. We know he's got a Karin as well. But Momochi has been sticking to this Cody for so long despite having some of the widest variety of characters used in Capcom Cup history. Absolutely. EXDP gets the bust out. We're back to mid screen. And that right, Rachel? Look, yeah, the B skill too gets the activation going to flow in. Knife him up. Here he goes, stuck in the corner. Oh, he reset out of the air, but that sweep wasn't in time. The accident. Off the backboard. Short tackle for the Oki. Hold this throw, bro. Yeah, and now the back throw has the pressure, but too early on that heavy kick. And Momochi with the proper punish, and it killed. Yeah, put that on a t shirt, James. When you put that on a t shirt, James. <laughs> and it killed. <laughs> This is gonna kill, and it did. So Momochi taking that first round, but that was off of the mistake from Phenom. He hit that heavy kick, but did it a little too early, so it whiffed. 
But shout out to Momochi for having the reactions to really punish it. Cody can definitely go toe-to-toe -to -toe when it comes to damage when he likes the loop, but here's the target combo for the Oki. Great tech here from Momochi. But be careful that mid-screen might get clipped and uh, die for it. Oh, but fireball. Again. You can see how both of these players are respecting the neutral so much. And this is what you have to do against Luke. You have to play so fundamental against this character. But right now, here comes Phenom. Their time, he timed the heavy kick properly. He's not even going to need the stun. It's just done. quick, easy, no damage taken around there for Phenom. Just only one small chunk. One thing I'm enjoying about Phenom is these close range fireballs. It's hard to predict with the V skill to sway through. Gets up the counter, hit on the dash in, DP situation, call from the corner. The tag, EAG. Such a good corner carry, and you get the Oki off of that. There's that stand median kick from Cody. Such a good footsies button. He doesn't outrange Luke, but he can definitely keep up, but not if Phenom is going to keep getting those whip punishes like that. Nice interruption. DP. One more guess to put this man to rest the throw. Now the steady heavy kick landing the right sort of way. That's the play. Phenom with another throw in the finish. The first one to him. Yeah, Phenom right there. Two rounds in a row. Very dominating loss. Barely a chunk in both of those rounds. So Phenom, you can see, just he's playing the loop properly here. He's playing very neutral base. Right. Every hit, right. corner carry, get into the corner, get the Oki, and then finish the job off. So Momochi's got to figure out something to do. Didn't even get a chance to activate the B trigger last round at That's all. True. It was denied it. Uh, continue see, we saw the forward heavy kick whip, and he got the clip. So let's see what happens here if he's able to activate. This is your sort of way back heavy kick. Trying to find a crush counter is Phenom. Yeah, so far, Phenom, his whip punishing uh, with that crouch medium kick into the EX flash knuckle has really been paying dividends. Mm. That's going to be a true punish right there. Five frame stand light punch. Hits so far with all that forward movement. Exactly. Nurses forward. He's going to do so. However, Phenom, all these throws. Okay, the feature cat is flashing light red right now for him. That was the first time Momochi did go EX Zonk into throw. So he's sending that little bit of a message. Previously, he had been just going for the frame traps. Okay, hammer activation. into activation. Tried to go for a shimmy, oh. but there's the whip punish this time from Momochi. Something that medium kick, something that activation from happening. Plus, range jumps back, actually. Maybe huh. looking for an EXDP, but gets hit with the X Fireball activation, too, as well. On the side, a Phenom can dominate a lot more of the situation because of that feature situation. Fireball, harder to be skilled with the half of that feature. Go for a throw. No, that time it was the button. And then Phenom tried to backdash and got caught. And then Momochi continues to just chase him down. He's up around here, but this is what he did last time. He got up around and then Phenom came back two rounds straight. Very, very dominatingly. So let's see if Momochi can prevent that from happening again. Momochi down back for the down back. Not trying to get opened up like that with the crouching kick. And you see him just making sure that he is every so often ducking. There's a heavy song. We're going to get that big hit that we've seen like from the likes of VX Bow. I was saying, the last game, Momochi seemed like he was hitting less buttons, because like I said, he was getting whip punished a lot, but right. actually for a while, he started hitting buttons again. Oh no, getting the whip punish of his own. Spacing trap just a little bit there, and now Momochi trying to brush him down to the corner. Tag. Let the oh. back throw happen. Oh, commits the standing heavy kick. Can't see Ruffy. Punish. Yet. Here we go, activation, and Momochi checking it. Knows that Phenom wanted to steal a turn by walking forward and getting Maybe a standing medium punch or something. Socks up for the V skill. I like that feature for usage. Get the knockdown, sock up for the V skill, but get clip coming in. Yeah, situation. Gonna hurt. Counter oh. hit the stutter step. One more hit will do it. One touch. The finesse and bless that'll put him to rest for that round. And oh, you oh. pointed out the V trigger oh. being so yeah. imperative because we hadn't seen that previously, right? Now you can go toe to toe with Luke's buttons. With that enhanced uh, range. Yes. As Jammers would say, it's not a knife, it's a sword. <laughs> and we know how powerful sword characters are in fighting games, mm -hmm. man. They're terrifying. <laughs> so Cody definitely fighting with that sword. Right. So here we go, 1-1 one, one now between these two, but a great start for Phenom. Counter hit linked into that standing medium punch. Target combo. Again, such a powerful tool to have. Oh, look at this, and gets a mochi with an early shimmy, and he spends the EX to get the stun. I like that. The way to get things done. EP, Ender has to come for the quarterback medium, or goes for the tick throw. What an option to play for in a perfect KO. Yo, Phenom's looking golden right now. Momochi is folding up in the corner. That was seven golden letters for Phenom right there. Corner pressure from Luke, man. You're worried about medium punch, crouch medium punch. Even though some of these are minus, the space traps are really good for him, too. 
again, this character is just so solid in, in all the areas that you need to be solid in, in Street Fighter V, including the single hit confirmed. And honestly, there are very few people out there who have the single hit confirmed skills that Phenom has. Uh oh, heavy kick, no activation just yet. Also crouching light kick, EX, Ruffian, Crouch Beers, oh, the max amount of corner carry right there. We know Momochi can kill off of just basic, we saw it at the online, CPT Online Japan. Yes, He's sir. got the stun, so Momochi not going to be able to kill here, but look at that damage. More touch, the tech. And the activation now from Phenom. He's got the Rock Smasher ready to go. Two nice more interruption. Away. Stops the EX at play. Oh, this is so tense. There's EX bar at the bottom. You're so afraid of that EX all at any point to even start the party. Or oh, the EX fireball. Oh, big jump in. He, he didn't get the hit. I think he was hoping that would be in the range, but it wasn't. The high one is definitely one of the faster ones. So he's hoping to link down to no pixels for both players. A lot of EX bar for Phenom. One EX fireball could be the way. Oh, the sway doesn't get the clip. No weed. He tried to bait out the uh, Sand Blaster by pushing a little bit forward with that walk right there. But nice job to Phenom for not falling for that and just staying patient. Brown Saw there. the whiff, got the punish. Phenom up 2-1. And again, you mentioned this is loser side. Whoever loses, this is going home. I cannot believe you just said that. One person is Phenom Momochi going home already. We just started the day, James. I just got in. <laughs> Turn up my coat. What do you mean? I don't like commentating these loser side matches here. It's so stressful. Think about how they feel right now. Pino with the back heavy kick, staying solid. Getting nice confirms in the corner carry. Use that each particle part. Put him in the corner, hold the throw. And once again, the corner pressure. Forcing out the fear person from Momochi. We haven't seen that previously. Having to rotate dif uh, different defensive options. Momochi. Yeah, the one thing that you will notice is that we have definitely been on Momochi's side of the screen far more often than we have been on Phenom's side of the screen, which means Phenom has been winning this neutral. Momochi has been putting so much work here. But again, his, the range of his buttons is really strong, but really very easily matched by Luke's. For that back heavy kick on the fireball, comes up in the corner. However, that pot, yeah, the V-trigger, he'll get some space up in this place, but you have to be so careful. huge for Momochi. Yeah. Phenom getting that trying to go for that cross up, put him in the corner, and that's why Momochi is getting this pressure on him again. Back to back throws, is he gonna go for it again? He does! Three times in a row. I mean, look, Phenom, he's gotta know that. He's yeah. the man who threw Daigo five times in a row, right? <laughs> he's like, how's it feel? How's it feel? <laughs> he put that situation continuously over and over against Phenom. Got to strike back and get that win, gets the medium, and of course that gets that Oki off the target combo. But again, that last round, I feel like Phenom lost because he jumped for that cross-up. Yeah. And it put Gabe Momochi that corner position. What Phenom's reaction. been winning the neutral, and I feel like he needs to stay at this part where at least offensively in the corner, but misses the timing of that meaty heavy kick again. Oh, David. Plus. Um, put up in the corner, it's not the reversal. Yeah, so V reversal doesn't want to deal with the post EX Zonk Knuckle mix up. You saw how much Momochi was able to make that work in the previous round. Like Momochi just used to sign this play for the push to the corner, all these normals, nothing heavy, nothing fancy. How can work? Oh. EX Zonk, the heavy addition lands, medium roughing right after, backs up looking for a reversal. Watch out, out the activation, activate. and just to jump away from Momochi. He's trying, look at this, the dash up. Every other time that uh, Phenom has activated V-Trigger, Momochi has started to play oh, a little defensive. Wait, yeah. The jump back to back dash. This time on the activation, Momochi went super aggressive. Forward dashes and buttons and actually caught Phenom off guard there. So Momochi now tying it up two to two. Man, I love this rotation of defensive options too from Momochi. Also, you know, we see a lot more Round Olivia one. versus up in the corner, but overall, but this is gonna fall right here. Momochi getting up and turning up like volume, I should say, with the aggression. Now feeding with that where that medium kick was. It seems like getting checked the challenge. Especially in Street Fighter League Japan, Momochi has got great whip punishes. You see it right there with the medium. And it's so subtle right now. I've been saying that Phenom has been whip punishing a lot of Momochi's buttons. And the strategy on that is walking forward. Mm -hmm. That's why Momochi got hit, because he's punishing the attempt to whip punish by trying to move forward. What a great single hit confirm here for Phenom. Tech. Back kick, cut, medium kick at play, activation. Flashing right here, you want to stay away from work, heavy kick. Same heavy kick, crush, did it happen to you? No check on that, forward dash, and there's that whip punish. punish. He gets that activation. There's the throw, though. Ah, he has the meaty! No vegan. 
Oh, the crouchy oh. light kick. He can kill you. He can kill you on the next you hit. Can Take the die. throw. Take the throw, Phenom. Yep, that's why he took it. We've all seen that footage. One hit from a fireball. One and single, Momochi, a breeze. Momochi has a super on deck. One confirmed, he'd easily go into the super, especially with the range on that knife. He gets one hit. Oh, oh. it's gone. Careful. Jump in, tries to catch him with the low. He covers the time. Anybody's game. Beyond gets a back heavy kick. Luckily, if, if he gets one of those, oh! just an interruption with a standing light kick. That's it. Beat him. On set point to send out Momochi. Bro, it feels so beautiful to say that. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Momochi has to take two rounds in a row here. That's the only way he's gonna advance. A great whip punish for Momochi here. Now, Phenom is stuck in the corner. Phenom has been winning the neutral very, very well here. And I love that. Oh, I don't think that's what he wanted to do, but he'll take it. And the back throw for Phenom. This is huge. Phenom has him caught up in the corner. Oh, but don't call a corner just yet. Gets the low rough, and that's Oki, keeps it meaty. Doesn't get the oh. right combo, though. It wasn't a counter, it wasn't able to get that stand fierce. Gotta break no, the whip. So far, but no whip punish. In these 10 situations, we're trying to stay alive, thrive. It's so hard to make sure that you are optimal. Back to this neutral again. He's just slowly trying to walk Momochi back to the corner is what he's trying to do, yep. Good block on that EX Zonk. That's just the surprise attack. You're hoping they walk face first into it. And it gives you the plus frames as well. Look at the advancement from Phenom. He is not scared. Look at this forward movement. That caution me to kick. You got to be careful with that button. You've seen medium punch from Momochi come through continuously. Oh, oh, there's the confirm. Here we go. Big damage here. Look at this. Now, one back throw can do it. The shimmy. Oh, he didn't he cancel. He did not cancel. EX Zonk. Oh, no. He didn't get the cancel. He didn't finish his plate. You could just go into Sandblaster. That's safe on block. Just do the light Sandblaster off of that. And even if you were wrong, you would have been OK. At least at that range, I'm pretty sure. Unfortunate for Vina. Mochi. All tied up. Final game. Oh. Final round. Oh, Looking for an opening again with a contrary kick. I feel like he's been so brazen with that button. Oh. But the sway is a play. Yo, we hold this throw, bro, again. Dine on some dirt. Dash up, ah, he gets the hit, doesn't get the he counter the, he wanted. Yeah, he got the counter hit, but he missed the link. N M M Phenom playing a little bit nervous here. Yeah, V reversal, don't deal with that post. EX Zonk Knuckle mix up. Phenom here, down in life here, but if he can get one good hit confirmed, he can catch up. Look at all that gray help on Momochi's side. The double dash into throw. He's in. There's the activation. There's the, the shimmy. shimmy! Momochi takes down Phenom and sends him home. Clutch decisions with that B trigger. It's a sword, it's not a knife. That, oh man, that is, that's a, that's gonna, I'm just gonna say, that's gonna stick in Phenom's mind for a very long time. He got that crouching medium punch on the shimmy. He, he got it. the hit, he, he did it. not cancel off of it, and that allowed Momochi to find that EX Zonk in there and uh, then take the next round afterwards. That's a really, really tough one there, but again, it was so close between these two, down to the wire, down to the last game, last round. Amazing play. Amazing play from Phenom, but overall, Momochi able to steal it, steal it. And honestly, I gotta say that B-Trigger, being able to fight Luke's buttons, whip punish, and make things a lot more dangerous in these corner pushes, you don't see Momochi do anything super fancy. It's just great fundamentals too as well. We talked about that with Phenom, but Mochi had great things to say with standing medium kick every so often. And even with the crouching medium kick from Phenom coming out to play to clip these other buttons, it, he, he was just able to stand, like, walk, yeah. medium kick, walk, medium kick. We got close enough that got the medium punch confirmed. And just, man, but that drop, though, from yeah. Phenom, bro. And, and again, you can see it in these replays right here. Every time uh, Phenom is winning, it's usually he has that corner position against yeah. Momochi. This has been so crucial for him. So again, here we are in this corner position. He takes this first round. He gets basically the stun off of this. And this was the key basically to the match was can Phenom push Momochi to the corner? Mm -hmm. If Momochi could fight in the neutral, that was the difference right there. And so here we go. Look at this. He had a fighting it again, pushing towards the corner here. But look at this, just no life, and he went for it. So he was trying smart. to bait out that sandblaster, and then it went to the final game here. And you can see right now, Momochi doing such a good job fighting from this from the middle of the screen. He has a in the corner. Yeah, this is, I think, the moment. Yeah, yeah right here. Yeah, here it is, right here. The, the shimmy. Crucial drop. And watch this. Yeah, no he had it. Cancel. He didn't believe. 
I think he was gonna go up for the tick throw just off of autopilot. And like I said, very few players, I feel like, have the same kind of hit confirm reaction as Phenom. Right. I watched his stream where he has just done the most ridiculous of confirmations, single hit confirms, but that time, I don't think he was looking for it. I think he was just, I'm gonna go for the tick throw. And so, unfortunately, he kind of, I don't know, again. It, it, but I mean, like, look at where you're at, the stage, you know, it's different right. CFN, and honestly, he had a lot of great hit confirms. We saw him hit confirm and crouch mini kick continuously as the match went on. It's just the one time where it was so crucial to take that round. There's oh. an alternate universe where Phenom moves on, but right now we still stay solidified in the one that is Momochi moving on. Moving on with more matches, we have Battlemaster versus Mr. Cream Zone Ooh. coming up uh, a this, France this, team kill. This breaks my heart, honestly. I mean, look, there aren't many. Uh, we had 11 countries represented in the 16 players here, right? So yes. I think the most was Japan. And uh, France was one of the closest ones. They had two players in here. And unfortunately, the way the brackets fall, they do have to fight each other first. So it is going to have to be a France kill. And again, that's just how the bracket. Once you get to top 16, is when you start eliminating friends. In the in the immortal words of Mr. Jason Cole, okay, mm -hmm. like that's just what happens at this point. And so these two players have fought each other forever, and here they are going up against each other to, to find out who makes it along the top 16 that bracket. Is so. I mean, it's 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 sad, but that makes for a great. But that makes for a great match. We have people that have played each other so much. We're going to be seeing levels here, not people that haven't played in a long time. They've been practicing. We saw them fight at UFA. We've seen them play on their streams and things like that. So I'm sure they've hit a little bit in the bag for when Capcom Cup happens. And if this Round moment one. happens, and guess what? We're going to see it right here. Right. Bellmaster, Mr. Crimson, let's get it. I mean, between the 16 players we have, I think we had 17 characters represented played in the group stage here. Yeah. But in the entire Capcom Cup, the craziest thing is I think we had one Dalsum. And like, obviously Dalsum is like com considered one of the strongest characters right now. And the best pilot is Mr. Crimson. So this Free. is gonna be a lot of work here for Valmaster, but Valmaster also likes to be super aggressive. He's gonna be hitting buttons in your face. And Dalsums definitely do not like that. You got the Ian's Barball block on the neutral medium punch. Mr. Crimson, only one good like Sandy, heavy kick crush, maybe even less than that at this point. You get like maybe jump beers to find the finish. It's too difficult, but here's the activation. Oh no, he saw he yeah. saw the activation starting up. He got the knockdown, but he wasn't confident enough to try to go for a juggle there. Gets the hit! Oh, he will finish it. Slide right afterwards just to interrupt. Jump back, and again, when you see Dawson jump back. Oh, oh, it clipped! Didn't wait long enough, but still gets the hit. The slide applied right here, Mr. Crimson. But I see every so often Bowmaster with a board heavy kick to rush counter them slides. Gotta be careful, Mr. Crimson, as he moves on. Yeah, and again, just when Dalsum jumps in the air, you can see it, just he's got teleports, he's got all sorts of things to keep him up in the air. So hard to chase him down. That's one of the things that makes him so powerful. Yeah, those are fantastic. Long fist made out of plastic, EX Fireball, lock him down, trying to get the area right there. Well, there you know we what? go. Valmaster's hoping he could be Wanda, just like turn uh, Dalsum into string <laughs> at this point in time. Spoilers, James Oakley. <laughs> <laughs> EX, they take him to the corner, going for that Oki, the aggression. Okay, so Mr. Crimson fighting out here. I like that back dash to get away from that slide. He knows that he wants to activate, and there you go. You're gonna be cooking some Chinese food here on this barbecue grill. Oh! oh nice. Cheap stuff, the EX get right there, the clipping coming in. Bad situation. No. Mr. Crimson with the first W. You see how difficult it is for Chung Lee to do what she wants to do with her buttons. We call her Gorilla Lee because her buttons are fantastic. And you just see Sand <laughs> Fierce, Sand Heavy Kick, you get crushed counter, you get Round all your one. health is chipped away from the, the, the call her footsie what? play. <laughs> gorilla Lee? Gorilla? It's Gorilla Lee, the silver she, She's the strongest gorilla in the gorilla. world. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love you, Jay. But however, Sim makes you play his game. Doesn't matter what game it is, he makes you play his game. It's hard for Chung Lee to be able to fight back. There's not much he can really do. She like mid to close range. Yeah, and another thing, you know, obviously Dalsum, one of his biggest traits is that even though he's a quote zoner, he's also one of the best rushdown characters in the game. Every knockdown he can teleport next to you, speedy slide next to you. But here we go, Valmaster with big damage, gonna go for the bird kick, push him toward the corner. Crush mini kick, the hit slates might have been better right there, but he'll keep locked out with the fireballs. Oh, slide out of there, and Valmaster didn't get a punish. Wow, long distance heavy slide! This is Thaw. 
Oh my Fierce. god. Just needs one tiny hit here. One tiny hit. Oh my god. No, that's oh. fun to jump with. That's enough to kill Dalsum with the jumping medium kick doing gobs of damage there. And Mr. Crimson steals the round from Valmaster. That's the zoner, by the way. Yep. That's the zoner, by the way. But the damage I'm playing right here, I, I feel like Mr. Crimson is the best at accessing that damage. But also, we'll talk about his defense here in a second because he gets himself out of a lot of situations. Ooh. Skates up underneath the fireball and not trying to get clipped. Because Valmaster's using that fireball to kind of skate him in a little bit, gain some space up in this place, but it's not happening. Yeah, and again, Dalsum being able to switch from this zoning game to the offense when he needs it, literally at a moment's notice half the time, is really good. And did Mr. Crimson eat that fireball on purpose so that his fireball would keep going? I mean, if he did, that is a crazy read right there. Easy activation though, the tag. He thought he saw the V reversal activation. I did too. Oh, plus on with. So press the buttons, hold this throw though. Pop in the corner. Oh, plus now we call a corner. There you go. Yeah, bow master with the finish. So many things you have to worry about. Is it. It's an overhead, slide, throw, either way, you're dead. And now Valmaster, you can see here, going, man. This character's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what, Valmaster? Character's cheap, too. <laughs> Valmaster thinking about this right now, trying to gather some information. Yeah, oh, OK. There's a, definitely a little, a little bit of a sign right there that he's just wondering, what am I what supposed do I do? to do against this character? What am yeah. I supposed to do against Dalsum? And yeah. honestly, the, the toughest part is this. When you fight Dalsum, obviously, very bad defensive situations. You know, he doesn't have a true three-frame button that hits people on the ground, right? right? And so, you know, once you get him, you should be able to rush him down, be ready for the teleport. Should if he teleports, not. you should be able to punish that. Whoa! Whoa! You know, I forgot he had that from UFA. My bad. I was not familiar with your game plan, my boy. He's going to try to fight zoning with zoning, but again, Dalsum can also rush down as well. And that, I, you know, I was just about to say, like, Mr. Crimson's defense is so strong. Like, it's so hard to keep him pressured, and that's why I think Valmaster's going to switch to a completely different style. I believe this didn't work at UFA because it was Valmaster that took it in the end. Mm. So this may be the play here. Manat coming through in the clutch. We've seen him kind of test the Dan, and even when I talked to him yesterday, he was like, I'm only going to play Chun Li, despite knowing that he was going to fight Mr. Crimson, but, yo. Dude, I'm master had to say, I yeah. had to do something different. I don't want to go home this loser side. Yeah, you got to do something at this point. You can see it's yeah. scary because the thing about it is you can throw these orbs up or below, and then Dalsum can just teleport in on you. So there's always a risk as you do it. And then, of course, Dalsum will still have slightly better range, and you can see it. Mr. Crimson going with V skill too to allow him uh. to be able to charge up from a full screen, and then that way he has that fireball if he needs to get in. If he throws the fireball, he's going to be able to apply the pressure now because it bounces forward like this. And oh, that's nice why thing. he yeah. gets the teleport. And exactly. The tag doesn't let the throw connect. However, Valmaster has v trigger almost on the activation point. Just needs to find a way in to do so. The Miss Cleo. Explosion. Trying to find a jump in again. Where's the anti air? There it is. Okay. The reset. For the jab reset. Wow, well, definitely tech right Got there. Him. He's a side switch. Got him. Can he pull off this? Can he get this whole combo? Here we go. Nicely done. Stun's oh. rising. Yep, one more touch. One more mix up into the stun. Good V reversal by Mr. Crimson. Gonna keep him alive for a little bit longer. No more worried about that stun. Yes, fireball. fireball. Entire was right there. One touch. One good crush counter. Oh, too far away for that slide, but no punish. From Crimson. Oh, what fireball do you do? What play. do you do to this EX fireball? And you just gotta hold it. Yep. Better to block it. Don't get yourself killed from trying to dodge it. That's but like clock. He's got to get in to get the win. V reversal. Oh, what Be careful a V the reversal. What a V reversal. I oh, was so smart for Mr. Crimson. He knew the clock. Oh, and as soon as he got that V reversal in there, he knows he triggered the panic in the Valmaster. Yeah. Like he's on a Titanic. Valmaster's chances are sinking right now. Set point, Mr. Crimson. In that lockdown with the fireball, is just stopping. Valmaster oh. from approaching, standing heavy with a crush and again, the EX fireball. And he wants the stun. He wants the stun as well. Oh, and he's done. Yeah, still there, still in the day. Oh, that was supposed to be an air teleport. Gotta be an opportunity here for Val Valmaster. What can he do? Gets the throw off of the V reversal. Indy bar in time, V reversal. That does allow the activation to come through at any point. If Mr. Crimson lets it happen, but you got the Oh my God! Okay, here we go. Here we go. 
trying to use those orbs as projectiles to get in there. Gets another ground one. Misses a, a drill, I believe. Still. Or, unless he was trying to fake. What? Oh, jump up air. EX. Those orbs are out and about, James. Gets the knockdown. Be reversal. No. One touch. Yeah, you gotta watch out for the sniper. Oh, he got him! He got him! Here we go! Has the opportunity! The throw! Not enough to kill! What's the final? The Two jump! Up with the scope! The instant overhead! Wasn't even an overhead! Shot the sniper! Take the shot, James! Take the shot! Jump light punch on wake up from Mr. Crimson, but you're right. If he had stayed on the ground and crouched, it would have been a sniper. It won in the air-to-air -air situation. There were so many options that it had the ability to defeat. But the crazy thing is, if he was wrong, that was game over yeah, at that point. Cool. Yeah. But what's here delivered right now out on the loser side is Valmaster, but good stuff to Mr. Crimson, not faced by that pick like a UFA. And this is, I mean, again, uh, you know that's a tough one right there for Mr. Crimson. Didn't want to eliminate his country mate Valmaster there. But again, you know, uh, you know, just like with Phenom, just like with Valmaster, making it this far, making it this just, I mean, again, the blood, sweat, and tears here. Dude, before this whole tournament started, like, I sat down at one of the stations, and the camera's, like, there staring at your face. Right in front of your face. And I was looking at the monitor, and I was just like, I'm not even playing it. I'm just getting nervous sitting here. Well, like we said before, <laughs> you'll shot some marine for this one. But you see that trophy in the back? That thing is rotating like a rotisserie chicken. It's right in front of your face. Don't listen. There is so much heat. You feel the energy of the crowd. It's a different sort of thing than, a, than an online CPT. Absolutely. But there you can see the one, first round of loser's bracket has been completed, and we are getting all the way through this top 16 into top eight. But unlike all the online CPTs you've been watching all year long, we're just going straight through this whole entire thing until only one person remains. And as you can see here, VX Bao is going up against IDOM. VX Bao uh, being sent down from the winner side of the bracket. And then we also have uh, Kawano going up against Vega Patch, NL versus Momochi, and of course, Takamura versus Mr. Crimson. So, we all know who Idom is, previous Capcom Cup champion of 2019, or like the 2P. But VX Bow, one of the cleanest people through the group stages, one of the most dominant people in the group stages, alongside his brother and Zen, okay? Yes. Has been absolutely insane, only stopped currently by Angry Bird. That Zonk charging that he has is ridiculous. <laughs> From what I hear, he's holding all the buttons yeah. and lets Lusa tap them. Also, I guess with this palm, I don't know, bro. I, all I know is that he's, he's playing like level two every single time. It's like uh, index finger blue, yeah. right <laughs> finger yellow, you know? I mean, seriously, he's playing Twister with his fingers on that. But of course, Idom, second place here in uh, at EVO, had a legendary run, only stopped by Kawano, and the only US player here, and you can hear it from the crowd. Oh, yeah. The, the crowd They're is definitely in. cheering for Idom. But again, VX Bao, you know, when you talk to DCQ, when you talk to Zen, VX Bao was a player that they said was the strongest when they play, and they were saying he's the biggest threat here. What? Not the easy cake master himself? <laughs> Bro, that takes a lot for a, a top level player to be like, no, 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 no. I'm not the strongest. I'm merely a mid boss. This cat <laughs> right here is the true boss. You see it with that sick tie. Yo, shout out to the Joe Toe, right? But again, this is not going to be an easy one. I don't think, like, I mean, when I talked to Idom, he, he didn't seem too phased by his loser's bracket totality, no matter who came down. Besides the likes of Angry Bird. In fact, he said, he's like, if Angry Bird comes down, you know, it's going to be kind of problematic. But he said, if VX Bow comes through, he said, I can, I can take this. I can take this. <laughs> However, don't get comfortable. Whoa, Whoa. VX Bow with the loop. Trying to throw a little monkey wrench, maybe thinking to myself, Idom is thinking about Cody, has all this practice. And again, Idom faces against Shine NYC a bunch, who is Round also one. a massive Cody player. Right. So True. maybe VX Bow trying to throw a thing a little different look at Idom here, especially with this character that he knows that Idom really does not like. <laughs> it's all that angry tweet. Maybe it'll yeah. definitely help out, you know. I'm sure the EXDP, we take a turn. Oh, there's the check. And now it's party time for Idom. Although he does not have the V trigger ready to go, he just needs to block one more thing, maybe oh. take another hit here or there. But Idom right now is saying, you know what? I don't need that V trigger. Trade. Oh, there's the trade. Beautiful. He's got activation. It oh activates my. right away. And let's see if he can start the patented Idom craziness. But a beautiful check by VX Bow on that forward movement. No big punish right there on the cross communicate. Nothing really happened. Here's a sweep activation here from VX Bow. Could be easily done. They got the beat trigger, and there it is, just as I say it. From downtown, your VX Bow with this loop is on fire. You 
got it. I bet I'm his worse than him right now. PTSD <laughs> is, as you point out, just you know, he has some some ingrained issues with Luke, but you know that also may cause him to be practicing even more. You see the whip punish, yeah. the attention now from Idom is like, okay. Yeah, you can game, see Idom being a little more patient until he gets this offense, obviously. Oh, there we go, beautiful. Confirm right there for VX Bow, and now gets the forward throw towards the corner. And a check from Idom, not gonna let you dash in for free, that's not real, but look at this, EXDP from VX Bow. The bust out, command grab. VX Bow's response, yeah, like that. Fireball, put up a wall, goes for the low EX again. Uh oh, bad situation. Close to the corner. Yeah, but you saw right there this time, Idom dashing forward and blocking, seeing if VX Bow was ready to check that. Again, also not real. The okay, the reversal to put him at one hit away. Tries to sneak in there with the Avant, not gonna work out, but then the single hit confirmed from Idom, tying the rounds up one to one. We don't talk about that enough. That Crouch being a kick, single hit confirm that Idom does is 99% perfect. All right, there's a few times where he drops it, you know, you're a human, but we see that come through the clutch continuously. You can hit it first, Crouch fears, the side switch, and another tick throw, command grab addition. EX this time, Sunset wheels by the last Sunset you see, and again, they get that win. Post up, up, gonna be real nasty as Idom charges up. Oh, this is gross. Oh, you're dead. You're actually dead. Golden, folded. Look, this is every time I see that stun right there, and then I see Idom kill you Just with that the combo. All I think to myself is, thanks a lot, Javits. <laughs> thanks a lot, man. But there it is, Idom taking that first game right there, even though a strong start from BX Bow. And BX Bow is sticking with the loop, may I point out here. Not switching to his tried and true Cody at all. Very surprised. I mean, I understand the place in the Cody matchup may be not so good for Cody sometimes, but, you know, BX Bow. Not too, oh, too bad, no. but it just seems these, these momentum shifts that happen in the later parts of the round. Too early, you need to burn one whole frame before you actually go for that meaty elbow. Idom did it a little too early there. V-shift, you know, you're still caught up in the corner. V-shift in, in the corner, like dying tired. Okay, here we go, plus oh. frames goes for the command throw. Here we go, Idom with the corner pressure. How does VX Bow break out of this? He yeah. just throws yeah. out the EX! The bar to go far to when we call for the corner. EX fireballs and lock down the pressure, the overhead. Yo, the B shift chase down. That's the round. I domination yeah. when it comes to that corner pressure. Yeah, and you see it. Like the thunderclap is there to protect the V skill. And then afterwards, he just finishes it off, and uh, Idom takes the first round. Here's again. Idom. Comfortable here, set a step, so these mediums too as well. You see the counter hit as we go up in the corner, the reset. That's gonna allow a lot for this post on fun. Make them see stars like Hollywood Boulevard. It's over. Perfect KO again, Idom. City on game point dominant in this match. Not even in the corner, mid screen he means. Do we remember what his run was like as at Evo? He started from the loser's bracket. That's true. He is trying to do it just to get just like he did before. Bro, he said he was nervous about his losing side run out here. And I'm like, what about the people that have to face you? <laughs> what about the people that have to face you? Here we well, go. Look at this, VX Bow, Cody. yeah, switching to the Cody. Now, this is what I'm going to be interested in about. I, I want to see how this goes because there has to be. No! Oh, Whoa! The, okay, the so Urian. This used to be Fire Ice Guy. This Versus used to lightning. be a Urian. Well, I mean, that was the thing. This oh, used yeah, to be yeah, the, yeah. the Urian mm -hmm. player himself out there trying to do mad work. BX Bow was known for this character first, but is it so late in the game? And I don't think this matchup got any better for Urien, especially for the fact that the reversal's off the table. Yeah, he lost that reversal, but look, man, China is the land of Urien. So you know what, he's gonna go with this, and there you see Idom, more less of a confirm, maybe of a whiff OS right there, but here he goes, gets the knockdown here, tries to go up, no, you cannot neutral jump that. He will have that standing medium punch reaction. Idom is always looking for that. Oh, oh minus frames, yeah. Oh, but able to get outside the corner a little bit. Nice. nice. Shimmy's a crouch. Fear Shimmy's fantastic. He is headbutt and oh, no. does not land, but still. Got himself outside the corner, so that's a big win. Now, there's got to oh. be something about the Cody Laura match that he really dislikes, because he stayed away from that so badly, even though he got to this point with just Cody. But he's trying to bet it all. I mean, he has to win 3 and 0 with Urian right now. And he might be known, okay, not quite, not quite. Oh, I don't know if you'll forget his head, but did you read the patch? Oh, oh here we go, here we go. Trigger Two time! Actually, he doesn't activate just, just yet. yet. Goes for the throw, the back throw, VX foul. 
That Hold was, fire. I love that because you're just thinking about he's going to go oh, into the geez. activation route, right? Right. right. He's obviously, that what Urien is not going to activate that mirror, and so he uses that anticipation instead to go a completely different direction and just goes for the throws and is able to take it from Idom. Fantastic round here from the X Bow. Medium, Ooh. no buffer behind it to have the charge. You see him walking forward just a little bit. Lost the charge. EX and play gets a knockdown. EX area tackle. EX Idom answers back with butts continuously too as well. Not by too much, but I like that option. It's my Idom. And there's a hit confirm again. Yeah, with punish. punish. Yeah. Yes, but sir. there we go. VX Bow getting the confirm into the chariot tackle. Corner position now for Idom. But you gotta watch out. Any good confirm into the medium. Oh, he tried. He wanted that medium, uh, the, the volt charge right there to get the side switch. Overhead. What? He got clipped by the fireball too. I like that the reversal. Goes low, goes low. Gonna be able to extend the combo with that EX headbutt. And there we go. The Urian finding its mark. VX Bow. Like I said, he's committed to this character. He has to win three in a row. And here's the first oh, one. All right. See how he gets it done. I mean, there can always be the poison change later on if things go bad for Idom. But for right now, let's see what happens. Interrupts some fears. Not making a deal out here. Overhead again, bro. You disrespectful. Out of Capcom Cup. Toe tap Ooh. over the crush Communicate. I like that option. We see a lot of crush Communicate. From Idom. Now the nice sneak in there, but of course when Laura gets hit, that projectile disappears. Mm. And again, the range right now from Urien. This is what VX Bow is taking advantage of, is those long legs, but here comes Idom. Man grab. Great players hate this. Dashes in the B skill. B shift, no break. This one get close. All this is could, relationship. I think you could erase Urien from that last sentence, dude. Players hate this. <laughs> they don't want to go up against Idom. And again, Idom, the best neutral thunderclaps in the business. The best neutral thunderclaps in the business. You see where it got him that victory. He's one round away. Connects gets the knockdown, backs away from the throw play. Now gets the command grab the side switch, back to the three. Uh -huh. But we hold the north, the knock goes south. Order carry off the short attack, but this is good. Hold this throw, bro. Catch the stun, it's rising. All right. Oh, he's going to catch the knees. And close to stun. Wow, Idom there with the jab. That's what you do. If you predict the shimmy, you hit a button, and that's what Idom did. And here we go. The pressure tries to catch him low, but VX Bow not holding north that time, so he blocked. B reversal. He should the break. Yeah, how to do that. Oh, he, tried to, he tried to challenge. to challenge. Idom did not want to take those knees, so he just got hit by it. But yep, there he is the, to protect him. He still got throws. a little bit of trigger. Can't take too much more, though. There's bar at the bottom. Yes, the first beautiful, space, beautiful. The space, the dash up, light kick. James. James. That was such a beautiful oh, V-reversal right there from VX Bow. He was like, I need to get out of this corner now. Oh! oh. No Mistake punish, right there. No punish. Yep. Definitely yeah. don't expect that. You're going to land on that fireball. Goes low, too far away, but the elbow hits anyway. So Idom gets the mix up despite that. This is like a bartender. EX, the next. Yo, careful the stun. It's almost done. The challenge had to do so. Back throw, bar at the bottom. Oh, oh the, the fadeaway. Slight walk back right there. The Whoa. delayed throw, wait. just wait, just in case he woke up with a super. Exactly. I was just about to say that. Good call. B reversal. Oh, he spent one of the bars. Okay, here we go. Activation. How does he survive? He takes the throw, gets the cross up, but here comes. Oh, Idom drops the combo, throws the B reversal. Here we go. Set. Matey plus frames. And now VX Bow, He's more in. plus frames. More plus again. frames. Get the him throw. with the shimmy. VX Bow. Game point, VX Bow. It's game point for both of them. This VX Bow finding its mark right there. Beautiful sequence there at the end. You saw Idom trying to prevent the EX chariot tackle, so he didn't have to deal with the Aegis, but then VX Bow managed to get in there. What if Idom just didn't know that he was going to pick the Urien? Because, man, EX Bow is in his bag right now. No buffer right up there. He gets the crush, he gets the follow up right here, but no charge. Yeah. And the US I, cheering for the last hope of America. Oh, yep, that's minus, so it goes for the V reversal, but Nudu is negative, so he attacked him, but here comes VX Bow into the corner, has the throw against Idom. Can Idom survive this? Two throws in a row. Three, the shimmy. Oh, the shimmy, that should be a stun right here. Oh, VX done. Bow is going to be at match point after the just crucial change. We saw him hover Cody, yeah. and then he went to Urien. Here it is, VX Bow match point over Idom. I can't believe this dude is running this character at this high level. It stays on, it gets the light to Idom, stays in front of the mix. The overhead holds the throw, can take a few more. 
the train and the X-Bow is reversal times are fantastic, but there's that two frame jab. Not quite that stunned done. yet. Yep, beautiful V reverse, uh, V, v uh, shift out there. The low was too the, far the away. Grab. Too far out the distance when you grab it, you demon. Oh, the jump in off the low, the reset. Not enough to Don't kill just yet. yet. Let's the go low, low. The low. And a couple of times now, Idom has gone for a tick and then gone for the crouch light, oh, kick, crouch light punch, and the crouch light punch is missed. Those little weird situations right there have been costing Idom a lot of his offense. So this is really important for him that he's getting this here. Last game, last, last round. round. There it is. See, right there. Yep. It was missing before, and but he got away. the hit. No, oh. too far away. Oh, the corner. this is huge. The command grab. The stun's rising with the surprise. You're going to see if the crowd fears will follow him. The reversal with the throw. Plus on whip. This is it. I am doing it for the USA. And BX Bow putting up the most glorious of a fight here with the surprise Urian pick. Looked like it was going to pay off. Got two games down from 0-2, then won the first round. But IDOM did what IDOM does. He, I dominated those last two rounds right there. He is moving forward, IDOM. The last hope of US continuing forward here at Capcom Cup. I got to wonder if BX Bow, if you would have picked the Urian, how things could have been earlier. But, you know, I will say that Luke wasn't that bad in play, but I'm just too slow to find that matchup. And then when it came down to the area later on, you saw the, what made him, what got him to that, that high level that people started noticing him as like one of the best series in the business. I wish he would have done so earlier, but man, you gotta give big love to Big Spow out here. One of well, his first, if not his first offline tournament in doing mad work at Capcom Cup. Yeah, I mean, the thing about it is, I mean, he's probably thinking the same thing that we were thinking as soon as he picked you. And we were talking about the, the, the losing of the uh, EX reversal, right? He doesn't have a true reversal anymore. Yeah. And that's where Laura really profits from. But the thing is, BX Bow really very rarely got put into that position. And when he did, his defense was really, really solid against Idom. But look, Laura is just the kind of character that you can only block for so long because right. obviously she's got the command throw. And once she starts getting the, the, the momentum on you, especially in the hands of a player like Idom. And again, sometimes the best strategy to win is just be right just all the time. simply be right every single time, but it's so hard to stay fine against Idom. You, you mentioned how he's mechanically, he's robotic. It's just like he's playing on CFN, but these games were super close. You gotta give BX Bow credit. I like the fear versus every so often, switching up when he does that deep bar, and the damage that he gets off the situations. It's just, as you pointed out, you see him changing up when he does that jab, after he gets the command grabs and things like that, OSing, you know, making him Hold Lord right. and then go for the throw and then do a medium punch and puts him in the corner continuously and you can only guess right so many times. Yeah, again, I don't know if we're gonna see any of those situations here where you see Idom with the low short and the low jab just missed even after a standard tick that, you know, tick throw setup that he goes for. And here we go, the V reversal. And then the shimmy, yeah. beautiful stuff right there from BX Bow. And you know, the collective audience here was all holding their breath here, Don't especially when BX Bow took this first game. Oh, and that shimmy right there made it look like it was all downhill that the Urian would benefit. But then IDOM, like I said, this is what IDOM does. It's that, you know, that, that read on what you want to do makes you play his game continuously. <laughs> That's what we see right here. Good stuff to Idol to move on in the bracket, bro, and of man. Of course, he takes it with the with the plus five on throw whiff right yeah, there. Yeah, you know, like, you whiff huh, the throw. It, huh, I'm, I'm plus, whatever. I'm plus, it's Jack. still my turn. It's still my yeah. turn. You see his hat shake, too. He was like, man. Like, bro, how does the other person feel? Like, how, does it, how do you think we feel playing your, your, your lore and your poison? Hello? Oh, man. But uh, look, Idom is going to continue forward. Just amazingly close. This, 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 there's no easy matches here Not a at single Capcom one. Cup. No easy matches. As you can see, Idom now officially into the top eight, and VX Bow is out of the tournament. And now we are going to be moving on to Kawano versus Vega Patch. Brother, if Kawano wins that, he gets the run back with Idom from Evo. But. Vega Pasco plays spoiler to that. I ain't gonna prophesize no demise out here, okay? I ain't gonna do any of that. We'll have to wait and see what's gonna happen with that, okay? Is, I mean, at this point in time, those the two, stories, the, the stories, those baby. Two right there is definitely an epic.
Street Fighter duel. And you know what else is another epic Street Fighter duel is, What's of that, course, James? the mobile game coming out very, very soon on iOS and Android on all the platforms out there. Street Fighter duel is the officially licensed mobile game currently available for pre-registration. Use the QR code on your screen. And if you do that, you've got free characters and free gems at the very start. There's over 40 characters in this game. A robust story mode where you're going up against the rising Shadaloo organization. And so if you want to get into this now, check out StreetFighterDuelGame.com for more details on how you can pre-register and join in on the action. We've had a lot of great duels already. We're going to have even more in store. But first, I want to hear from Hollywood Rob TV. I am here with the 2017 Capcom Cup champion, the Bull, Mena RD. Mena, your next top eight match, your first top eight match, is going to be up against another fan favorite, Ender Walker. What are you thinking about that match? I think it's going to be a great match. Um, I currently hold the title of the youngest Capcom Cup champion. Yeah. So I want to defend that. Uh, okay. I really want to defend that, and it's going to be a great match. Oh man, what an answer. I'm just like so pumped from this. <laughs> so, Mena, one thing that I noticed is that you don't wear your headsets when you play on stage. How do you feel when uh, you hear people cheering for you? Or like, how do you hear like, you know, the game and whatnot? How does that make you feel? It makes me feel good um, when people cheer for me, but it makes me feel even better when people are against me. So, pick whatever you want. I'll feel oh, good anyway. Everywhere you fit it. Okay, and one last question I gotta ask. At this point, we know that no one has ever won two Capcom Cups. Most people never won one. It's out of this world. But you are in position to possibly win two straight. If you do win, well, not two straight, but if you do win two Cups, are you officially the Street Fighter Five GOAT? That's not something I can decide. That's going to be for the people. That's going to be for you. I know your opinion on that, but I can't say I'm the GOAT. I'm just going to try my best, and I'm going to be working as always. Humble. Yay! Just humble. Straight up humble. We all love Benna here. Man, no, that, that, I love it. I love oh, that. Oh, got to. Yeah. Nothing but respect. A humble legend, a humble beast, but a beast nonetheless. This has been the Raging Bull Dominican Republic's finest, Mena RD, and we have more amazing Capcom Cup action coming Woo! at you live after this break. Time distortions. They're still puking out dinosaurs all over the planet. So, Picatoa Island's been sealed up for three years, and Ivius won't own up to Leviathan's malfunction? Can you address the reports of exofighter patrols on the island? Reports of exofighter patrols are simply untrue. Ivius is committing all possible resources to the investigation. Exercise results logged. Sunsetting temporal instance. Come on back. Drinks on me. There are hundreds of exo fighters running around out there. Everyone's armed, and nobody knows what'll happen next. One minute, they could be helping you. The next minute, they're shooting you in the back. We need to keep fighting until we can figure out how to destroy the vine. It's trying to build stronger exosuits, so it's pulling any exo fighter in their home back in time to these bloody war games. Like it or not, the exosuits keep it is alive out there. But the more we use it, the more it helps Leviathan. Well, that's not an option. The wrong way or not. Value team members, prepare for dimensional integration in 10 minutes. You stay locked in. Only you. If you give an AI like Leviathan the directive, improve our exosuits, 
It has to complete. It doesn't matter whether that takes a hundred tries, million, all for the perfect suit. More than that. But at least do me the courtesy of looking me in the face whilst you do it. Okay, pinky forefinger, back to middle, full wrist articulation. Then we do it in reverse. Begin. What oh. the hell are you guys doing? It's a secret robot handshake. Good morning, Victoria. This is for my fellow hunters! You're going down! Your rise from being an exciting new face in competition to becoming one of the favorites to win the whole event has been pretty fast. How have you dealt with that? Well, the Japanese environment, the Japanese environment was really good for Japan. 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 At Evo, in the grand finals, uh, the whole arena was behind Idom and cheering for him to win. But you came through all that and you managed to take the victory. You managed to keep your composure in that moment. Uh, how will you be able to take that and use that composure here at Capcom Cup? え、その空気に飲まれないようにま、USA Nasty action for all of you as this is the final year of Street Fighter V. We're going to conclude with, oh my god. I mean, you know what the, oh I mean, look, god. Kawano and Mega Patch, this. but if Kawano wins, if Kawano wins, he faces Idom again. So, now, I, in my opinion, have seen a lot of people, and I agree with this in, in some ways, this person right here, Kawano, could take it all the way. Yes. All right. It, it could be pick. at the end. Your pick too? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, it was Idom and him and a few, um, like five or six others, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh, but Mega right. Patch could play spoiler to that. Do you have a thing at this level? Are you prepared for the poison play 
that Baker Patch can put on. Yeah, and again, <laughs> that's difficult. We saw the match against M Lizard right there. You know, uh, Fang, the zoning character, but we saw the rushdown that this character is able to dish out in the corner. But look at this, Kawano. Of course, going with the loot, having the ability to bust out of the corner with an EXDP is going to be really, really important for him. If Vega Patch can get that offensive situation going again. That's true. You know what's wild is that I think Kawano can switch to Colleen and do just fine. I think that matchup is just fine for that character. Evil Turn Nerfs that have happened has many anti fireball play ways to play and can scoot step through the poison. But either way, this Luke has been doing a lot of work. We saw it shoot by the League Japan and we're seeing it out here. Mm -hmm. Kawano, Vega Patch, let's get it. All right. And again, Round Vega one. Patch out here, obviously from the EU. Kawano from Japan. Oh, just starting fishing out with that forward heavy punch. Again, safe on block, and if it hits, almost always links into that far standing light punch. Such a powerful tool to be able to start offensive with for Luke. Walk back up in the corner. Poison applied, but Kawano, I like that, not panicking. They say take the poison, they mean take the poison. Don't panic. EXDP oh, though. What did I say? The having bust that, out. Yeah, having the EX the bust out. Look at that. Coward Quatch made it under Luke's crouching media it's punch. Such Holy a crap. good tool. The scoot seven underneath these fireballs or these normals and the fireballs too as well. They do come through. Here's the activation. No back though though. It Not hides gonna happen. under things and it leads to a plus frame attack. I mean, how strong is that coward crouch here? And look at this Vega patch. The, the corner. You cannot try to get that because you're going to. Oh, wait. The just a lot jump in. A raw, no. He dropped the combo. He dropped the combo. Yeah, Kawano, kind of fresh with this Luke. Still kind of new to the game with this character. A check. Mm. The check. The check from Vega patch right there. And I. Did that crouching like it kind of hit meaty to be able to link into that crouching media punch? I didn't even see a counter hit message there unless I just missed it. The old man eyes, man, I tell you. <laughs> However, Kwano was not too far away with that play. He just needed that optimal conversion and combo to seal the deal. Trying to put something with the shimmy, the medium to commit with the media punch, target combo. Ooh. EXDP, take it back turns. Steal these are turns. mine. Yeah, he's mine. These are two. mine. So he's like, nah, nah, I'm going to keep going. Here we go. Big corner combo, and now just needs one more sequence for the kill. There it is, and Kawano with a perfect coming back with a vengeance right here, and a perfect. The thing about good. Kawano is just like, I feel like his Luke is, it's so fresh, but it's just his ingrained knowledge of the game and how good he is as a footsie player, as an Evo champion. It helps carry him with the character. Yeah, Vega Patch had the right read. Oh, nice, the juggle right there. Immediate response with the jab. We'll take oh the no, thing that happen. confirmed from Kawano. But there, therein lies one of the weaknesses of Bomb. Doesn't get big damage unless he has like just the proper setup. That's true. It's like Bison. The Omano is just like Bison, just doesn't dump all the damage. But the plus rates are still there. Wait, Bison doesn't heavier. do. <laughs> 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 yeah, hold on now. You don't do a lot of damage. I guess that's kind of the, the thing of Bison. So maybe it's not the same thing. But Ooh, on, I the love the double dash. Yo, the no fear from Kuano going in there, but he got hit, but it was out of the air. Great reaction from Vega Patch, not to whiff buttons on the airborne. Kuano, he's... Okay, no juggle, no juggle. He didn't have the charge up for the Sotoja. He's got the... No, he still didn't get the charge for the Sotoja. EXDP, what a timing. He saw something in the bushes. Take the shot. What did I say? What did I say? Why he's going with that loop? Having that option right there to fight out, and again, that weird syncopated timing. He didn't mm -hmm. DP right away. He waited, 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 waited. So a little, so a little, little, little Holy weird timing to throw that out, catching you off beat. And that is one of the keys to some of the strongest players. I, I also think that part of this is because that Luke gets so much off these light confirms, these like crouching light punches. You know, the three frame that you get so much off the trade, or if you do land them, it's more than what Colleen would get. Oh, there we go, yep. Mega Patch trying to stay that offense, keep Kawano from advancing forward. Here's that corner position. Yeah, that crouching medium kick does such a good job. Not a lot of damage. It's a two-hit move, but it keeps the opponent stuck in the corner. Oh, my God. Mega Patch trying yes. to steal a turn after he was minus. All right, here's the activation. Careful now. Kawano harassing with these buttons. We trigger fly, but that's a punish, but not the biggest one. Nothing after that light. And they buffed that light to give him more damage. Dude, Kawano was playing some Alpha 2 rows right there. Did you see the crouch medium punch like six times in a row? Mm -hmm. Knock on the door, open up. I see your lights are on. Oh, let's get tense. Oh. Charge up. Yeah, charged up. Oh, okay. 
Just again, small hit, small hit, but that poison is adding up. Vega Patch is willing to play this game as long as he can keep the poison applied. And here we go. Okay, now actually. Oh, oh, DP. Too far away. EXDP waited and baited again. Easy bait of it. Vega Patch. All right, so Vega Patch starting to read a little bit of Kuano's tendencies. Like I said, this is why he picked Luke. He wants to be able to EXDP out of there. Vega Patch is like, I got you. I see this. I see this. Now I'm going to start baiting it out. I like that reversal rebuttal. I see, I see. Oh, yeah, you challenge, you challenge that if you're Kuano every time. That is only plus one after the double knees. Nice. So you go for your three frame button, which is exactly what Kuano did. Anti projectile BP coming through now. Get the jump medium kick too. He knows that if he gets a jump in, it's going to be a lot of damage versus these anti airs that are coming through. See that? Not Ooh, so much. Shimmy. Here's a shimmy though. Set up shop to make him drop. Stun's rising. Right. Up balls. What's the setup here? Okay, doesn't go for anything. He's trying to bait out that EXDP once again. Ooh, plus frames, plus two. That's plus two. So Luke does have to hold that one. Activation. Can he find a crush medium kick? Can he find. Oh, he finds a back throw. Oh, I was going to say like a fierce, but okay. this is looking fantastic right here. <laughs> oh, he got him. As he, as he, as he got you, can't, up. you can't crouch forever. You can't crouch forever there. Look gonna at this. Be, oh, be the, the, with the jump. TV. Wow. The jump. Vega Patch was so confident Kuano was going to go for a sandblaster. But even then, Fang's jump is so floaty. Might have been even an accident. Oh no, up in the corner you go. EX and the DP follow up right after. Push to the corner, it wasn't even 10 seconds in. And Kwan quick get this win, V-Shift, try to get the back throw, not gonna happen, Oh, Bozo. what a back dash, what a back dash. Not gonna let Fong get those plus frames off the counter crouch kick, there it is. And the crush counter countering the back, catching the back dash, too far Ooh. away. I think he thought that might've been V-Trigger one somehow, or he racked to that, but it's not gonna happen. <laughs> you said the poison never hit. Never hit, like, like, He yeah. never fell into the poison, even yeah. though he was there the whole time. Anyway, Kwan with that activation, dashing in, trying to find something up the meeting. Now the throw stocks oh, up. No. Oh, no, what are you yeah, doing, Kwan? Do that. that is not safe at all. Oh, yep, yeah. got to watch out for that. But I love the air to air to escape the poison as well. But here we go, stays in the front, plus frames, keeps going. Look at this offense. He goes for the super in the way to pay once again the bucks. Hands up like a pack of Legos. And again, that coward crouch kick is plus two. He's been holding it that entire time, and he pulled the Fudo right there. Yeah. Fudo's philosophy with Mika is you use the super as a one-time DP. We That is exactly what Kawano tried to do there. He's like, Vega Patch is going for the aggression. He's plus. Of course he's going to hit a button there. And Vega Patch, though, with the patience, maybe even an eaten input, going to survive. <laughs> Let's see what Kawano does here. Those EXDPs, those reversal situations are not working out for him as often as he'd like, but nice back away for the whip punish yep. that play. Not too much off, but I like how he's looking out for that option. Never mind, he's not fine. Goes underneath the Coward Crouch side switch with wow. it to catch the poison. I did not even see that side switch. I definitely got hit by that. So we all got mixed. But unfortunately, that means Vega Patch is stuck in the corner. Nope, out of there! And a mistake right there by Kawano. Accidental raw overhead like that. I see so many Lukes do that. I, I, just happens for some reason, but here we go. Gets the cross up, and now Kawano. Oh, he's gonna go super. for the super. He wants to. Is this gonna kill? Is this gonna kill? No. Oh. One touch will in the dash up back medium to finish the job. And we've seen that continuously from a lot of loot players. You get the super, even if it won't kill, the next hit will, and you got the feature to back yourself up. Here we go, plus frames again. Plus frames again, every single time. Vega Patch is so good at sneaking in those coward crouch kicks, just like that. You see him chasing on the back dash, Ooh. continuously, stuns rising. Perfect surprising for the meaty stand light punch so he can link the heavy punch afterwards. And look at this pressure on the other side, but what a block by Kawano, and he's out of the corner. TP, back meaty punch, yes, of course. Plus frames right here, the challenge off that light. It might be good night, double light EX. The boss coming to play the jump back. Also, Vega Patch, the instant overhead. You're dead. Vega Patch here, trying to go up 2-1. This is the all-important rubber band round right here. Who's going up 2-1 right now? Very imperative, that jump in again. Oh. Kawano getting so much damage. He's looking for these big hit confirms, these big moments to really cash out. But Vega Patch is so solid. Yeah, that crouching medium kick has been finding its mark. He's going to get the stun. Now, here's, of course, one of the weaknesses of Fong. Not a lot of damage. Actually, that was pretty good, yeah, especially hold on with now. all that poison there as well. These long sequences able to wind down that health even more. Is this going to be a perfect the side of Vega Patch? Dude, he's still working on the, the perfect. challenge. Finally gets hit. Off that light. Medium, but no commission. Luke. 
Oh, the oh, super! Oh, this oh, one will hit. Yo, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Here comes Kawano. Oh, Backdash still gets a three-piece Vega patch on game point. About to send out. About to send out an evil online, offline champion. A Street Fighter League champion. And Kawano right now. Looks like he's going to the notes right now. He's like, wait, do I have notes on Fun? <laughs> oh, Fat Data. Oh, this is plus. Dang. I pressed it. My bad. Yeah, again, Fong is one of those characters. I mean, look, if you're part of Shadowloo, I guess, if you're number one and number two, yeah. you just got plus frames all over the place over here. And so, again, Fong is such a knowledge, difficult character to fight because yes. you got to know where all these plus frames are when he has all these crazy poison setups that change the frame data and such. But what's also wild is some of these interactions are just really smart for Vega Patch. We see him scoop something underneath the media punch that had been coming through from Kawano continuously. He has been harassing with that button, and Vega Patch says, I'll get cowardly with it. Crouches down, right. finds a punish. It, it's all adding up to be enough in terms of damage, in terms of stuns. You don't see that typically from Vega continuously. Yeah, and again, one of the most difficult things about this road that Kawano has chosen here, and a, and a few of these players like Mana RD, etc., etc., going with the Luke. Every, if you don't know how to fight Luke, I don't know what you're doing here at Capcom Cup, right. honestly. Everybody, well, we're Street Fighter 5 right, uh -huh. everybody, Break seat for you. Everybody has experience Round against one. this character. And so right. you're not going to catch Vega Patch off guard with the Luke. You're not going to catch, you know, a lot of these players off guard with this Luke. They know 100%. what the character does. Clearly, he's one of the strongest characters, if not the strongest character. But that's why everybody knows how to fight him. All the same sense, I feel like, you know, you're a Luke player, if you come in a little bit later, it's going to be harder for you to figure out matchups and things like that. As you point out, the reverse is, I already know how to fight this matchup, as hard as it may be. Oh, here we go, though. No knock off against Fireball, just a normal one to get it done, but but one of these big moments once again, but it's been so difficult for him to find it continuously. Yeah, and here it is, that poison. Those poisons have been adding up, but nice job from Guano right there to just interrupt it. Goes up to the thermal bar bar bleh, barrel, and here we go. Thermal Barrack Barrel. In this bout. Kawano jumping back away the poison balls. In the trade in favor. He had more than enough health for that transaction. Kawano stays alive and again, look at these big moments. Being a little bit better about not taking so much poison. That does, as you pointed point out, uh, it does add up. Yes. So I get why he's trying to avoid Ooh, that. Ooh, he so neutral much. jump, throws out the fears, and now here comes it with the heavy kick. Oh, Gonna get stun. big damage and an instant stun at 90 seconds. And look at this damage all adding up there. And instead of going for the full combo, he goes for the setup. But Kuano's seen that. Gets out of there, gets out of the corner. Now you're forced to come to him to get the win. See? But that's the challenge right there. Forced to come to him to get that win. You see the light button challenging. The jump the in! in. Kuano again looking for these big bust out moments. DB! Yo, the stun's rising. Hold this throw. Bang out the healthiest boy in the business. Out of there. No, the punish. Mega Patch on set point. Could set you point. imagine? Set point. Mega Patch coming out here. You know, looking at this top 16, not a lot of people probably were giving uh, Vega Patch a big chance here Spears. to make it to the top eight. But he could do, he could get so close. And actually, if he wins this, he will make it in there. And he's getting big damage here and could send out the Evo champion, Kawano. Can Vega Patch rise up to the moment here? Sweet. I like to go for that option. Can't be triggered. Be triggered a whole steady. Oh my god, this is so tense. The stun's rising Ooh. off the backboard. Mini gig. Mini. He's going to go for that go. post up over the B skill. Oh, this will kill. This will definitely kill. <laughs> he will not stop hitting you in Kawano, silencing the crowd a little bit, just throwing out that finger. The shh. Shh. No, not yet. Not yet. Say something, I swear. I swear. <laughs> Say something. Malu kind of nice, but honestly, it is super nice. You feel like he's getting a, uh, a handle on the matchup. I can go for that sweep. He was looking for activation either way, but the play was to sweep out the Cower Crocs that's been giving him so much pain and not focusing on medium punch so often that's been called out continuously. Final game, Big Apache sees it in the distance. The finish line's right there. He just has to stay fine, but it's so hard because now Kawano's getting more aggressive and landing more off these exchanges. Final game. Vega Patch from Spain coming out here, making a mark here on oh. Capcom Cup. Oh, what a whip punished by Kawano, and here's the corner. This is so scary, and Vega Patch just being very patient. All right, you know, again, he is so ready for that crouching medium kick every single time, and there, poison has been applied now. And look at Kawano's life, just training away little by little. 
Gets hit, still has the poison on the throw. The yes, reach. Indeed. Yo, the reach also to interrupt that fireball. One more hit will do it. Hold this throw. Well, that's done. And again, make a patch. Now a prime position to take this. Set point. And a confident set point as well. That round was all Vega Patch. He's got to feel good right now. This neutral that Vega Patch has been playing, the range of Fong, and just the ability to get the poison to force Kawano into being aggressive. And he stayed in the front. Yo, the mix with it doesn't get no, the hands. No, punish. no, Stunts Kuano, rising. no, Kawano. Here we go, the mix up what side? B shift. I love that B shift. Great decision right there. But he can't jump out. Vega Patch is not letting him out, but the DP. Finally. Stuck with the V skill. Again, trying to make the magic happen from these moments. Any hit is going to hurt a lot, but Vega Patch has denied that and applied that poison. Oh. Make it look like Grim is here. Man, it's the DP. Oh, Ball it's the a fireball. trade. That's not a good trade. Oh, is that punish. punishable? Yes. Gets the sweep. Activation out of there. Oh, you got, oh, Ooh. he stole a turn. You thought that the, the V trigger was going to be activated right there. Vega Patch knows. He got the hit. Vega Patch. Viva Vega Patch. The Vega Patch to take down the Evo Champion. This crowd is electric. They are popping off. Man, with with the film, the bug pick, I can't believe it. Vega of all characters. Coming into this top 16, it's not moved. a stretch to say, like I said, a lot of people wondering, like, Vega Patch, does he belong in this top 16? Right. Absolutely, absolutamente, oh. he belongs <laughs> in this top 16, because you know what? He is in the top eight now. Man, oh man, this dude was ridiculous. The answer, it, that's the thing with this character. You have to be so picture perfect. People might get annoyed with all the plus frames and uh, the uh, constant amount of aggression from this character, but it has to lead to a lot. He spent a lot of the V skills coming through against Kawano, winding down that health, building up that EX bar at the bottom and the V skill bar at the bottom too as well. And tires were picture perfect too as well. Kawano, when he got the jump ins, he was getting mad, yeah. mad damage, like a lot of damage in the EXD piece, but Vega Patch beating the moments, beating the rhythm of when Kawano wanted to bust out with the reversals was also what led to the victory. Yeah. Catch it right here. And you know what? We forgot to mention this during this entire match too. Kawano was on the hunt for the Triple Crown. Mm -hmm. He was EVO champion. He was Street Fighter League champion. And he was fighting for Capcom Cup champion. One of the only players to ever be put in this position to get the Triple Crown. That is the kind of year that Kawano has been having. And so to fall short here, not quite making it to top 16, but dude, the, the journey that this guy has taken here, the amount of Street Fighter, do you remember Kimono Michi when yes. he lost to Tokido? He didn't leave the background on the screen. He couldn't get up from his chair. His hands were in his hands as they were interviewing Tokido. And Kawano then came back, was able to defeat Takedo, and then turn himself into one of the favorites, one of the best from Japan. Yes. He won Evo, stopping an item that seemed unstoppable. And then he won the Street Fighter League yesterday. Literally and he yesterday. Was, uh, yeah, <laughs> and he was just poised to be able to get the Triple Crown. Unfortunately, the journey for Kawano ends here, but you cannot discount just the amazing play and the growth of this player we will be seeing Kawano here at these Capcom Cups for years and years to come. He's a young kid, man. He yeah. will be here for a long, long time. Very smart player. Great play out here today. He has got more to go. I I want to I want to point out what you said. A lot of people might have been like, well, they don't deserve to be here. This isn't a typical Capcom Cup. You literally had an Evo champion sitting here defeated by one of those cats that y'all said wouldn't make it or do work or whatever and look at a pop off. Well deserved. Vega Patch with a victory. And this is what I like to see out here at Capcom Cup. The level of play has lived up to expectations. The level of play is real. And I mean, I think it's gone beyond expectations at this point oh, in time. you might be right with the blow-ups. These matches have been ridiculous. They've been going so... Every match, I feel like, has been going... Like, look at this. Look at... We got a 3-1, a 2-3, a 3-2. Okay, we do have one 3-0, but another 3-2 and another 3-2. These matches are going the distance right now. And NL versus Momochi, how is this match also not going to go the distance? Oh, I think it will. I definitely think it will. You know, Momochi definitely having a lot of... Luke practice has a lot of anti-Luke tech on the deck. We've already seen him defeat Phenom in his reward. 
for defeating a Luke player is to fight another Luke player right. that is NL, who's one of the best in the business. But he's and so stylistically different, right? He's so different in his approach and his play. I'm on the Lammer side, when he gets that lead, he's able to keep that lead and just kind of make you feel frustrated coming to him. Right. And have, let me ask you this question, Cola. Let me oh. ask, have you ever heard a sigh that just like broke your heart come out of a human being? Yes. After NL lost to Ending Walker, he went back to the players' room and he sat down next to me, and I just heard, like the most the, oh. guttural, like the heartbreaking yeah. sigh from NL. You don't think this guy is here to win? You don't think this guy wants it all? He is putting everything on the line here. So NL from Korea here, his teammate M Lizard has been taken out of the tournament. He's the last hope for Korea over here. But of course, going up against former Capcom Cup champion yes. Momochi, former Evo champion Momochi. Here we go. It's going to be UIU NL going up against Victrix Momochi. Let's, Let's go. go. You yo, you point something out about NL. That's a dangerous cat, just had a loss. You know so, he's been stewing. Yeah. Ready to get his hands the on the stick to put hands on the man. Let's see if you do so, but Momochi, but it feels like when he gets that he's back to being comfortable against any loop that we've seen. Round one. Right, here we go. Cody versus Luke. A, a, a matchup we've seen quite a bit here. We've already seen this match uh, earlier. <laughs> yeah, literally. I mean, that was yeah. a Vietnam and uh, Momochi match. Yep. And so, again, a lot of people, I mean, you look at the results of this tournament, and it is very clear. Cody is right up there with the strongest of the characters. He has been doing so well at this tournament in the hands of Momochi and VX Bao. And Momochi starting off with a perfect. Now, just that, that, that forward walk, just that confidence in these buttons, the exchanges that are happening to Dave Momochi, the punishes too. Light and the heavy kick rub you for that corner carry. Yeah, again, NL right now, this is going to be such a huge sign right now. Like I said, he was very crestfallen when he was in the player room. Losing perfect in the first round like that, now is time to buckle down. Now is the time to strengthen your mental focus. Can NL come back and perhaps take game number one? Pressure makes diamonds, James. Here's the activation, though. Speed trigger. You cannot whip a stand medium kick. You'll get clipped. Even that medium punch, problematic. Oh, what did I just knife, say? Knife, knife. Medium roughing. I was calling for the corner. Hold this robo. Oh, no EX plus range. Here versus, yeah. Basically, this plates, but he <laughs> calls the knife first. That smash is a fireball. Wow. Cody, I think mean, that was his honor to the SFL match. Shanks, you know, the player Shanks. Yeah, yeah, Shanks. That was definitely a shank right there. Just <laughs> throwing that knife right into Luke. And here we go. Momochi now. One game up, and you can see NL, like, again, look at that, look at the sigh right there, look at the facial expression from the, the nods and everything mm -hmm. like that, again, right now, he is putting a lot of pressure on himself, just right. watching this, and obviously you need to Round rise up one. to the occasion, but he's got to be careful right. to not play too nervously, he's got to be as aggressive as possible, because that is what Luke does to win. I mean, I, in, in this format, in this situation, at this point, take out your anger that you have on the person in front of you to get through. And we're seeing it right here. And already getting with punch with him in the corner. Back to him. Gets the stun. The post on front is going to be real nasty right here. Yeah, this is dead two. right here. You're dead. No more Ooh, necessary. This is what we need to see from NL. This is a great sign for NL right now. This is what he needs. If he can take another round very quickly like this, it'll do wonders for his mental his mental position right now. Oh, but this hurts. He had gone level two and the feet of the little ruffian too, bro. That's hope. But here's a back throw though. Chase down. Beautiful cross cut, but Momochi does get out. You'll know a lot of players will take that cross cut DP damage 100%. just to get out of the corner. NL. Oh, never mind. He's not fine. Beast killed the ruffian oh. again. Yogi, EXDB here from NL. The bust up. the B bar at the bottom. Again, bravery right there. Not being scared. Going for that EXDP. That's what I want to see. There's the activation. What a throw tech by NL. Yeah, pussy's hard right now. That B trigger. The extended knife. Oh, get the sword. You already saw that clip the medium kick. He'll clip from low with the medium, though. Goes into the crush medium kick. Oki. Plus frames. Back throw again. For bar, but it's one more hit for the win. Oh, the crouch of meaning kick, but not enough to kill. He just right. needs one more hit right now. See that crouching light kick, just trying to chip him while walking backwards. But it's nice and slow. Oh, he got in for the throw. Wow. Here comes the chance. Perfect timing on that heavy kick. But 
Just goes for the Magic Light Punch and stops. Here we go. Rip. EXDP waits and face goes for the throw. He made him buckle and all that pressure. Momochi, boys have put himself on game point. It's really interesting right there. You saw NL micro walk and block, which was a very offensive kind of move against that fireball. And I think it caught Momochi off guard. Had he stayed still and blocked and gave Momochi all the plus frames, mm -hmm. I think maybe then that EXDP would have worked. But I feel like that micro walk might have actually triggered something in Momochi's brain to be like, wait a second. Hold up. Sweep off the feet. I like the side switch right here. Up to the crush counter. But the back throw again. In out. Has to pop in the corner. So we have to work. See me in my office. Oh, oh god. Oh my god. That crush me to kick. No Did confirm. No confirm. Single hit confirm. Back so to the fireballs. But that sway in play. That knockdown oh. and the activation. Yes. So many options. Heavy get activation here. EX. Yes. Range. The okay. Yes, sir. Well, Ruffy and Tuesday, that oak situation. Oh, what a back dash. back dash. Yes, sir. Actually got away from the meaty medium kick. He's not even getting hit out of the air. <laughs> so frightening. Sorry. Both characters, <laughs> both players can melt. They both can bleed. Oh, and it was a fat lead right here. Scott B. Barton plays. Oh, Frames goes for the throw, but what a back dash by NL. It's one hit in the super to seal it. One touch. Gosh, give me a kick. Oh! Like the DP, like it's the DP, I should say. Lost frames again. This time goes for the medium kick. And now the pressure. No! That's gonna be a punish right there. Momochi now with the pressure. What a tech by NL and just uses the V trigger to try to build that space a little bit. And back to the EX now, spending the bar. Get away from him. Hold oh, the throw. Momochi he's has got the, lead. the lead now. And now he can. That's what? the way! What are you on, Momochi? What do you want? The V skill sway and play. Bob and weave. Bob and weave. Saw the EX flash. Hit him with a V-Skill 2 so you're through. I cannot believe Momochi. And there, right there, is Round showing level. Momochi, there are a few players that I think can remain as calm and concentrated as Momochi. That round victory right there might have spelled the end for NL because NL, like I said, he needed to win that game to try to build that confidence here. But Momochi absolutely stealing that game. Can NL make this comeback here? Because Momochi now doesn't even care how wow. well his health is. See him walk up with a throw. He has throw the, the park. He has that confidence. That's the right. Knife throw plus frames in. Now cannot press if you feel the press. That stun was rising. Oh, nothing off that light. Love to have the game song right after the Make him hold this throw. So tense. Momochi. Gets bar threatening that zone at any point. There it is with the blocks of Finale. Yeah, the fact that Cody's range on his buttons can fight Luke pretty evenly, but then he has the EX zonk for the freeway in when people are not doing anything really makes it so that Cody kind of has an advantage. There was one of the nerfs. Oh, what a confirm and a super. Okay, okay. This is not going to kill though. You've seen this before. You get the lead. You got that V trigger to back yourself up. Watch your six. And I've got a lot more tricks. But look at this, Cody's got that V-Trigger activation ready to go. And he gets Fireball too as well. <laughs> Hold on to neutral, oh, yeah. my son. He oh, gets the activation no, son. The and the board, the board of Momochi is now at match point. At match point, and again, from game number two, there is no point right now where Momochi doesn't think he can win. He doesn't care how far down in life is. He's like, you know what, I can take this because NL is making mistakes. NL is making mistakes, and that is opening the door for Momochi every single round. We got to talk about the EX bar usage. The EX fireball instead of the EX song has really been a big pain point for NL to deal with. But now he has a call for the corner. Prove me a liar. Backs up and up for that DP to land. Oh! oh. Okay, here we go. Done. All right. Sure. Let's go, NL. NL needs this. Here we go. Big combo. Not going to be able to kill off of this. And so, again, this is a dangerous situation. Oh, God. Momochi, we've seen him win an entire game off of a wake up light kick into activation. But oh! Don't want to walk up on me, my friend. Can't come in. NL. Risky jab, but it works out. In the clutch. Oh. I am. I'm sorry. I'm losing all my breath here. Okay. There is no. There's no time to breathe. There is no time to breathe here. Not with this match being so so tense, so tender. No back throw, bro. NL with all that bar at the bottom. What if he's going for that super to get that lead? Or we just get fireballs again. Switch up. We just with that rhythm of the buttons. The dash up throw. Four fears. The blocks of emotion. There it is. There, there's the e great equalizer. That ex zonk knuckle. No confirm off of that medium punch from Momochi. 
The dash in, in L. Never oh. lose time. no fear. But Mochi's here. The V skill, the knockdown. Back rise, no surprise, he's there. Mochi, no cancel on the EX. There's a cap, so I understand why. Here we go, corner position right now. That EX Zonk is just sitting there, but nice. And L gets the counter hit here. Gonna keep the pressure, tries to go for another counter hit. Gets the back throw, however. Realizes that Momochi is just blocking right now. Playing it very safe, because Momochi biding his time for the bright moment to take the round. What a challenge! Caught him walking in again, the super situation. This won't kill, but it will put him one touch away. Look all that confidence, it's fading away, NL. Does Momochi have yet another comeback in him? The wave, NL, oh, EX connect! No, zone. activate! He's not gonna activate just yet, here we go. 10 seconds left on the clock, can he do this damage? Yeah, just block! Just NL's block. just blocking! Just block. Look at all this chip damage! The throw! Just That's not gonna so be enough! Just, One more hit, no, the challenge, NL! The block though, NL stays alive! The thread, bro, are you kidding me? <laughs> NL! Who can breathe? Who can breathe in? The players are probably not even taking a breath at this point in time. Bro, check the oxygen levels right now. Because I know mine are messed up. <laughs> What's messed up right now is in out with no fear. Never lose, no fear, baby. In out, back in business. The four fears, fantastic round start. Hold this throw too, bro. Stun's rising. The dash up counter hit combo. DP2 as well. You see the situation before, and the back throw will get it done. Is what I mean. NL gets a game on the board and look exactly how this is going here in game number four. The, the people can't see it, but I'm standing up. The back of that's the perfect KO. Golden. NL. Gucci right now. Can you see the, the confidence come back? The moment? Yes. yes. You can feel it. That's why I said NL needed that game, but apparently he got it in game number three with a crucial victory. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's big damage right here. And so stun. And stunned. he's not gonna take the stun. I thought Momochi might have let it drop to try to get max damage on the combo afterwards. He just takes whatever damage he can get at this point. And look at this medium punch. Doesn't have to activate. Yeah, he wanted that back though so bad. Dash up again for buttons this time. Momochi, three, four up. Just actually get the confirm. EXDP, you know. Never afraid. Let's say Activision gets a hit as well. Does not go into the Rock Smasher. Gonna hold on to that, but the whip punish from Momochi. Match point again for Momochi. You have to be looking at the bar at the bottom if it's flashing. You're not last. You gotta be careful that sweep coming through. The activation points, Momochi. Going for that sweep. Well, to get that victory. Here's an L again. Round start situation. Caught him with the counter off the counter medium punch. Probably was a tech. Don't did not connect. I gotta throw though. In L. He did that perfect again. He skills up. It's not gonna be the win just yet. Damage! Oh, fireball! Uppercut! Oh One my god, death. not enough to kill! Wake up, Super! Oh boy! Here we spin. go! But no EX Zonk. That means no EX Zonk. So the neutral is definitely in NL's advantage here. He gets the crouching light punch! Game number five is on the board! NL. I know that's an L, but he said never again. Street Fighter League, never again will I have that same sort of loss. That's the energy I feel from him in Round that dash situation, that oppression. Fight. Round start to that aggression, and it's different than what we typically see from him. I feel like he's a little bit more, again, that lame sort of style. to get that lead and keep that lead as much as possible. He's been foot on the gas pedal. Final game between the two. Oh, there you go, the shimmy right there. And now catches the back dash with the crouching medium punch. Trying to slowly push NL to the corner. Gonna be able to confirm off of that counter hit. And now the throw. Off the corner, EX song, no be reversal. Holds another throw in L. Bust out, waited and baited. Easy bait up in. Momochi hooking in L. Yeah, he, he's oh only had God. one match point in the last two games. This is the first time he's had double match point. Can Momochi finally seal this, or will NL make one of the most epic comebacks here at Capcom Cup? But Momochi, it's all Momochi so far, but there we go. Finally the challenge. That's rebuttal after that caution game punch. Now has to call up in the corner. What's the corner pressure like? Mediums. Okay, crouch we need kick, but no hit the flip out. Come on, the dash in the tech though. Oh the crush, here we go. Gets a stun. Should be able to finish this off. It is Luke. Okay, maybe not. Actually, a lot of scaling here. Not quite. But now just one hit away. What a throw tech. But Sandimander kick! Final game! Final, Final round. round! Let's go! In El Momochi going the distance! You couldn't write a better story! Stop playing with me! And 
Hell coming all the way back. Has the lead. Ah, uh, back to back throws. With this opening, looking for those toes. That crush me to kick. Here's the EX on. Yeah, that walk back. Don't want to get gripped up. It's important to see that walk back after the EX Zonk. That means he's leaving his feet vulnerable after the EX Zonk. Oh, what a tech by Momochi. Oh, oh, walk throw. Dude, NL has realized how defensive Momochi has been playing. He's been going in for the throws. NL! Cross up DP, can't leave for free. You gotta pay with your health. Oh, no punish on the whip throw. Momochi needs Dead to come shoot. back. He's gonna get caught over here. Momochi down to the last chunk of life. NL trying to do the most amazing comeback, and he does it. NL comes all the way back. NL taking the victory over Momochi in the final game, final round. One of those 10 sets we've seen in Street Fighter Bot history, James. In the wise words of one tasty Steve, I dare you to find better Street Fighter than we are seeing right here at Capcom Cup 9. Bro, I don't need a chair. Just let me stay up the whole time. <laughs> I can't sit down. I can't sit down. Show me the replay. I Put dare you Get to find better Street Fighter than here at Capcom Cup Talk 9. Are you guys out there enjoying this? Come on! This is some of the best Street Fighter you. that we have ever seen. Let's look at the replay right here. Momochi had a fantastic start. You didn't see like that, that dominance from NL until like the very end of this match like that. And part of that was the dominance of the buttons, the economy of buttons spent. Medium punch, Sandy Media Kid getting those hits. And a lot of these bust outs that got clipped and NL wasn't confirming the buttons in the, I'm sorry, the situations that he would like to have. You know, a lot of whiffs and things like that. But then he started stabilizing himself, or stabilizing himself, I should say. Well, I can't even talk and lose a breath. But seeing him, NL, you know, get confident in the round start situations, whip punches with the mediums and things like that, back in business, having fantastic round starts where Momochi would lose, lose 50, 60% of his health off a couple of exchanges, as Luke should do, is what got him through. Yeah, and, and again, I really feel like so much of this match, I mean, it's really hard to, to if you haven't played in one of these tournaments, how much it's just a lot of it comes down to your mental fortitude, your mental strength. Like I said, NL needed to get that game on the board. And as soon as he won that first game, that was such an important sign. And really, honestly, taking that first game meant that NL had the opportunity to make this comeback, I think. And sure enough, here it is. And he was able to do it. Look at this. He was down so down much. He was about much to die. And he just survived at this end right over here. And there it is. And then everything started. I mean, it wasn't all of a sudden a switch. It wasn't domination. But NL was playing with more confidence. He was playing a little more aggressively. That's all he needed to do this. Beautiful here from NL. Look at that Dom. getting that perfect KO. I, that was probably a big turning point right there. Yeah. Once you get a perfect, you, you feel golden right there. And you get in with that momentum. Momentum is such a big thing in fighting games. And we don't talk about it enough because, like, you cry, you just, oh, I got that victory, I got that W, I got that round. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All I need is another round, another one, another one. And then finally, it's final game, final round, you're back from the brink of defeat, and then, oh, that's what we saw here. Yeah. These dashes who weren't being challenged by Momochi, probably looking out for medium punch, for Fierce, we saw that introduced a lot later up in the set. So I understand the, the, the pensiveness, the, the timidity I see. But, yeah. man, NL, ridiculous. Like Never lose. Yeah. It's in his name, James. Never <laughs> lose. And again, the, the comeback that NL was able to make in round number two, and then the victory in round number three. I mean, it's just, again, this is the, this is the most stressful. These are the sweatiest matches I've ever seen for Street Yo, check the pits. <laughs> check, I bet there's a, there's a sweat I'm sweating too. I'm not even playing the dang game. You all are probably sweating too. Enjoy this great Street Fighter Five action out here at Capcom Cup. The place is packed, and we have one more Even match. more. One more, yeah, match. one more match. One more match to we'll find out who's making it into the top eight. We've got Idom and Vega Patch going up against each other in losers round at top eight. And now NL waits for the winner between Takamura mm -hmm. and Mr. Crimson. The interesting story about these two players, Mr. Crimson has asserted himself as one of the best in the Europe, can take any tournament that he attends. Yes. I feel like Takamura has always been right there on the cusp. He's beaten Tokido at major tournaments. He's always been right there and just not quite getting there. But this could be his big opportunity. If he can take out Mr. Crimson, get into top eight and make an epic loser's run, this could be basically the start of basically uh, ultimate 
Takamura. Ultimate Takamura. Bro, first of all, Takamura is a fantastic name. Second of all, we saw glimpses of, of that when he fought the likes of Idom. He is, in a, in a good way, he is a sweat. All right, he practiced for Idom for days upon days, and we saw that in the match. He took down Idom and put Round him in the losers. He is the reason Idom is there. He's going with the Akuma. We have not seen the stops. We know Hado in so long, but this is what we know Takamura for against Mr. Crimson. Let's go! And as I've said, you cannot spell Takamura without Akuma. And so that's what we're getting over here. So let's see if Mr. Crimson, however, can fight this and take him down. I mean, this is not a good matchup for the likes of Akuma. But back heavy punch can definitely help out. Overall, though, Sim is an anti shoto He's been so throughout his entire life. Mr. Crimson, wow! <laughs> Standing medium punch, what side? Wow, I had no idea what direction that was gonna be in. Thought we might have seen a V-shift, but it looks like Takamura wants to save that V-trigger so badly, and Mr. Crimson is gonna punish him for trying to hold on to that V-trigger. Not a lot of buttons that you can really interact with this in this match. It's a bit range with, with the Kuma. And again, the health differential, bro. You just get cooked. We talked about Sim being a quote unquote zoner. He does so much damage. Look at that. The stun. Dude, Mr. Crimson, he does the craziest thing. He blocked a move and responded with reversal EX fire. EX flame. Defensive and the offensive decisions. Some of the best, actually, I would say, in uh, part of five. Activation, bumping the first situation. To do after that, B reversal. He's minus. He got caught, didn't fall for the shimmy. Gonna get the juggle with the standing medium punch. And there we go, Crimson, game number one. Dolphin is the switch to Ken win. coming now? Or is he gonna ride or die with the Akuma all the way through? We know them for Akuma, but we did see the Ken previously in the group stages. And I talked to him at UFA. He asked a lot of us, the players and stuff like that, what should I play? And I was like, you know, Akuma and Kit is a fantastic pair. And there's some matchups like Birdie and this one. Right. They're not the best, but you have a character that kind of fits your style. Maybe yeah. he doesn't feel like it's ready enough to take down Mr. Crimson just yet. I mean, again, if you rearrange the letters of his name, it's Akuma Art. And that is basically what he is playing here. He is using this character so artistically. But Mr. Crimson, he is absolutely the best with Dalsam in the world awesome. right now. And he is showing that as he is dismantling he is. Takamura. Bro, Mr. Crimson is stringing him up like Picasso. Another round going down on the side of Mr. Crimson's brother. This is looking difficult. And again, it's hard to find those situations with the buttons that you'd like to have. Back heavy punch is great, but look at all these anti-fireball options. And that's just one layer of how Sim deals with Shoto's. Slides. Oh, okay. The oh, here we go, though. Gets a knockdown. Close range gameplay. CQC, you see, way better. And now gets taken from counter and combo. EXCP stuns rising. Throw. Takamura here with an opportunity there. Wow, V reversal on a negative button, but it doesn't matter. Oh, here we go. He's the best at landing this. Look at the damage. Look at that damage. What happened to all of Akuma's life? It's all fading away. All fading away. Level cross on the slide. Activation. Teleport out of there. He's got to uh, uh, respect the fireballs as a result. No control off the medium. Air fireball again. Oh, I hit a fireball. Just goes for the raw fireball and catches the hit. Takamura finding a round onto the board. He's so good about switching up what he does up in the corner. We see those fireball corner pressure sequences like we saw it against Idom, and now we're seeing it here. The zone, the plasma, put up on the screen up at the corner of the dot. Oh, kick again. Close up the, the shift. Yo, he is playing this magnificently, but it's not over yet. He's gonna make the comeback into the super. Okay. It's gonna hurt, but it won't kill. Trying to put him down to as little health as possible. That's plus frames. There's the OS from Mr. Crimson to escape throws and to also uh, attack you. He's one touch, one tap, trying to get the dive kick, anti air. Come air rush down from Dawson. Where are you going? You can't get away with that. You can't get away. Yo, where oh, was that at? With, with the that? box, though. Know. All this health. Look at this. He has no life left. He has it's no overhead. life left. It's overhead, but wasn't able to reach. Mr. Crimson clutches it out. What? What? This, this zoner. The zoner. Where does health go? I'm, look, I'm checking my pockets. I'm looking around. Do y'all know where his health went? Because I don't. I don't see it. Mr. Crimson defeating Takamura in that last round with the classic Dalsam zoning style. He locks in with the Akuma pick to try to do it. I don't know, but Mr. Crimson is the one on game point. That was a very close set right there. It was only one hit away, but Mr. Crimson was the best defense in the business and timing too as well. You see, Mr. Crimson just has the answer for everything. That quick slide under the jump. 
But here we go, Takamura getting the crush counter hit. And now the pressure into the corner. We all thought that Takamura had that uh, to tie it up one to one, but that ridiculous comeback from Mr. Crimson. And here we go, yeah, teleports teleport. out of there. Run away, you'll have to help the play with anti right there. Mr. Crimson checking that approach, but not on the ground, the fierce land. DP hard knockdown. Air Fireball, number one, aim for the TIG. Air Fireball trade, not too bad for Takamura, has to come the corner. Ooh, the air to air right there, checking the EX Demon flip. See the mo the movement from Mr. Crimson with Dalsa. Just the absolute, just, just art, beautiful use of drills and jumps. And here we go. Tries to fake the throw. Slide interrupts the fireball again. Mr. Crimson will not let Takamura take anything. But Takamura had that confirm happen. He would have had around the board right here. It's uh oh, Robin was big. adding to so much, but does get the anti right there. The back heavy punch again. Yeah, back heavy punch causing a knockdown, so you don't have to time when Dalsum lands. So that's really nice to have. Here we go. He should be able to juggle, but wasn't ready for it. Get that side switch though. And all these anti are stopping the people flip, and that's such a big you know, toolkit of this character game plan. Fierce his crouch, fierce his people are crushed. It's not happening. Basing for Mr. Crimson to avoid that back oh. heavy punch. But here we go. Takamura getting some offense here. Takes it off in the corner. Air fireball trying to clip a limb. Awkward situation. Takamura puts it right back in the corner of the trade. Not too bad for Takamura. He has to come up in the corner of the slide. Oh. Fine. Covers the time to stay fine. EX connects the Tatsu to seal it. Takamura still in business. Mr. Crimson even had the answer to that EX fireball. If he had done it just a little bit later, he might have actually been able to get the slide to hit. He just was a little too early because the fireball was coming a little bit closer. Takamura trying to get aggressive. And Bill, base god Agni coming through and the clutch is a lot of red. You're almost dead. He's the medium. God. The follow-up, I should say, the dive kick and play the throw. Yo, the stun is rising. It's done. Mr. Crimson seeing red and making Takamura dead. That is 3-0 on Mr. Crimson's side. Mr. Crimson coming here and showing why he is considered one of the favorites here, starting this top 16 in the loser side, going through Valmaster 3-0, and now Takamura 3-0. He has clearly been the player doing the most domination here in this top 16. And there you have it, Mr. Crimson, into the, bra into the top eight bracket. So we have our top eight here. We, have, we know exactly who's going in to the coveted top eight for the final Capcom Cup for Street Fighter V. If we're missing a few players, we're missing some EVO champions and things like that. Even before that, we're missing some of the most consistent players in the business. But again, that speaks to the level of Capcom Cup quality players out here. I know a lot of people came in thinking, oh, well, they shouldn't be here, yada, yada, online, all that stuff like that. Proven wrong, proven wrong with every single match. It's been fire and heat all the way through, James. Absolutely. And again, I mean, I hope everybody at home is enjoying this as much. I know we're out of breath over here, for sure. My, my voice is worth gone. It. I'm not going to be able to talk for the rest of this week. But as you said, absolutely worth it. And here is the top eight bracket. On the winner's side, it is going to be uh, Dominican Republic's Mena RD going up against uh, UK's Ending Walker. Then China's Zen, you got the young cats in Ending Walker and Zen. And then of course UAE's Angry Bird all going up against Zen. And who do we got on the loser side? US's, the last US hope, Idom going up against Vega Patch. And then we have NL going up against Mr. Crimson as the final match right there Oof. for that first side round of match. Bro, that is top tier quality out here. It's only going to get better, people. Only going to get better. It's absolutely insanity here, but I hope you guys have been enjoying this. Again, we are going into the top eight. So again, we're going straight through here. This is it. We are finishing this until we have a champion. So do not go anywhere. Sit in your seats here, right? But I do think we have to talk to the people about something beautiful, a figurine. If you know what I mean, Max Factory, shout out to them for coming through at the cup. We're, you know, all of us are excited to announce the new figuring uh, from Max Factory. Highly detailed one six scale figure of Chun Li based on the illustration by Street Fighter II co creator and the designer who brought Chun Li to the world, Aquaman. Now we have this design of this figurine originally requested by. Mo I'm going to mess up the name. Momochi Hama Chozai Pharmacy. That's why I have you, James, <laughs> in Japan, which was released in 2022 and finally coming to life thanks to Max Factory. 
to catch out to them. We're making this beautiful figurine that stands over 10 inches tall and is an exquisite recreation of the original art piece with the input from the man himself. Follow them for more details on the figurine coming soon. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful figure right there. But you know who else has a beautiful figure? Who's that? Mr. Rob TV. Let's take it over to him. We are here with, of course, one of the best personalities in the game today, my man's Ridge. And just as well, even more importantly, I gotta say, more important to both of us, my guy Jin, the LCQ qualifier, and you're in top eight right now. When you came into this LCQ, we seen DCQ put a tweet up, and he said, look, don't be surprised when Jin wins LCQ, and then you did it. Did you know that you could win this tournament? Nah, uh, I mean, like, this is crazy. Like, I can't believe I beat so many people, and now I'm here, top eight winners. Crazy, man. Oh, wow, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. And everybody wants to know about the fighting game background of you, right? But I did a little deep dive on your Twitter, and I found something a little bit more interesting, yeah. you feel me? I seen you post the MF Doom, I seen the retweets yeah. from Lil Peep, I seen all this. But what struck with me the most is the Young Lean avatar. What's the go-to Young Lean track for Zen? I mean, like, Young Lean is my favorite artist, man. Like, he's, he puts me here. As a fellow sad boy, I feel you on that, I feel yeah. you on that. Let's fucking go, man. Okay, and then the last thing that I gotta ask you, bro. Your next match, you are going up against Angry Bird. What can we, what can we expect in that match? Hopefully, I'll beat Angry Bird and revenge for my teammate VX Bow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. And before we go to commercial, ladies and gentlemen, everybody that's here in the venue, can we get some noise for Jim? You got a lot of fans in here, brother. Whole lot of fans in here. All right, guys, we have more amazing Capcom Cup action after this break. Actually, it's specifically top eight. It's going soon. Do not go anywhere. Was obsessed, you see, with finding an appropriate vessel for this power. Mm. Showtime, baby! Prepare. Fight with all your heart! An honor, to be sure. Hey, no. 
You won't be disappointed. If these two don't give me what I want, I may have to come in there and bust them up myself. Amazing awareness there. She makes dangerous look so good. Gotta remember, a cornered animal is the most dangerous. Oh wow, someone just got turned into a hashtag. You call my answer. This is where things are gonna get very interesting. Making him sweat with these shirkins. <laughs> we live for these kind of fights. They got the advantage. We gotta start clicking here. That's what happens when you have an irresistible force meeting an immovable object. Time for some good old violence. This is how you stay limber. You gotta crack every last limb. What in the world did we witness? That was unbelievable! You are the youngest player ever to qualify for Capcom Cup. And you've come here and you've lit up the stage. You're playing with so much composure. You look like you're playing at home. Where does that composure come from? Because this is the first time you've ever been on a stage like this. I would say maybe externally I look composed, but internally not so much. You just don't necessarily see it reflected in my gameplay too much. You'll probably see me walking off the stage with my hand shaking though usually, which a few people have noticed. So being composed, maybe not, but definitely having fun here. More so than UFA, because I had a little bit more practice now. You've never had the opportunity to play most of the players that are here at Capcom Cup. What's it been like coming here and playing against some of the legends of Street Fighter as one of their equals? It's been very eye-opening to play some of the international players, especially. A lot of the players, you know how there's always, you know, any players play different to EU and EU plays different to Japan, all that. I haven't actually noticed that too much. Everyone plays very similarly to how a lot of European players play at the highest level, which is just solid fundamental based gameplay. But it's just been very, very fun. And I've definitely learned a lot. You've flown out here with your mum and dad. Uh, how important has their support been in your growth as a player and your career now as a esports athlete? Very, very important because I couldn't, obviously I wouldn't be here if they weren't here because yeah, I wouldn't have been able to go to UFA either. They've always been very supportive because I've still been doing my like school stuff. So it's definitely been very, very important to, and just, you know, nice to have the support of my parents. So thank you. This is it everybody. We are about to get even closer to crowning the world champion of the final year of Street Fighter V here at Capcom number nine. Of course, we're bringing it back in to start things off at the top eight. My name is Vicious, here with Jammers, and I gotta hear it from the crowd one more time. If you're ready for the top eight, let me hear you scream it. Love that beautiful, sweet, sweet sound, Jammers. It looks like we're gonna have to match that energy indeed. We've had riveting matches already, and it only gets juicier from here and more intense for these guys as well. Some of them, it's no stranger to them. Others, it is they're grabbing the opportunity by the horns. Like you see, this is what the bracket is looking like in the top eight. Mena RD is going to be going up against Ending Walker. That's going to be a juicy one here Ooh. with the youngins. And then on the other side of the winner's semi-final in this top eight, it's going to be Zen, one of the favorites. What a storyline it will be here. But he's going up against Angry Bird. And boy, when we get to that match, have I got some lyrics for that I one. I can't wait for it. But then talk to me, loser's side, what are we talking about? We have so many different stories coming out through here. We're spinning the thread a little bit. We got Idom versus Vega Patch, right? The current reigning Capcom Cup champ who was put on hiatus from 2019 and Vega Patch taking out one of the number one contenders with his Fong. That's going to be dangerous. Can he take out another big contender? Then down below, NL versus Mr. Crimson. And I got to say, it was as close as ever seeing NL in this spot precisely against Mr. Crimson. 
It's crazy. What a disparity in results those guys had to do before they made it into the losers round one of top eight here. But you can see it right now. This is the first match we're going to be kicking off in this top eight, closer to the grand prize, as Vicious alluded to moments ago. But this is it. Mena RD. The question is, he actually has a very good bracket path from the top 16, and Ending Walker is another one he can actually put on his list of titans he can knock down in this Man. cup. And that's very hard to ask for. I'm looking at the current record of Mena RD looking absolutely flawless. He has a chance to potentially become a two-time Capcom Cup champ, yeah. but he's going up against, as you mentioned, the Titan Killer. There's no end to his walk. It's in the name, baby, and he's been looking so clean and so ridiculous. If you don't believe us, well, you're about to experience it yourself. Yes, he's going to do it. Okay, so we were talking about this before. Birdie actually has a very good time, an excellent time against Ed in the neutral. Right now, part of that is because of the button game. Let's see how Mena actually deals with Flicker. This is the character that got him on the map and put Dominican Republic on the map. Yep. Let's see if he can get a huge advantage here because Ending Walker is probably going to face his biggest challenge yet. Here we go, game number one. Already off to a great start. Mena RD looking to outspace Ending Walker, but let's see how good his math game. When's the one, two, three coming? It's not coming just yet. Mena RD is doing such a great job with some of these tweets. We've got an activation. Ending Walker now. With the offensive and the throw here, what are you gonna do about it? He's gonna wait for probably the bullhorn activation so he can get V-Trigger 2 here, Mena. So he's gonna have to take a couple of grabs here and then he's gonna activate off of this. Yep, here comes V-Trigger 2. Oh, and no littering three. here! He checks the space up in the sky, but here we go it. now. That's a closeout, hanging chain, the heavy version to slam him on the ground and give him that first round vicious. So clean, and I gotta say, that was quite quick from both ends. The amount of damage taken from both sides. They are absolutely swinging here in the first round, and now Mena RD again with the big counter poke, setting up the can. He still manages to uppercut past the trap. And this is the thing, right? It's when Mena gets that range to go, or that screen space to just work with Hanging Chain and really be able to dominate the screen here. But Ending Walker, he is not deterred by anything. Here comes the Wake Up Bullhorn into V-Trigger 2 again. Looks out the can and makes it tricky. And just fine now, Ending Walker no longer having any sort of support with the EX. He's trying to build up this one meter stone for himself. The anti-air is there, it's fine. Two right. whiffing grabs. A little bit of an awkward situation from NRD. And it needs a hit confirm here. That's what he got. That's what it was. It's not going to do as much damage as from a medium, but we'll take it anyway. Oh, the back throw. If it was a Kamonga, but it would have killed. So the he'll chain. take that. That's still minus two. He's not going to be in any sort of danger just yet. But watch out for the trigger. That's it. Going to get the guard break here. Can he get one sneaky throw? No, oh, he's going to kill him. That's going to be the round. More than enough damage. Ending Walker finding NRD, trying to walk out of danger. Lo and behold, that low medium kick just so far. So oh, this first game is going to be imperative for confidence there. And it's going to be a punish. Sweep the sweep. I like that. That was a careless sweep there from Mena. Just put him in the corner already. He might have to spend super to get out if he really needs to, but it seems like he's using sweep. He's and still yeah, going to be using it. He had to use it. He's going to get some Oki here, unless Ending Walker wants to V-shift or uppercut to break momentum. And that's why he jumped. He knew it was coming. So dangerous too, still up close and personal. Does get the counter hit conversion. Now pushing towards the corner a little bit. Men RD trying to counter poke with some of the jabs. He wants to create the space. Although he has the oh, life lead, he it got could a dwindle down. Combo and he, a throw will just get him standing. That's, That's going to be the game. The stun is there and so is the damage. Here comes Ending Walker. He just needs to finish it up. You know the critical art. Incoming. Game one. Ending Walker. There you go. Closing that game out there with Psycho Barrage. And you can see it, yeah, Kaba's a bit quiet at the moment. Kaba will make some noise in a minute, I know. But <laughs> yeah. this is what's interesting, because as we said, on paper, this this works for Birdie. You can see it, the range and the spacing that Mena is playing at. But Oof. again, that factor of V-Trigger oh, 2, man. that's what always makes him stay in this dogfight there, Vicious. I'm loving the counter He's getting so much mileage off of some of these fights, as well as within range of the sweep, but it's ending Walker. Still trying to find a way in, no sir. Big punish, at least the knockdown. That's all we need there, and he's going to get a light kick into EX Ball here, put the can out again, and that's, I like what Ending Walk is doing. He's just trying to deter him from using the items oh, and gaining no. advantage of it. That's going to be low chain. EX command grab. No, sorry, regular okay. command grab. He's Coming out in there, watch the overhead, and he still gets the counter poke. Man, these lights are really adding up against Ending Walker, at least in this particular round. This is it, man. It's the crouching jab. Not even stand medium punch hit confirmed. It's the crouching jab and the lights that are really annoying and deterring Ending Walker from playing his game. And they're slightly faster than Flicker, but he gets a conversion into Psycho Splash and ends it with the uppercut. He can throw him again. Yeah, he can throw him again. <laughs> That's it. Ending Walker has a high success rate of throws in tournaments. Oh, the and he gets... There we go. He hits Bullhorn. Dashes on in there. 
Checks with the Fierce as well, ending Walker, trying to be risk averse. He sees the trigger. He understands what's going on with Men RD, setting up for Ken. Yeah, good stuff there. Oh my god, the to Whopper. He takes again, and the buffer. He's gonna get big damage here. I don't know if he's gonna break away the Cycle Whopper right, or I'll leave it. it. Oh, he back choice. out the V-Shift. Oh no, he falls out of it. That could have been the stun in the game. Check there, he's got no V-Trigger, and he's gonna have to close out early. So you wanna read. He chases down the V-Shift. The mental mata law. There we and go. you see it, Kaba, as you called it, as soon as the W has happened, he goes right in there. What a swift rebuttal from the Dominican Republic's Mata number Lord. one. And again, not phased. He's been in a lot of conducive positions here. Ending Walker makes this interesting, but that sweep is going to be such an annoying tool there. Trying to whiff punish it, and that's it. Ed has problems with whiff punishing in general. So doing it against Birdie when he well spaces things, it's going to be a nightmare, and he gets a conversion. Damn. Getting so much mileage out of the cans coming out against Ending Walker. He seems to be a little bit stuck in the center, but I gotta say now the escape options are just fine. Can out again. That's not Man. good. He's trying everything in the kitchen sink and it's not working. Yeah, he just throws out the fireball and the snatcher. Man, what is going on? He's found the plan. Yeah, he's found it. He knows what he's found a, a, a chink in the armor, a dent in the armor. It's gonna be annoying. That's been the plan thus far. This can is getting a lot of mileage, as I mentioned earlier, but Ending Walker does get the flicker into the extension EX. Great interruption, man. This young man reacts and they're getting better by the day. Yeah, that sweep is too, it's doing too much. Ooh. It's harassing him too much. He has no idea how to get around it. And he can't jump either, but he That's gets a fine. crush counter instead. Forward throw, reset. Oh, no, no, and he gets to switch to the other side. And it's an excellent escape option as well for Birdie to get out of the corner like that with the jumping medium punch. Can't anti it because he was too late to re react. Flicker pressure. We haven't seen that too often just yet. Oh no, that's fine. Actually, that's totally fine for Ending Walker. All right, V reversal. That's not a good idea because it's going to do a lot of damage here. He might have to wait for a V reversal opportunity oh, again stuck. here, Ending Walker. You're that's stuck. why Mena threw him. That's going to be stunned. That's stunned. Two games to one. Mena RD, as soon as he had that side switch, thanks to Ending Walker, it was nothing but pressure. And it was so difficult against Birdie. You have the threat of the command grab, you have the threat of the meaty pressure, and just regular grabs. It looks like they've gone straight back into it. He looked perplexed there for a couple of seconds, but you know, if you talk to him after this, he'll Oof. probably feel different. And that's going to be a conversion into Psycho Splash. I don't know, he probably has to be more aggressive, more belligerent towards Mena RD, but he looks solid on defense right now, Vicious. It's the sweep, yeah, okay. That's fine. I don't know, he, he might have to risk it with a jump eventually. I, I don't know. It's the jab flicker, though. He's slowly starting to figure it out, putting the pieces of the puzzle. This is definitely a very, very convincing round. Ending Walker starting things off with a perfect in game four. It all started after blowing up the sweep. He might have found the solution temporarily. Yeah. Hey, listen, form is temporary, class is permanent. Even if Mena is one round down, and that, that, again, he's not close enough for the flicker. It's got fixed range, so it doesn't just connect automatically. But he gets a conversion into EX Psycho Knuckle again. Misses the air to air, unfortunately. That would have been big there, vicious for the juggle. Still checking Andy Walker, moving a little bit too far forward, a little overzealous, pressing buttons. There is a crush counter on the roundhouse. Checking out for the throws. Do you know it? He was he ready. He might do another one. He might do he another could one. Do another one. Just waiting there. Flick it into activation there. Reset with the back throw. This is good. Can he break away with an armor? I think Mena did try to do an armor. He tried. I saw a little bit of a flash there. Guard break. Oh, back yeah. throw. Still got another opportunity. He can't armor them because Ultra Snatcher can break the armor. So he's going to have to take this. Good be reversal. Excellent. Allergic to the cycle power. Sneeze it off. Jumping away, guard break. This is tough. He's got to connect to low. He has to connect to low, but he spent the bar, so sweep is out of the equation here. And Mena knows it. He's been sitting down blocking, not giving away too much space on defense, not walking back. This is huge. He's got the vitality to take these conversions, and he's got to be careful with those projectiles. Oh, no. That's the round. That is the round. He, the he dashed one time too much. Hey, he closed it out with the jackhammer target combo, and that's going to put Mena at match point to put him into winner's final. Um, we've seen this position before, haven't we, in previous Capcom Cups? We have. And again, uses Psycho Knuckle to get in, but puts Ooh. him in a dangerous spot, and he dashes up arbitrarily to get that throw. He needs to surprise dash a little bit more. So he, yeah, can't punish that. He's got to take advantage of the negative frames. And what happens immediately after? But RD trying to yeah. dive in. No, sir. The can actually saved him a little bit. We'll take that trade, and there's that clipping again. That roundhouse has been an absolute nuisance. He can't anti it. Yeah, he walked under. He was too shook of the situation there. Cannot jump either. And it's just oh. waiting. With punish, we'll take that. Even if it's an iota amount of damage, we will take that. 
He's trying to bait the EX ball on activation, I but feel. But check again from NRD. How many times have you found success? He's dead, that's it, that's it, that's dead. And that's gonna be Meta RD taking it down convincingly against the biggest threat that we've seen thus far. Three to one. Let me fix my face. It's Meta RD who is actually the big bull threat. Well, solid performance with a resounding victory there to edge himself closer to, like we mentioned before, the second title, the last title here of Capcom Cup for Street Fighter V. Looked dominant, looked comfortable in that matchup. There was a strategy there. We saw Ending Walker have and show signs of life, but it was a little bit difficult because, again, the main factor, the pivotal moment, was the sweep. Right. Ed can't really do much about it, even if you try and uh, take advantage of the negative frames. You've got that jab to take care of it, man, with exceptional range and a huge deterrent. But then, you know what, then, even when he got in his face, he tried to shimmy him, he tried to get a couple of throws here and there, but oh, Mena yeah. looked super composed, super comfortable. A lot of stuff. moments where he actually found the correct spacing to even try to go for an EX bullhorn and actually have Ending Walker miss time some of his meaty pressure. Again, he's just so dominant when it comes to both offense and defense. And I will say the adaptation between throwing out the cans and spacing out the sweep has been pretty pivotal, right? Ending Walker, the most that he could do is dash up, as you just mentioned, but there were some shining moments off of the resets that Ending Walker had. His pressure has been nothing but relentless and very, pretty optimal, I would say. Like, there's, there's plenty of moments where it's ambiguous as to when he'll reset, but when he hits you with that reset, it leads to so much damage. I know the move is an absolute, like, annoying move to deal with, but if Flicker had a little bit more extended range... Too to... late, man. Oh, yeah, I know. No <laughs> take-backs. If, if there was a bigger hurt box on Sweet and Max Distance, because remember, Mena was doing it from relatively far away, or Max Distance, right sure. at the tip. If there was a little bit more range on Flicker to get that punish and extended the Psycho Knuckle, that would change this matchup dramatically. But again, those V-Trigger 2 conversions, they were absolutely crucial for Mena there, especially with characters that got over 1025 Vitality. Paid a, paid a very big deal in that. Just overall, game after game, it was down to the wire. Ending Walker, we saw his moments of potential here in the corner to nail actually a couple of rounds, but Mena RD just getting the big mistakes that Ending Walker has put himself through, right? That last V reversal in that particular round, man, this guy's hair is everywhere. I, <laughs> wish I, I wish I could even say that about myself, but I'll tell you what, man. I feel the Dude. exact same way. As soon as Ending Walker put himself in that corner, I felt like there was a mental break. He probably had seven different hairstyles in the span of like two matches there. He gets the shimmy there, which was really good. But this like, Ed's like super dangerous in the corner, and I like that sure. he identified that V-Trigger 2 and EX Bullhorn was ready there. He went for a couple of throws, but even then, Mena still had the health to kind of take that, absorb that, and then change things, change the tide in his favor. So that was really good stuff. And then the conversion with the standing hard punch. Beautiful done. It's mainly, when I think about it now, it's mainly the heavies that are causing uh, Ed, a couple of nightmares just because of the range, the distance, you know, the low risk, low reward, but the mental damage it does is huge, especially in the three out of five in a matchup against Ed. Mm. Looking into it, Mena RD again, moving on into the winner's final side. That's right, Mena RD looking to repeat history from his position currently, but looking at it again, we have the next match. Ooh. Highly anticipated, especially among the blokes downstairs. We've been talking about it all day. What happens if it's Shen versus Angry Bird coming up so, on stage? Here's what I've got to say about these two as they set up. Shen, for me, he's got a play style that's unfathomable. It's very difficult to pinpoint what is so good. A lot of the players downstairs will tell you it's the decision making, you know, a lack of experience of facing him, but the fact that a lot of us can't really pinpoint the specifics as to what's taken him so far. This is a history in the making, not right. just for him, but for the Chinese scene in general, right? And then again, he's got a high success rate and a lot of close interactions against all the top players. They are shook of that bison. But when you look at Angry Bird, right, with his Ken, this man redefines aggression. He really does. So I'm gonna see if Zen can really, put, you know, calm the storm, weather the storm, I should say, it's gonna be an interesting matchup here, uh, Vicious. And in case you guys were asking yourselves, if you missed the last chance qualifier, who is Zen? Well, he's about to prove who he is right now, but just in case you didn't know, he's the last chance qualifier. One of the most <laughs> dangerous people on the planet. If you win that tournament, best believe they are a force to be reckoned with. Here we go, game one. Look at the back throw, shout out to Tasty Steve. Angry Bird now looking to set the pace. There we go, yeah, this is it. And it's Zen, he is gonna get punished there, but it's gonna be a throw instead. He could've done a three frame top two. I think that was the medium version of knee press, but... He's playing it safe at the moment. Good oh, block. Jump boy, punish. I get that. No, he's not going to go for a jump punish instead. He's going to activate the trigger and he go for a reset. I'm not sure if that's intentional, but I'll give the benefit of the doubt. 100%. Here Everything's calculated with the robot. Oh my god. This is the confirm on the stat. How run. many fierces? Can we get one more for the stun? Psycho Crusher. Enough for the round. Damn. Look at that stun.
Stun. And we've been talking about this since the LCQ. His usages of Stan Hard Punch, the accurate spacing has been on point and he continues to illustrate that to the people at home and in this tournament. You also got to keep an eye out of his EX knee press, which he Jesus. just done right there. One sets up the other. Great combination for his style of play. There's a crouch for his anti-air vicious. Locks it out. This is the stand hard punch, whiffing it with malicious intent again, but Angry Bird is just trying to find a way to navigate around it. Gets a clean jump into the top seat. Saw a little bit of it earlier. Angry Bird was looking for the forward momentum to get a jump whip punish against him, but Jen already next step ahead, just within range of the anti-air. You have the guess down below. Installing. The bomb has go. been planted. What are you going to do about it? Explode. Psycho judgment into the knee press, and he takes game one in swift fashion. You are not kidding when you say his decision making has been absolutely on point. We've been talking about it in the back. I, I think he's a robot, man. Maybe. He's a robot. I mean, AI has taken over the world, so. <laughs> it might work here. Possibly. Good whip punish on the sweep. We saw him do that against Big Bird when he's going up against. Uh, Big Bird was going up against Zen. The whip punish on the sweep. But again, the knockdown's not enough. Got him in the corner here. Jeez. What a time to counter poke with the standing medium punch. Angry Bird again lost his turn, but still. Pressuring with the fireball, moving his way in. The stand medium kicked up. The whip punish anti air yet again. So consistent. Out of the corner. Peace. Yeah. He's been pretty successful with those crouching hard punch anti And he seems ready at the wheel as well. Some people, it's hard to react with the bison's anti because it's like 11 frames or something. But And he's so fast too. If he knows he can't get the right angle for the anti air, wait a minute. Here we'll talk comes. about that later. Please do not show you can just wait. Oh, he didn't wait. He can't wait. He tried to jump at least. Oh, you thought you were safe to move? That's it. Knee press hard knockdown. Is he going to shimmy him? He did! He does he it did. again! <laughs> How many people has he, has he taken down with that exact movement? Damn. He's so fast. Dude, but it's such a detrimental, it's such a frightening situation for you. The throw's going to kill you, it can stun you, <gasps> and he just takes, he, he galvanizes you into making a bad decision there. That's what he did. There we go, step kick there, using it as a poke. It's going to be difficult for Zen to get out, but he does have EX head press at the wheel, so he might be able to get that. Hey, he tried it! Conversion from the EX, Andy Bird trying to set up. No, he mistimed it. Oh, the throw bait with the hard kick. Can he get the come oh, on no. grab? He's going to set this up. Here. He has to throw bait. I love the EX decision. Kajen maybe back dashing. Holding a button. He has to wait for a jump from Angry Bird. He has not got the health to play on the ground, but this is the thing. He pressed to push him in the corner. Or so back you throw. thought. Excellent time for that reversal. Down below, Psycho Crusher side switch. Plus frames had to be reversal. There, the overhang at the block. Oh, punish. Mr. Throw is too far, yet yeah, knee press doesn't put you exactly in throw range. Only the heavy version does, and he tried to sneak in a throw there, but Angry Bird ready and reacted immediately to keep him in this match. Conversion with the Psycho Reflect. He tried to go for a delayed roundhouse, but thrown out of his troubles. And here comes a throw of momentum here from Angry Bird. Universal gets baited. Excellent work from the stand medium punch from Angry Bird. Whiffs one, gets the second one. Reflex again. He might be able to counter a step kick with that reflect if he gets the opportunity. And he got jumped over. No way. Wait, no way. He got him. He got him with the cross jab. Got him. You saw the animation. Angry Bird. Hey, not too bad though. There's a lot of meter. Take it away. He can take a throw here, but I don't think Angry Bird wants to. And he took one. Here he comes. Good jump away from Angry Bird. But slide. He wants the block activation. And so does Angry Bird. Beam to the punch. Fight fire with fire. <gasps> Had an opportunity to catch the V shift. I don't know how this kid's doing it. V-Brick, impertinence. Delay throw! Oh. He delayed it just enough. And there was not enough life left for Angry Bird. Another game on the board. Like I said, when I was talking about this before, I mentioned this point, I'm going to reiterate it. His success rate on every close interaction is almost bang on 100%. He is rarely wrong against some of these top players. And I'll tell you something else as well. He Ooh. makes some impactful adjustments to your defensive choices. And it's going game by game. But Angry Bird again, throwing everything in the kitchen sink. Back that air approach, and now it's going to be so dangerous. Where's the Psycho Axe? No, he's baiting it out just in case Angry Bird react to the V-Ship. No! Yeah, that it's happens against a couple far. of characters. That happens against a couple of characters. And he tried to shimmy him again. Didn't work. Bro. Funky exchange. Got the go. activation now, checking the lows immediately. Psycho Crusher on out of there. There is the DP punish. Yeah, punish there from Angry Bird. He's trying to get a confirm activate into Heat Rush throw. Can he get another throw? He needs it, but he misses that low forward. It's still oh, a trigger. That's dead. He's dead. You're dead in the dead. Activated too. Critical art. Jen looking at match point. 
See, I can't decide whether it's they don't know when to press buttons against Bison or they don't know when to press buttons against Zen. It's one of the two. That's That's a, that is actually a really, really it's, it's got to be one of the two for me. I'm learning as I go along with this yeah. guy. You're literally not the only one to say that. I mean, look, a lot of the players downstairs are thinking the exact same thing. So again, he tried to jump out there, Zen, but he's still cool, calm, and collected. He can afford to lose a round because he is at match point here. Angular needs a super, probably. Oh, and it's just so far behind. How does he know the range is so consistently, man? Well, he's practiced that, I can tell you that much. Well, first, coming on in there, EX talks to Sun. Pretty decent success with that exact entry, Angry Bird. Looking to take it down, just a couple more touches. He gets it, yes, sir, the light conversion. What a check moving forward against Jen to get around. He's not a machine. He's a man! Oh, he's human indeed. He can drop rounds, but can he drop games? That's the big question. Another successful anti here with the crouching fist, but he could not counter that early jumping hard punch from Ken. Version of the fireball. He's gonna use that, saving it for later. Gets the beat break again. Back to the mid screen here. Probably looking for the range. Good crouch fist. Back throw again. And we with all the momentum on his side. Throws out the reflect. He needs that activation. Here he comes. Can he get close enough? He might have to Mike walk a couple of steps here, but. Oh. Let's check in those dashes. Out of oh, no, no, no way! Miss. That might, yeah, it's gonna miss! Yep, that yep, will yep, miss! Yep. Don't worry, I've seen that one before, but only I once. I was gonna say, I've never seen it work before. Oh, I don't know the hard knockdown yet. Feel it within your body. The Psycho power has been ingrained. He jumps, you're in so much trouble. Psycho Blast, he's not gonna do it. Could be shift. Oh, he's no. dead, he's done, that's a wrap! Shit! He's so flawless! He hasn't dropped a single game! Absolutely flawless in execution. Looking to continue that run. Angry Bird still on the loser side, but man, how do you stop the last chance qualifier? Well, uh, uh, this storyline of a dream is becoming a reality in so unsteady paces. This was an absolute dominating performance there for Zien. And now he continues and books his place in the winner's final round. Do you know what? His gameplay continues to mesmerize me, and I hope that everyone in the crowd is hypnotized by that as well, because he does it, and I'll say it again, it's unfathomable. You, it really is, you, you just really watch it, and you want to peg it down to decision machines, but it's more than that, Vicious. I feel it's more than that. There's, there's something so wild about it, like, looking at it as an observer, as a player, as a fan, That's it's right. like, how are we even able to, like, miss a bison like this as well, right? Just thinking about that alone, it's like the first time I've got decent exposure to him was, during the LCQ, I'm not gonna lie, looking into it, Same. I've only heard about him via DCQ. How do we do that? How does that even happen? He warned us. He How did warn us on social media, indeed. But it's gonna be interesting. But let's give you an update on what the bracket looks like right now. The winner's semi-final matches have concluded. Mena beating Ending Walker 3-1. Zen uh, dominating Angry Bird 3-0. So winner's final will be Mena going up against Zen. I, <laughs> and there's a storyline that I'm not going to talk about, but it will be for the other commentator to talk about. And then obviously, <laughs> losers round one will be the matches that we alluded to before. But it's been riveting and it will continue to be electrifying as well. So just stick around, stick around on this channel because we want you to enjoy these games. But hey, you know what? We need to shout out our sponsors. Like we said, you're enjoying Street Fighter 5, but I need you to be enjoying some Street Street Fighter Duel or pre-registering for it because it is going to be available this month. You go on, on, on release, I should say, there's going to be rewards like characters, gems, and more. There's a brand new adventure that awaits with all the World Warriors teaming up to fight against this weird company called uh, Shadow. I don't know, their boss might have been on screen to give her an early promotion. Maybe. She might be on the screen as well. You never know, the bottom right. <laughs> but yeah, there's going to be 40 plus characters on launch with unique character outfits. You may have seen them before, but yes, you can go ahead and head over to the website streetfighterduelgame.com to find out more details on how you can pre-register and join in on the action there. I can tell you what, I can't wait to get my hands on Street Fighter Duel as well as not being able to wait for the rest of this top eight. I gotta say, after these two matches, we're itching for it, but as all things are, we gotta be patient, we gotta be cool, and we'll see you afterwards because we got some big matches coming. It's loser time, baby, right after this. Time to fly, time to fly.
was obsessed, you see, with finding an appropriate vessel for this power. Showtime, baby! Prepare. Fight with all your heart! An honor, to be sure. You won't be disappointed. At least you don't give me what I want. I may have to come in there and bust them up myself. Amazing awareness there. She makes dangerous look so good. Gotta remember, a cornered animal is the most dangerous. Oh wow, someone just got turned into a hashtag. You call my answer. This is where things are gonna get very interesting. Making him sweat with these shurikens. <laughs> we live for these kind of fights. They got the advantage. We gotta start cooking here. That's what happens when you have an irresistible force meeting an immovable object. Time for some good old violence. This is how you stay limber. You gotta crack every last limb. What in the world did we witness? That was unbelievable! When you secured your spot in the top 16, you exploded on stage. You're, you've been shouting, you've been screaming every game, every time you've got a result here. You've been so loud and vocal. Uh, what does this Capcom Cup mean to you? Remember SFA Europe. Uh, that was not good for, for me or my team. Uh, Wild Blast did, uh, really, did really bad results. Let's be honest. Uh, but three of us made it here. Jimmy, Takamura, and me. And Takamura came out on winner side, like destroying expectations about that group. I wanted a redemption of doing so bad in that league. And I was the captain of, of that team. And I felt that this was my last chance of redemption in, in this game. How important is it for you to watch back some of your matches so you can learn and improve as a player? Well, um, the ones that give you the most uh, to learn are especially your defeats, because you need to know like, okay, uh, why did I do this? Okay, I'm never doing that again. I have to learn from that. And just by repeating that, like each defeat, that's the way you stop losing that way. And when you stop losing, the only other option is winning.
And what a wonderful shot of the capital record. Shout out to Jason for getting that fantastic drone shot from production. But yes, we are here continuing the action at CatCon Cup, the ninth edition. And it's going to be the last one, this send off to Street Fighter V. We've had some great memories. And there's one last page to write down in the book. We're calling the action here. Myself, Jammers, and Vicious Vicious. Talk to me. How are you feeling thus far? Well, we started the show off at the top eight, looking at Mena Ardia and Andy Walker as well. We talked about a potential repeat of a Capcom Cup champion. Well, we're getting that again from the loser's side. Idom going up against Vega Patch. But we all know and love Idom here in the States, but it's about Vega Pito right now. Vega Patch is the man of the hour, I feel like, with his current run taking out one of the biggest contenders that we were looking at going into the top 16. He's got to be absolutely feeling it into this matchup. Well, this is important for confidence because both of these guys, despite their results, they've had a couple of hiccups and shaky moments. But again, you can't have shaky moments against your opponent in this situation because it's go hard or go home. Just to give you a quick analysis, right? Vega Patch beat Lizard 3-2. Then he beat Kawano 3-2. Is he going to do another jump scan, do 3-2 again, or is Idom going to be the brakes to his car? Who knows? He's going to go with the Laura pick against Fang. Do you want to do bias commentary or want to keep it diplomatic? What do you want to do? You know what it is. You know what it is, Jammers. I'm not going to reveal it to the chat, but look into your eyes. You know what it is, but I got to say, Madrid FGC, stand up for this one. US FGC, best believe it's going to be intense. There we go. The clash of two communities. It's going to be... A barn burner, that's for sure. Yep. The Brazilian Bonita going up against the Venomous number two. Loser goes home. And he already flies into danger and gets a reset into the sunset wheel. Uh, Fantastic start for Idom. I don't think he had a clearing uh, clearing permit for that one. I got to say, that landing was a little shaky, a little bit of turbulence. But it's OK. He still has his wheels. Mega Patch now looking to assault with the poison. The V skill, Nishiki coming out. Anti-air on the jab. Well, here's the thing. He's got to be extremely careful with his projectile placements because Laura's got EX Volt Charge. She's got EX Sunset Wheel. They've got the projectile invincibility. And Vega Patch loves his V-Shifts. So we may see one very soon. Let's see what he does. He's the Revender out. Goes to the Cannon Patch. One of the best moves in the game. I love the back dash. This is from Idol, but still on the other side. Vega Patch now able to apply pressure. There we go. Find the pressure there. Puts the EX Cloud out. He's been causing absolute oh. nightmares. Good jump light kick, but he gets punished on the way down. Watch out for the stun. He's chasing for it. Vega Patch now he's in a chill. He's not going to overextend. He has the poison still. There's the party time Can't from Idom. That's one throw. Has to take it. Has he to take this. Clap. He jumps about out. this. The oh, defense yeah. is so good from Vega Patch. He's going to get punished. That's going to be the flow combo and a oh, heavy box. He spoke too he's soon. going to close it out there. He can't afford to do that. Yes, it will help you in certain situations, but depending on what move Idol does, he will cover and be able to catch the counter hit properties. And I'm loving that. Using the EX for the speed on the punish against Vega Patch. Doesn't care about the V skill. He wants to land the knockdown. All for naught, though. Vega Patch now gets a setup. Rio Benda. Misha Q. V skill up. This is what's going to be doing most of the damage. As you see, the poison racking up against Idom. And it's going to be such a nuisance with all of the pokes that Fang Ha has to kind of outreach Laura in the neutral. Set. And he goes behind. Lovely box. Fantastic block there from Idom. But it's not over yet. The party's going to start in about a couple of seconds. Here it comes. Did you get your invite, Jammers? Well, here it comes. It's party time. Sunset wheel, there's one. He can't be shipped yet. He has to wait and hold this. And that's what, that's what Idol was doing in 2019. And he might be able to close it out. Yep. All the way out. Thunderclap. Hey! A nice secure game one for Idom. Very confident. Two rounds straight. And this is the thing I've noticed when watching Idom play. Every time he lands a throw, something happens. The opponent feels a grab is coming. They feel they want to escape a situation. And unfortunately, 80% of the time, they guess incorrectly. And he's able to build from that momentum. This is where it is. He needs that V-Trigger 2 Vega Patch, but he also needs to slip out of there. And because he's got an EX Dash that's not thrown invincible, you are going up against one of the strongest grapplers in the game. So you need to make those executive decisions every five seconds or so in this game. Funny we still say grappler. I still think she's a brawler because she's hitting you just as much as she's grabbing you, right? Oh, what? Is this uh, the prelude to Marissa? Ah, uh, you know, I'm not saying anything. I am now. <laughs> just hitting that off with the thunderclap. We see Vega Patch stuck in this corner. Watch out now. Not your turn. Plus again. So the escape option, no sir, Idom is tracking him down. Every time he goes airborne, it hasn't really paid out for Vega Patch. Look at that being so incessant with these mediums, converts into the bolt charge, into the rodeo break, gets a regular grab. Can he grab him again? Who knows? Look at the pressure counter hit. Should be enough. He tried to escape with a jump yet again, Idom, in a very, very commanding round here in game two. He smells blood because he knows Vega Patch wants to escape and he can't do it the traditional way. This is probably not going to help in these situations either. This looks diabolical right now here for Vega Patch in terms of dealing with the matchup. 
Don Fool Fear still keeping the pressure from so far away. What a trade off against Kara Crouch Kicks extension. The counter hit is there. Idop try to counter poke. Stun also. A big problem. Look at the damage. Look at the purple. My man is magic colors with the outfit. You know what it is. Pressure again. Forward throw. Overhand. No, it's the low. The big connection from Vega Patch. Even from that distance, you are still within threat of the high low mix up. You go that BT crouching light kick paying dividends there, but I don't off to a fantastic start again. And Vega Patch is trying to be elusive and he's getting punished for his attempts. He break. Yep. Oh. Take it there, Cow Crouch, and he gets hit with a thumb to clamp. So it's going to be an impromptu conversion in from Idol. Can he close it out with Sunset? Wheel? He does. Here we go again, Thunder Clamp. But hey, man, as it goes down, Idom up two games. Vega Patch has been in a similar situation before. Well, this is what was interesting, right? The first game. Item identified that he's trying to escape the grab the whole time. So he probably knew from the start of that round, he said, I will close it out with a command grab because I'm just going to keep applying the pressure with the buttons. It is some of the strongest conditioning we'll see in Street Fighter Five. 2 0 down in rapid fashion. Vega Patch is going to have to make some radical changes to his gameplay now, Vicious. It's the toughest decisions to make, right? You've got past layer one, now you've experienced layer two. What happens when it's all blended together in a dangerous concoction in game three? Idom now looking to set it apart against Vega Patch and show him why he's a cut above the rest. But we'll see if that really comes to fruition. Most of the stun. Again, but look yeah. at how much damage he's already done. And if he didn't miss that elbow, he would have been stunned. But speak of the devil, asking you shall receive. He is getting ran over right now. A deer in headlights. Vega Patch, if you've got a trick up your sleeve, no pun intended, you're going to need to pull it out now. This might be curtains for Vega Patch, but there's a lot of belief in the way that he has been playing thus far in his top 16 experience. The thing is, he, he just doesn't know how to avoid the command grab and like Vega Patch, or so I say Fang doesn't have the necessary tool set to just escape oh, no. it. Yeah, he might as well do another one, but I don't think he's gonna do it. Yeah, that's it. Oh no, he missed he the one! Here we go! Vega Patch might be in control of the situation after that one opening. No more EX Thunderclap. Check out the projectiles. Mega Patch is absolutely frightened right now. The reversal there just to break the momentum slightly. Nice work. Catches in with the EX nice soldier. work! Him down. He needs a throw. He needs a throw. I don't care how you get it. No, the wrong angle. He thought he would get the anti-air from that far away. The crouching medium kick fails him, but now it's Idom trying to take back the control. That's it. One it's touch. A Hold on a minute. It. Takes him down. He, he needs a trigger. He really needs the trigger. Uh -oh. here, sweep activation. activation. He's coming for sweep activation. He's coming for you. Here he comes. So Toja, no activation. He still needs that sweep, but he's got no meter left in the tank here. The thunderclap to use oh my as a God. point of entry. Yeah, that's so it, deterring the situation. Vega Patch can't build any meter. Not enough anyway. Oh my god, you could have converted! Possibly! We get the activation now. Coward Crouch again. He needs to do a Coward Crouch or something. I'm just waiting for that V reversal opportunity. One light kick will do it here. Please do not make the same mistake you did before! Oh, he's alive! No, he's that dead! Was the hit stun of the Nishiq, the potent version of it. It actually saved him and gave him a lifeline, Vicious! That was a three hit combo indeed. Two hits from the projectile, finishing it up with a standing medium punch. Vega Patch staying alive! Talk about poison potency. We're open for business here, but I wonder how long this business will survive. Setting up with a real Benda. Absolutely huge starter for Idom. The V shift is there. He couldn't punish it in time. Too far. Probably a stand piece would have done it, but regardless, he gets the sunset wheel. This is him again. He can't be reversed. He's not going to be reversed out of there. He's going to sl wait to slide out. He has to slide out. Come on, man. <laughs> We haven't seen that option just yet, no, have we? He doesn't want to get thrown for it. That's why. That's going to be the reset. Hold on a minute. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Idom eliminating Vega Patch. Three to zero in what looked like a very, very massive floor on the entirety of that set. And it's so dangerous to even try to spin that meter for escape options. Because as you mentioned before, Idom was absolutely hunting for it. You know, Vega Patch, he would have been hurt for it. Unfortunately, he did. And the Spanish dream is officially dead. He probably is there. Okay, he was the sole representative for Spain. I gotta yeah, say, yeah, man. Placer. Spain, stand up. This is your boy, Vega Patch, making a very, very impressive run into his legacy for Street Fighter V. And it's always a pleasure to see him on the stage. He's gone so far. The amount of times we've seen him as a Fong player, that is quite the statement to make because this character, very, very hard to pilot.
It is indeed. And again, the biggest thing for me must have been fear of Sunset Wheel. He didn't know when and where to challenge. We rarely saw any V shifts because obviously he pushed you further to the corner. It, we saw no attempt at the EX dash. Right. Not even one attempt. Maybe he's scared because Idom's chase down when you try to escape his pressure is pretty much on point. I mean, he tried to fly in a no-fly zone and it didn't quite work out. We saw an air conversion. We saw the Oh, they're lot. real strict about that in LA. You can't be doing that here. Well, <laughs> Vega Patch is a foreigner and he's gonna learn that. <laughs> he's gonna learn today. That's just how it goes. But either way, man, big ups to the Spanish FTC Madrid. Ooh. Stand up. Okay. Your boy. But it sets us up nicely for Idom and Ending Walker. Before we even get into that, who's down below? NL versus Monsieur Crimson. Well, again, for those of you who don't know, you're just joining us, you can see it there. Or in the top 16 before, Ending Walker did beat NL in a nail biting set 3 2, popped him down and loses. And then he had to go up against Momochi, which he won 3 2. Mr. Crimson's coming into this. He's coming into this hot, but he's also disheartened. He had to take out his fellow countrymen and close friends to get his point, but that can give him extra incentive to try and win the cup. If I have to take you out, let me do it for you guys. How fitting for the big anime guy to give him anime plot armor. Is that what you're trying to do, Jammer? Maybe. I'm a fan, of course, but you know, I'm not being biased here. Mr. Crimson, he's done so much in the past year competitively. He's won so many tournaments, placed high, qualified early, of course, which I had the pleasure of commenting. But NL, NL for me, you know what? I've got to, I've got to speak this guy up, man, because for me, he really defines efficiency. He it yeah. epitomizes that really well. He's been doing that for years. Had a couple of shaky moments again uh, this, this tournament, but he's here and he's here for a reason. Couldn't get the dub for SFL finals, but sure. hey, he can make redemption here for himself and UYU in this position here. And I'm glad you were talking about some of the shakiness because he's been one of the most stable players, I feel, since his transition into Luke. Despite where he's at currently, right, he had to face off against Ending Walker. He still could have gone either way as majority of his matches thus far into this position have been down to 3-2 every single time looking at his current record. But against Mr. Crimson, this is the test of his true skill, I feel like. Luke versus Dawson. It is indeed. Now, I know NL, he studies a lot. He's a very studious guy. He does his due diligence. I don't know how much studying he's done of Mr. Crimson. Maybe he anticipated this at some point within the bracket before the finals even started. We're going to be looking at for with punishes, mainly Crouch Fierce into the Avenger tackle on the limbs. We're going to see how he does the air approach. Is he going to try and do jump beating punch for the juggle? How is he going to be That's able true. to lock down Mr. Crimson, who's so elusive and very antsy on defense as well? Sure. Maybe frame tight gameplay might work for NL here. We can talk about the basic strategies as well for Dawson against Luke. Taking a look at what he has in his arsenal, I feel like majority of the time, Sandblasters might prove to be a huge threat. But for the most part, Dawson, once he gets momentum with his limbs, I think he's going to be taking out pretty much whatever it is Luke's trying to throw at him in his pockets. I will say this, just to echo your point there, I totally agree with you 100%. I think one thing that's going to be important is Mr. Crimson's slide usages against NL. The crouch light kick, the crouch medium kick, and the crouching hard kick, they're sure. all slides. Let's see how he uses that. And if he's in a perilous situation, if there's anyone who knows how to make a comeback in a safe manner, it actually is Mr. Crimson. Sure, so, sure, sure. Remember, the round Sakamura loss, he didn't, it wasn't a robbery. It just slipped through his fingers. There's a difference. Might happen here, we'll see. You can see the reluctance from NL, not even to try to start off with Sandblast. He's actually looking for the limb initially. Mr. Crimson, well, he's here to deliver. There you go. We can see him using back hard kick already. He's trying to be at a range where he can do it at max distance. So a slide attempt at that from NL as he tried to do a sandblaster, but now Mr. Crimson pretty much putting all the pressure. Trying to throw bait there, but NL not buying. He tried to do heavy impact yet. He's just like, oh my god! He's going in. The yoga Gale, the stun. Look at the damage. Stun he's not Gale. done yet. You thought it was over? Did you see that blinking bar down on the right? Well, guess what? He's got extra damage. Round two. This guy's kind of nuts. This oh. character is kind of is kind of beefy. This Mr. Mr. Crimson guy's kind of good. He's kind of good. <laughs> Hailing from France. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, kind of hit confirm into the snap back target combo there. Can he get a sneaky oh, throw? Man. He will. Is he gonna play it safe and return the favor in kind? But Excellent. the B reversal breaks that chance. This is what I like to see. I want to know what the guessing game's gonna be like for Mr. Crimson when he gets put in these positions of brutal spike, even a roundhouse after forward throw. What happens when you're stuck in such a plus scenario where you can't press a button? You'd have to guess. He tried to make a reversal, but that teleport was a benefit to Mr. Crimson there. Jesus! We were talking about Luke's pressure? What about Dawson? If he gets to confirm, that's it, and he has to block that yoga flame. He might be able to. Yeah, he's still trying Jesus. to get Mr. Crimson to bite, but he's not. Oh. That's the round. Perfectly spaced. Well coordinated, well orchestrated, I should say, 
into baiting a button, falling susceptible to that counter hit, crouching heavy punch. Yeah, and again, Mr. Crimson utilizing Crouching Fizz is pretty damn good because sometimes you'll think they're doing throw tech, but as you just mentioned, right, they're actually doing delayed jabs. They're just trying to break the momentum. As you see, Mr. Crimson, when NL's been in his face, Mr. Crimson has not bite. No whiff throws yet. He might introduce a Gale option. He might even try to do That's a, what I was a crazy teleport, but we'll see. NL hasn't scared him enough, so NL needs to put the fear into his mind and make him panic like Travis Styles did. Maybe, we'll see. He might need to do minus two into uppercut. Who knows? I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, are we going to see? Like, are you trying to imply that maybe a rising rocket would be enough to to put some sense into Mr. Grim? Hang on a minute. Oh, you almost had an opportunity. We get to forward throw. Look at the momentum from oh, here. That's a counter hit. Too far away to convert. Speaking of back medium punch, and now teleport on the other side. Oh, that's another thing NL's been doing today as well. He's dashing within crouching medium kick range to really catch you off guard. Because I think he's got 16 or 17 frame there, so it does be highly effective here. Nicholas back activation, checking the V reversal. Punishes accordingly, but now it's talking about the pressure roundhouse. No, he dashes up. That's not real. And he tried to bait out. A, he tried to bait out a throw from Mr. Crimson. He's not buying. He is not yeah. gonna buy. Not yet. Yoga burner. Let him cook. Don't walk away. You gotta walk forward and block that. But he charges up hard shot instead. You have to block all of that. Oh, the Yoga Gale reintroducing the pressure. Got it. Throw bait. And he still had the V skill loaded up. He's spending it to secure it. Now there were other options, but. I totally get it. That moment, that moment, you had to had to secure the round. And that is a prime example of you can guess right all the time, but one interaction, one choice, you will make the incorrect decision. And that's where Mr. Crimson made the incorrect decision. He gets a level two flash up and straight to the tackle in the corner here. And good Gale. It's funny you could apply that to both uh, both characters. You know what I mean? Like, what oh, stun? Jesus, it's a stun. You can go for the full combo there, yeah, get that float. Uh, I mean, NL, if you want to break away, you can, but he's not going to. That was the medius back medium punch. There, there it is! is. Finally introducing the EX Rising Rocket. Cooking him up. Oh, but one light will do it. Yes! One light will do it, but he goes for a medium kick instead, and NL... Still in it, still in it. All tied up here. Within round, at least, for game two. Mr. Crimson still up with the advantage in the game. Bouncing heavy punch again, keeping NL in check. Remember, Mr. Crimson is implementing that death by a thousand cut strategy, the light buffers, the crouching hard punches into that. NL needs stat damage right now. Nice uppercut there. Down. Not too bad for Mr. Crimson. Alleviates him any sort of pressure in the corner. Charge that hard shot, good choice. He has to block this. Oh boy. And again, light rising rocket shimmy again. He's gonna get the huge trouble here. EX flash knuckle, but he done it too early because that should connect to the tip. Oh, he still gets the throw bait. Not dead yet. It's gonna be a full combo straight to the corner, but he's gonna go for a barrage. Yeah. Dash up. So I told you about the slides. Here he comes. He's going to build the bar. Watch out, Crimson. Watch out. What side? The back throw. Hang on a minute. He's still got Rock Smash already in wait, and he has to block this. And the slide will go under it. It's the underneath again. The high low mix up. The very last second, Mr. Crimson making it so difficult to make that choice. It could have been a snipe from the jump, but it's still down below. It's too dangerous. Even when you have something, one of the most powerful tools in the game in Rock Smasher V Trigger 1 there from Luke. Going up against Dalsim with the way he can avoid projectiles, especially as quickly as that, it's terrifying for anyone vicious. And look at this, Mr. Crimson a lot more active with his medium normals. Medium punch, medium kick, now going for the slide. NL still can't get away from the pressure. He's cooking him up. He's looking to get another 3-0 here. Oh, the the stun. There we go, out of the corner. Oh he's, my god. He's not, he's not gonna bite in that situation. And he's gonna have to do so. He might have to just do dash up throw. He literally might have to throw him a little bit more, but he can't lose that ground in the neutral. Nowhere to run. Tex, oh, he's in your head, mate. You thought, I mean, you said introduce a couple more throws. He's in his head. He tried. <laughs> There you go, forward throw again. Can we slide? I'm gonna wait for it. There it is. Shuffle. Not enough. High low again, possibly. He we got the spaces smasher. coming in through. He cannot rock smash it from there. You gotta be careful of the stand fierce, my friend. It. Oh, the, the attempt was there. He went for the Avenger, no chaser. I mean, that's the kind of stuff you save for the bar. Dude, this is going from bad to worse. Edo is absolutely befuddled right now. I don't think he's got a solid strategy. And again, oh, yeah, no. he's, he's throwing everything to the kitchen sink. And he I tried to that. do an armored approach. No dice. Oh, big crush counter. We'll take that now. And L, we'll get to see that loop pressure, that panted loop pressure, the medium punch sequences. What no execution just error. happened? And oh, again. no. Not even a punish. Oh, mate, he squandered that. Side swap here with the teleport. Let him cook, and he's not going to be reversal. He's going to take that and try to do a sweep activate. That. Hold on. It's going to trade that Hold by trade. Up. No, Hold on. Hold What trade? What trade? Let him cook. You called it out earlier. Mr. Crimson, hold up. Let him 
Cook. Oh, in dominating fashion, not just against Takamura, not against Valbuster as well, but NL. So that means he's on a 90 in the loser's bracket here from today into top 16 into the top eight. So yes, he will be advancing to the loser's quarterfinal to go up against, you're gonna love this one, Take a wild guess. It's got to be one of the birds, right? But you know what's up? <laughs> you know what happened the last time? He oh, had a bad matchup with Angry Bird before, and they're going to get a run back in a first of three this time round. And boy, I cannot wait. I'm salivating at the mouth. You can't see it just yet. I'm salivating at the mouth to commentate this next match. It's going to happen eventually, but let me remind you folks at home, just in case you had missed it, well, here's the bracket. Mena RD and Andy Walker starting things off 3 to 1 in favor of Mena RD. Down below, right after Zhen, 3 0 ing Angry Bird. It set us, set us up nicely for the loser side as well. Idom versus Vega Patch. That was a 3 0 in favor of Idom. NL versus Mr. Crimson. We just concluded that one. Mr. Crimson in dominating fashion. With a nice little barbecue towards the end. Look at the names in this bracket, Vicious. Not even just the top six remaining, the top eight in general. Fantastic representation amongst the players, the countries. The characters, it's all there. And like I said, we're edging closer and closer to getting that Grand Slam winner. And I cannot wait. I'm telling you, I'm super excited. I'm super choked to be here with you, man. I love this stuff. Yeah. But yes, you know what? We've got to continue with the action. But before we do that, isn't there something you want to talk to me about? There's something you were edging I'm towards, trying to get to your level in terms of statues and figurines, to be quite honest with you. Because I know he has an impressive collection. But I know just the one to add to it. No, I'm not. Let's take a look at what we have in store with everything going on at Capcom Cup 9. Of course, we're excited to announce a new figure from Max Factory, a highly detailed 1-6 scale figure of Chun-Li, based on an illustration by Street Fighter 2's co-creator and designer who brought Chun-Li to the world, Akiman. The design of the figure was originally requested by Momochihama Chozai Pharmacy in Japan, which was released in 2022, and finally coming to life thanks to Max Factory. This beautiful figure, just over 10 inches tall. That is, that is actually mad tall. The exquisite recreation of the original art piece with input from Akiman himself. Be sure to follow Max Factory for all the updates as to when and where you could find that exact statue. Indeed, but yes, what we're gonna do is, I need to freshen myself up, I need to get a drink of water. So we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna be advancing to lose this quarterfinals. See you in a couple of minutes. Space-time distortions. There's the puking out dinosaurs all over the planet. So, Vikitoa Island's been sealed up for three years, and Ibius won't own up to Leviathan's malfunction? Can you address the reports of exofighter patrols on the island? Reports of exofighter patrols are simply untrue. Ibius is committing all possible resources to the investigation. Exercise results logged. Sunsetting temporal instance. Come on back. Drinks on me. There are hundreds of exo fighters running around out there. Everyone's armed, and nobody knows what'll happen next. One minute, they could be helping you. The next minute, they're shooting you in the back. We need to keep fighting until we can figure out how to destroy the Vibe. It's trying to build stronger exosuits, so it's pulling any exo fire in their hole back in time to these bloody war games. Like it or not, the exosuits keep it is alive out there. But the more we use it, the more it helps Leviathan. Well, that's not an option. The wrong way or not. Value team members, prepare for dimensional integration in 10 minutes. You stay alive, man. Only you. If you give an AI like Leviathan the directive, improve our exosuits, it has to complete. 
It doesn't matter whether that takes a hundred tries, million, all for the perfect suit. More than that. But at least do me the courtesy of looking me in the face whilst you do it. Okay, pinky forefinger, back to middle, full wrist articulation. Then we do it in reverse. Begin. What the hell are you guys doing? It's a secret robot handshake. Good morning, Victoria. This is for my fellow hunters! Our champion here at Capcom Cup 9. Of course, a beautiful shot of the Santa Monica Pier. It's oh so lovely. But I gotta say, man, when you're over there, you're missing out all the action over here at the Avalon in the packed house. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all you. It's all for you to send it off. Put it all together for Street Fighter V. My name is Vicious here with Jammers. And I gotta say, man, we were talking about this. We were both talking about this, how exciting it is to see what's happening in the bracket. Mena RD getting ready to face off against Jen. Potential to get ourselves another Capcom Cup championship for Mena RD or a big upset coming in from Zhen, the LCQ winner, man of the week. Oh, actually going to be going into loser side. Excuse me. We hey, I'm getting excited. excited. Don't worry about that. And <laughs> Walker versus Idom. This is going to be kind of insane. Loki, kind of insane. So I'll tell you this, right? These two played a long set before. Total of 80 games, like Idom edging it out. These guys were discussing the matchup, sharing tech, sharing philosophies. And now it's for the big bucks, the big Benjamin Franklins, as he said. I've got to respect you guys as Dollar Bill out here. But it's going to be interesting because Ending Walker didn't really use the Psycho Upper against Mena. He was in the winner side, dropped to the loser side, and he's gone up against loser run, loser momentum based idol. How terrifying is that, Vicious? Uh, I mean, that's a lot. When you happen to gamble, with oh, he's going to do it. He's doing it. You were talking about this earlier. He's gonna do it. Okay, there's been a little bit of uh, back and forth, healthy debates regarding this one. Sure. Ending Walker thinks Ed slightly edges it. Other people will think on paper that Poison wins. He's gonna try out the Poison here. Uh, if Poison gets the life lead, she can win the matchup. But you also have to remember V Trigger 2. She hasn't really got any answers to deal with it. And also, I'm just gonna go with V Trigger 1. That's gonna be a punish there. He's gotta be careful using Lightning Crouching Fist because Standing Hard Kick does go over it and it could potentially crush counter her. But right now, I don't want to a very good start, but it's a considerable life lead here. Jump back on the side of the Snatcher. 
and he but just also, gonna be the amount of control that we were talking about against ending Walker. He's trying to go in with a bunch of these flickers, but still he gets served with a snatch out of the sky. This is it as well. Forward throw, two bars in the corner. He's gonna activate Ultra Snatch, a throw tech there from Iron Maiden, and he gets hit with the ending Walker tech with the throw to uh, flicker off the throw tech. And I love that, the standing like kick, get off of me. He can, yeah, he can heart rate now because he has to activate trigger. He can get another heart rate. Get in the gas, but he tried yeah. to jump away, ending Walker. Not looking too good here for him. This is a match we've been looking forward to since we've seen ending Walker. Yes. We wanted to see how he fared up against one of the best in the States. Oh, almost got the jumping fierce, but I don't just managed to work his Jeez. way out of there and how still put the conversion into Flicker. He didn't catch the whip like that in such a fashion. I gotta say, the roundhouse now. Oh boy, you thought you were gonna what? No! Getting a bit crazy out Two here. Two missed pushes. Was that hard kick throw there? Yeah, and again, hit by it. Item trying to press hard kick off the throw tick properly, but finish it beats that because it is six frame startup. What? Take that trade off. Item now. Give it a trigger out. No, sir. No pretender. EX. Oh, there we go. He's gonna get the medium avant line chased down. He's not gonna V shift. He's gonna hold this. He will firm this. To the block and reshift there. Trust me, ending walk is familiar in this match. There yeah. it is. You were talking about it earlier. You highlighted the psycho upper. When were we going to see it come into play? Well, in a pivotal moment, ending Walker clutching it out. The second round. Right, here we go. I, I also can't forget shouts to X Finesse as well, because I know I don't play him a fair bit in this matchup with both Poison and Laura. So these guys, <laughs> it's going to be the psychological battle. These guys are going to be slugging it out in each other's mind. All right, there you go. Has to, yeah, he has to block that. Very careful because Poison has to fight this matchup from the corner. Utilizing those heavies and the oh medium. Oh boy. Okay, crush down it. I just got four resources. He might have to spend super to get out. He might have to super to get out. We'll see. We'll find the hit first. A bunch of flickers coming down in. The stun is there. And ending Walker. Ending game number one. Pivotal fashion. That is so impressive. Flickers back to back. You were talking about the escape option that Idom had. That guy doesn't want anything to do with that pressure. But, but this is where you got to give credit. Sorry to cut you off. This is where you got to give credit to Ending Walker's precise spacing, right? That range where he's playing with Flicker, mediums don't work. You can't press medium kick. Heavies are too slow. And it's like, so when and light do? kick is out of range. Exactly. Uh, yeah, he, <laughs> he said I'm going straight to Laura. <laughs> and you were talking about it, you prefaced it earlier. I thought it was going to be a Laura out the gate because of the fact that Ed can close the gap and still suppress poisons normal so easily, I feel like. It's going to be interesting because in this matchup here, Ed builds meter significantly faster than Laura. Oh, so he's going to have access to, you know, EX Cycle Walker, right. conversion to EX Cycle Knuckle quicker than Item's going to be able to get uh, EX Thunderclap to apply his pressure. He's got the Sunset Wheel to help galvanize Ending Walker into making the wrong choice here, but we'll see how really deterred he is by that. There we go, forward throw, let's see. Yeah, Thunderclap, he's already scared. What an evasion. Totally fine with Ending Walker. And now the counter poke from the Cartoon Media Bunch does get a counter hit. The throw is tech, but it's still item in this corner. There is a slight interruption, but it's back to the flicker. How many oh, times can you count no. to three? Looking real Sesame Street-like. And One, again, two, again. peppering him with the flickers here. And once again, he's still got the boss. He's looking for that conversion, but item's going to get it into the split river follow-up. It's not going to be a command grab. When Ending Walker thought that, and Idom trying to make amends and look for that equalizer here. This just we thought could have went in Ending Walker's way with the amount of pressure that he's had already off to a great start. Idom though, the big rebuttal and the first strike here, round two, back throw. Here we go. All right, there we go. Well spaced, yeah, and good knowledge check there. He tried to steal some frames there, Idom, but the flicker kept him in place. And the whip punish into EX Psycho Knuckle, looking strong here for Ending Walker. Gets one throw. Can he build off another one? Yeah. And still with a side switch. Could he get the confirm into uh, Psycho Upper though? It's a big window. Can he activate Spark Show? That's the question. Here it comes. Good time. The back throw as well. Saw wake up standing like it, Andy Walker. Here we go. Psycho Upper's not coming. It's not coming yet. It might be after this next interaction if he gets it wrong. And he might have to do it now. He might have to do it now. There it is! <laughs> There you go, and the Psycho Upper, it grinded in the Oki to put him in a position to get that round and take it to a final round in this game two, Vicious. Talk to me. Take a close note as to when exactly he did that. I don't layered his offense with a standing light kick to catch it early on and bait Ending Walker. That wasn't the case. Ending Walker immediately waited for that. The nice pace and show. And there we go, Psycho Knuckle out of the corner. He's totally fine fighting from the corner the way he does. Flicker yet again, more chip damage. The spacing that comes is ridiculous. <laughs> and there he goes, ready in the corner from two conversions. And Idom has to make a choice if he's going to V-reversal out or utilize his projectile to gain that ground. I mean, he could do. Yeah, he's going to go for the back throw here. Positional advantage. 
Oh, he might be dead if he's not careful. He has to block it. He has to hold this. All of this. And there oh, it is. Oh, no. Oh, just snatch. He's trying to oh. reset. That was a bad he choice. It. He knew it. Idom taking specific notes against Ending Walker. How often have we seen a reset attempt in the previous games? What's interesting is he's been doing that. He caught Mena off guard with that. He caught NL off guard with that. But the thing is, like, you can do a conversion with the Ultra Snatcher, put the mid screen and still get the momentum from that. So the fact that he's been a bit too audacious, a bit too greedy in those scenarios there is what got killed and made Idom equalize there. Can we talk about the timing and understanding of when his opponent wants to move? Ending Walker has had so many solid confirms off the low medium kick that led to this exact position, but Idom can very comfortable with that. Dude. He'll take a couple bits of damage. He's having such a joyous time playing at this level here. He's such an innocent kid. Then you see Idom as stern face as ever, head tilted at a certain degree. But I gotta say, ending Walker now. Watch out for that throw. No, sir. He's looking for a frame trap. Right, that's dead. That will be dead. Psycho upper closing it out from that combo. Again, anyone trapped in the corner, you are another victim on ending Walker's list. He's got the meter deficit though, but Idom really has to force something to happen. He might have to do EX Thunderclap or something. There it is. Oh, sad face. That's got an awkward hurt box, by the way. We use that as a foot six. Yeah. Yeah, they all already. He's trying to fish for it. Idom, he was ready for a whiff punish just in case. That was ambiguous, but good block on the reset there. Ooh. Back throw again. He's got the two bars and he's edging Idom close to the corner. Right, if you get out of there, you need a V reversal, mate. I don't think he's going to let you out of there earnestly. Oh, on the other side. He's looking at the side switch regardless. An immediate tech. Psycho up for EX, pass the Thunderclap, another break from Idom, low fourth. Is he gonna go for the side switch? He gets it off of the EX elbow. He's gonna wait for Ultra Snatcher. He's got a choice to make it. Ending Walker, can he get a low? Or is he just gonna wait? He's gonna get stunned instead. Building as much meter as possible as you have to. Idom now going into it. Yes, he Jeff. probably bought that bolt there, or that bolt charge with a dash. That's probably why he did a delayed jab into Flicker, because he's looking for a clean activation. He doesn't want to make it too risky and give up that one time freeze guess. He wants to get that there, but if he can get one, can play, yeah, one conversion into Flicker, he can do punches. a couple of throws. They're so clean and so consistent. The big interruption from Idom, side switch, uh, sunset wheel. It's one. Still Jesus. Waiting. There's a back throw. Covered the ground as well. And again, I, uh, ending Walker's mental state game is fantastic. His dashes are pretty much successful Ooh. most of the time. And down below yet again, Idom still stern with the defense. Crouch blocking, but this sets him up for a lot of pressure. Forward throw. What comes it's after? Fine. Crouching. Great tie and an interruption with the X Bolt Charge with the armor. Here comes Fox Show and ending Walker. Oh my god! It. Here he comes. Activate for the party. Forward throw. What the right command grabs under clap. The X Cycle Upper. It's gonna be the round. That will be the round. That's gonna be it. He's got CA as well. Clear it safe. Close it out. Takes the advantage here in the set. 2 1. Cat Cup 2019 champion trying to get rid of the young progeny here in his first ever Cat Cup. Wow. He can hear that. I know he can hear that through that headset. That's so intimidating. I know he can hear that. I don't ever want to be in that position, to be quite honest with you, because that is so intimidating. But Ending Walker, nerves of steel. Can Idol make that loser's run? He did at EVO 2022. I wonder. He's getting closer to it. He's becoming more of a reality here. Sunset wheel again. He's been taking those, uh, he's been handing the sunset wheels well. He's been taking oh. the damage. Hasn't really been trying to over exert oh, we, we have V-Skill too. Yeah, he does. The Psycho Swing gives him those extensions. It won't really punch through the Thunderclap. But I don't, I don't really space as well. Very accurate right, spacing. Right. Oh, I thought a Sunset Wheel was coming. Oh, and that's going to be an activation. Fine. He had to do that. All right, there you go. Ultra Snatch with the air version. Here comes the Guard Break. Activation off the medium kick, Thunderclap, EX version, now down below, and he still catches Ending Walker with the reset. Watch yeah, out, the Psycho Upper! He double. does it again! Watch out Ultra for the throw, Snatcher! Wait a minute! Throw. Wait a minute! He uses the armor, but it doesn't matter! The elbow for Idom, look at that match point! I actually think Idom did that bolt charge to counter the flicker after the throw take. He's been paying attention, so this is where he brings out the tools. And I tell you what, if Ending Walker has anything left in the tank, he needs to bring it out Ooh. now. A huge start. EX Psycho Knuckle bringing him to the corner. Idom trying to recreate that space. That's oh, huge. Okay, punish sweep. On the sweep. Slight miscalculation there. And again, he is going to be, yeah, he's going to be panicking. On defense, he'll panic. This is lot potentially last round here. Oh my god. Back throw. All right. Medi elbow miss. Yeah, me, it's hard to get the timing right, especially to make it zero on block there. Gonna get the conversion. Doesn't have the bar. Oh. Here we go. Right, if you guess wrong after this, you're done. If you guess wrong after this, you are done. And he guesses correctly. He's got the meat. Oh trigger. no! The it's gonna be confirmed. It's a critical art. The back, the back throw. throw. He's still got another chance. Sunset wheel. Here comes He's got an activation. Hang on a minute, Vicious. Ultra Snatcher, what happens? 
checks the corner. He gets the knockdown. He really needs this. God breaks. Can he get another throw in there? The stagger. Oh no, the critical art's gonna rebuild for Idom. God break. Watch out now. And there's the punish. He hasn't got any V trigger left. And that was a throw bait. And he gets hit with the bomb charge for the game. Woo! The definition of clutch. Except very own Idom eliminating the young prodigy, ending Walker. And what a time to bring out the EX Bolt Charge option. Pulse Throw Tech trapped in the corner. He knew it. Uh, uh, ending Walker had to overextend to just get an iota of a chance to bring himself back into the dogfight. But he took that chance. He could afford that game because of his beneficial situation. He tried to start things out with a poison. Not too bad, but it might be a little bit rusty, especially in environments like this where Laura sure. has been bringing the game, bringing the heat for that momentum to ride into the loser's bracket vicious. And we saw exactly how difficult it was. Once you're unable to control the strategy that you wanted, playing within the mid-range game, once Ending Walker was in Idom's face, just as this example, it was lights out thanks to the flicker momentum. But then that switch up to Laura, the tried and true. What set him apart from the rest of them. We saw that kind of barrage, that offense from the thunderclaps the perfect setups going into it, and also just the big conversions that he needed to. Yeah, look, he was getting all the successful conversions before, right? But this is it. you got to give credit to items, defensive choices, just the defense in general, fighting from the corner. He reminds me of Dominion in SF4. Just, he was happy to fight from the corner. Didn't like the situation, but if it, uh, again, you wouldn't make mistakes running away because there's nowhere to run away to, but we can turn things He's around. And then, yeah, just be pivotal and get that game-changing moment. And then we saw that time and time again. One or two things, if I had to nitpick, one or two things I disagree with on ending Walker's end was resets to try and steal the position. That was one time. He immediately advantage. cut back on doing that as soon as that option had failed him. And now, ending Walker, I got to say, man, the way that he pivots his strategy against certain players yeah. has been at an astronomical level that I can't comprehend. I can only watch and call it, but man, I'm looking forward to seeing him in the future of Street Fighter because he is the shining light, I feel like, for the new generation. Dude, his progress has been like increasing by leaps and bounds, and this is only the start. His, this is his, what, third event? Third offline? offline event. His third offline event. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not making that number up. He is 16, his third offline event at Capcom Cup, yo. But you know what? Going bowing out at fifth place, it's not a bad shout. Again, he went third at his first event, first at his second, fifth place here. And one of the hardest events to do it at. Uh, you know, I'd be super proud, and I hope his parents are super proud of him as well. Hopefully, we get to see the young prodigy playing in Street Fighter 6 yeah, in full force. I gotta ask, man, for the crowd down below, we gotta give it up one more time for Ending Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, that is such an impressive run. He's been such an inspiration to even guys like us, players down below. As soon as he made his eyes on, or sorry, uh, he made himself known onto the scene, all eyes were on him. And I'm so glad that he got to fulfill what he needed to do and set his own mark in FGC history. Well, as we ruminate and still continue to look back on that set, we got to line up for this next match here. We'll put the graphic on screen for you very shortly for this next juicy head to head. It's a run back. Oh, and funnily boy. enough, I was doing this for Steve. Shout out to Tasty Steve. I'm always here when this run back happens. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm always here. <laughs> we've, we've gone, we've broken down on it on stream ourselves, but this is the one. I would love for you to take the wheel between Angry Bird and Mr. Crimson to let the people know at home what the lore is really like. So, the last time these guys played was in the group stage of the death bracket of Group F. That was 2-1, I believe, to Angry Bird. I spoke to Mr. Crimson afterwards. I said, so that tech you introduced, what was it? He said it was a hard read. I have to know that, but it loses to other options as well. Angry Bird plays this matchup perfectly. Mm -hmm. And again, Big Bird also played it perfectly as well when he played this matchup with Mr. Crimson. Rashid is an absolute terror. He, he still gets spoken about in high regard, but not in your top fives. He's a top 10, top not in top sure, five. Yeah. But now Angry Bird's come off the loss of Zen. That was a pretty much a decimation. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want that, he wants to make amends. And what way to rekindle that flame right. of motivation yeah. is by Mr. Crimson, who's on a good run in the loser's bracket as well, by the way. You're not kidding, you are not kidding. He has had a very, very big run. 3-0, 3-1, 3-0 again. Can he repeat those results? Well, right. he's got the big angry bird on his team. I gotta say, this is so difficult to get out of. Very meaty slide, or sorry, meaty drill. Okay, from Angry Bird activates yet, yeah, knows the interruption, goes for the EX spinning mix, the slowest start, but still invincible from frame one. Can he get the grab? Not quite. And here it is. This is where the matchup is played. Right in the corner. He looks for the airborne eagle spike. The wall jump is coming. And he jumped away. 
so check. smart about that, having that jump away, not committing to any big option outside, just jump round out. And look at that, Eagle Spike to set it off. Round one, going to Angry Bird. This is the biggest test for Mr. Crimson right now. If he can get past this, boy are his chances strong. And another run back will happen as well if he wins this. Air to air, gets the floating stage as well. That's gonna be punished. That should have been punished, I think, by a light, maybe. I could be wrong. Yeah, yes. spinning Mixer to intercept the drill all the way down, but it's still... Mr. Crimson, I feel like Angry Bird could have had a little bit of a sequence there in his favor. Gets the punish. Uh, execution area there for Mr. Crimson, so he gets hit with a combo of an Eagle, Airborne Eagle Spike. Here he comes. The turn, the drill, so deep to so allow Mr. Crimson to pursue offense on the side switch now. Angry Bird boxing his corner. Wow. Yes, Eagle Spike, why not? What a punish. I mean, he wanted to get out of the corner, but damn, oh. I'll take it. His Eagle Spike uses in this match, that's dead. Heavy Spin and Mixer closer out. Counter hit conversion, nice and clean from Dude. Angry Bird. Whether it's part of a combo extension or just in neutral to like close the gap or get out, his Eagle Spike uses is the main thing people got to be looking out for at home. And like I said, Mr. Crimson, he doesn't want to be put in the corner, but because Angry Bird's adding to that mental stack of just throwing out the Eagle Spikes, right? Now you just can't throw out your limbs haphazardly. There has Absolutely to be not. well timed, wait a couple of seconds, maybe even float a little bit, and then try and teleport. Yeah, he knows it as well. He has to readjust his facing. See Angry Bird moving back and forth for that big opening. Forward throw now. Gash up. The situation the roundhouse getting past the crouching heavy punch. So smart and calculated. That's stunned. That's stunned, vicious. What happens now? Set up. He's gonna knock him down. He's gonna go off the wall again. He will do it. There you go. Wall jump. Bam. Block from Mr. Crimson. Do it again. The slide. Oh, Perfectly nice. timed. Getting this big knockdown. So pivotal for the momentum. Trigger on deck for Mr. Crimson, but he needs it off of a hit. He doesn't want to do it off the slide. Yeah, he needs all right, he needs Angry Bird to activate first, but if he gets his wrong for miss, he's dead. And he good block on a jump, medium kick cross up. Slides out. Oh, he has to do it. That's totally fine because again the trigger is active. He's dead. Oh. He missed it! Oh, oh my god, he's so in is zip lining around the screen. No tick throw yet. He can't overhead him either. Oh! And he gets the crouch and light kick to close out the round. Mr. Crimson is getting a little bit antsy here, but he has to play a hundred times faster than what he's usually comfortable with, Vicious. I mean, he's doing that right now. He's trying to do that right now. Dude, the mental damage Angry Bird's inflicting right now is tremendous. Get out. Back medium punch. Medium punch for the anti-air. Forward throw. Mr. Crimson gashes up. Still the trade-off for Angry Bird. Get him out of here. But still, trying to get a whirlwind shot. Trying to get some stuff out of the corner. But no, the drill is in the hopper. Man, this is so tough for Mr. Crimson to keep Angry Bird locked in. Oh, wow. What a throw take. That's the first time he's tried to throw him in a situation. So that was a very brazen decision there from Crimson. But it worked out. Throw again. Can he sneak in another one before he jumps off the wall? They're fighting a mile a minute here, Jammers. They got to say Mr. Crimson still needs to get a big confirmed possibly into critical error. But that's not going to be the case here. Oh, he drill oh, kicked the Eagle Spike. Now I know what better. Dive kick's better. <laughs> and hello, he did go into the super. You really thought that was a question, Jammers? Maybe it was. I don't know about all that. There's a question in my mind. He's <laughs> never said it out loud. Anyway, let's see if Mr. Crimson can equalize here. Angry Bird still playing this matchup. Super aggressive. Hyper aggressive, I should say. Take no attempt. A standing light kick. To deter Angry Bird from moving forward. But those jump, those roundhouses are still coming through. B shift break. What happens now? Again, off yeah, to the wall. Yeah, he's he's tempting the anti airs. He's looking for it. Trying to find the discipline against Mr. Crimson <laughs> to break. Dude, he is panicking, but he's been so resilient on defense. What a defensive sequence here from Mr. Crimson. He's still not biting. Jesus, the slide went the other way. Angry Bird Dude. didn't get the knockdown. Back, medium punch, still anti-airing against the juggle. What an improvised conversion there into the slide. And again, drill Ugh. kick into the grab. He's got a super here. So if Angry Bird jumps, he could lose the game. And he's oh, going to lose it here. Man. Uh, uh, even if that didn't kill, well, guess what? We still had medium punch to follow through. Mr. Crimson tying it all up. And I got to say, man, Angry Bird's momentum, his speed in general, is so hard to keep up with. Mr. Crimson is taking to the skies a lot more often than not in other games. Discipline is the word for Mr. Crimson right now, because I know a lot of people that would V-shift out of panic, they press buttons out of panic, they probably do the incorrect oh. teleport out of panic. But he is being resilient right now, taking the fight to Angry Bird. He's making him Ooh. think about that offense. Such a sharp angle, barely missing Try the anti-air, and now it's Angry Bird he off the wall again. Blocks him incorrectly, takes the grab, and he can't get overhead here. Oh! And he got stunned by the airborne eagle spike. Goes enough meter as well. One more guess. What's it gonna be? Tick throw? Or he's gonna leave it? Anvil, and he had a hard read. That is a hard read. We talked about that before. That's actually how we got a big conversion off of Angry Bird in group stage. Eagle spike. A storm is coming indeed, and he goes right in his face with the amplifier, the eagle spike. 
to take the lead in this round here. Meteor advantage with Mr. Crimson. Oh what my god, punish. the whiff punish from three four to the screen. You gotta be kidding me. Angry Bird now. Oh boy, the crush counter, I like that. He's still Mr. Ejected. Crimson is still swinging, he is scared. He can't be deterred by that crush counter alone. He has to block again, take the grab. He might have to take another one if he's not careful. Oh wow. Mixer again, I can't keep up with this. The and cross he's up, he's how dead. long? How often has he jumped off of the wall? How long has he conditioned Mr. Crimson to be susceptible to that cross up? But that's the matchup. And again, the one time he picked back hard punch, the yoga anvil, it worked. But he said, if I guess incorrectly, it loses to cross up jump medium kick. It loses to an empty jump. So you really, yeah, look, he's ruminating. He really has to think about this. He can't change character. He's doing fine here, but the problem is, it's you can't keep Rashid away from the corner. You cannot do that. It's physically, it's impossible. Nothing's impossible, Chambers. Did you say that? <laughs> I believe it. All right, punish there. Oh, okay. Not quite. A bit too far. Oh. Throw again. Throws out that hard kick. Malicious oh. intent. Yeah, Angry Birds really trying to throw everything to the kitchen sink. Majority of it have come from heavy normals, too. Mr. Crimson just have, having the right speed majority of the time. And here's the stun. Not going to be enough damage Build quite yet. He just built that bar. Am I lying to you? Yeah, no, that's it. He's going to hold this. He's going to have to activate. Hard kick or something. No, get out the corner. Yep. Out of there. He oh. tried to anti air. That might be go. dicey. Here we go. Universal. Can he get one light kick or something? He tried to crouch in light kick, but the light kick closed it out. Anyway, the standing version this time round. Substantial lead was able to maintain it and close out that round. Angry Bird. Wow. Ooh. Okay. He jumped. Uh, did Airborne Eagles fight once again at the start? Range EX spinning mixer. No fear in Angry Bird's heart. Forward throw. He doesn't want Crimson doing the dive kick oh. to him. Another anvil, but no crush counter. It barely touched. Crush oh, counter. speaking of. It's a crush counter from Angry Bird off of the roundhouse. He almost got Mr. Crimson pressing a button. Oh, oh there's a hard read. That was a hard read. Hang on a minute. He's going to be stunned. Please don't spin a mixer. Please, for the love of God, don't do it. <laughs> he would have dead if he did. That's for sure. He tried to do it there, I think. The snipe is there as he cooked up. It's the high and low mix. We actually haven't seen that option since he's been playing in top 16. I don't think I've seen oh, that once. Oh, he loves it. He loves it. He wants that exuberant crowd to make the noise. And he did the exact same thing at Evo. He did the exact That's same right. thing. Evo. Oh. I know his reign yeah. came to a very short end because I don't close it out in the, in the top eight loser side round one. But he loves this stuff when he gets the crowd behind him. Oh, block. That's going to be a punish. Yeah, just. He had the oh. micro and the yoga flame still missed. Good trade there in benefit of Angry Bird. And here comes the wall pressure. Yeah. Anvil into Crouching Heavy Punch. Reset to apply pressure. He didn't want the knockdown. He wanted to force a little bit of an awkward situation for Angry Bird. Angry Bird again. Big read. Yeah, Angry Bird gets you predictable. Dead. Angry Bird is getting extremely predictable oh. right now. He might have to start dashing in or something. The big crowd buff amplifying Mr. Crimson's gameplay. Oh, yeah. We'll see if he can close it out. Max point. The echo is reverberating around. Anvil. The oh, Avalon here. Yeah, and he got the trade up. The hard kick will take it. But again, firing on all cylinders is Angry Bird. Gets her back throw. Where's the yoga fire? Doesn't even need to do it. All right, the reversal's out of there. He's got to be careful with the jump. He's got super. He has got the CA oh. for the jump. This is huge. Oh, oh my god, that's going to be critical art. Again, he's too close. He has to do the well one shot pressure. There it is. He got him. He get a throw here, though. The oh, cross up is there. Wow. And the stun. We're tying it all up. We're going to a final, final game. Here we go, Angry Bird and Mr. Crimson all tied up. Now let me find out if Crimson makes an executive decision and cancels into CA early to get that damage, but he goes to EX Yoga Fire first. Jumps in, delay, and Interruption against the EX Whirlwind shot. EX Eagle Spike instead. Angry Bird spending all the meter forward throw. This is the momentum he needed. Roundhouse punish. does get a slight punish. It's a tenuous punish, but we'll take it. Gonna get the Oki as well. Spinning Mix is not available yet. Far away, Oy. nail assault straight to the corner. Double nail assault in the combo here. I think he tried to Gale, but it didn't work. Oh, he tried to Eagle Spike. Big damage here. Absolutely right. tried to Eagle Spike. He might have to do Gale pressure. Let's see. Gale. Oh, no, not the X spinning mixer. Hang on a minute. He does the Haboob into the V break. He's got one more Haboob available, but guess for the game. The Eagle Spike. That's not going to be punished. It's going to be here. He can't Gale. He cannot Gale. He has the V break. And the light kick takes it for Mr. Crimson. Progressing through the loser's bracket, his toughness.
the set yet, and he passes deeper in the bracket. And I'll tell you what, he has to bring it back in a 2-1 defeat in the group stages from Group F. He turns it around with that extended set with a three out of five there against Angie Bird. Firing on all cylinders, he was able to emerge yeah. victorious, Vicious. I love the sportsmanship coming from Angie Bird as well. You know it means a lot to him, win or lose. He still gets to see one of his friends advance even further into the most prestigious Street Fighter tournament we could ever ask for. Again, I love Angry Bird and Mr. Crimson and the way they throw it all out there on the table. Yo, give it up one more time from a man, Angry Bird. Hold your head up high, man. You had quite the career and inspiration to a lot of us players, commentators, and fans alike, man. So, because Angry Bird won their last encounter, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep it consistent. You just got to slightly tweak how you take Mr. Crimson to the corner. But that's where the matchup plays. That's where the real test happens for Mr. Crimson. And he looked super confident as the games went by. We started to see Yoga Anvil in abundance. He was working with that here. He did get mixed up a fair bit, but he kept composed. He kept that resolute defense up and ready. And this is what was just fantastic to see. And even though, like, Angry Bird was just getting in, it wasn't, you know, huge chunk, the 30, 40% damage combos. Right, right. It was just death by a thousand cuts and still kept him in this dogfight. So I really got to say, I was impressed by his mental resilience in those last few games there, Vicious. We talked about that resilience. It led him to a final moment where he actually tied it up. We see Mr. Crimson getting the big conversions that he needed and getting the crowd behind him as well. But it was Angry Bird's tenacity in this corner, right? Yes. Consistently making Mr. Crimson guessing. Again, you talked about it, death by a thousand cuts. But I'll tell you what, some of these cuts are pretty big when it comes to Rashid, but closing it out, I got to say, too, this moment, I feel like, for Mr. Crimson, when he turned it all around and tied it up, he started to regain his confidence and force Angry Bird into really awkward scenarios in being overzealous with his offense. We saw him rushing down in spots where he wasn't ready to convert or even wasn't in the right spacing. That is correct, indeed, and I, I love the use of V-Trigger as well, but Angry Bird is not deterred. I like that these guys took it down to the wire, and he loves hyping up the crowd. He loves how exuberant they can get. He loves the supporters, not just here, but the guys at home. Shout out to the French contingent at home. They must be staying awake for this, because he's still in this, right? And as you can see there, as I was alluding to before, good block on the spinning mixer for a full punish, because I tell you what, so many people would have cracked on the pressure, right. just because of Angry Bird's, you know, over determination that overzealousness that actually works in his favor in that scenario. And then again, with that Gale pressure, that looked unfortunate though, because I, I like the effort or the attempt to try and punish a limb Absolutely. with the EX Evil Spike. But I tell you what, this is going to be interesting, right? When, when we move on to the next match, we're going back to the winner's side. But let me tell you something. The next match here, both these players started in losers round one, top 16, and they have been winning up until this point. Ooh, the next boy. match in the losers semi-final is Idom going up against Crimson. They had that encounter at last year's EVO 2022 losers round one, top eight. The run back is coming, same format, different platform. And you're looking at very similar win records. Just to break it down for you, Idom versus Bugera, 3-1. Idom versus VX Bow, 3 2. That was in the top 16. Then Idom Vega Pass, 3 0. Idom Ending Walker, 3 1. Look at the exact record that Mr. Crimson had on the way over as well. Look at this. This is a juicy bracket for you, but now four players remain. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? It's already that time already. It's that it's top time, four. Baby. And look, these are some of the hardest hitters, the strongest contenders. And we've had quite the bloodbath in the top 16 dishes, but only one person can emerge victorious. We're going to find out there's a couple of storylines here. A couple of storylines. Double champion in Mena RD. That's right. Double champion in Idol, potentially. Zen, LCQ run. What more can you say about him? Building that momentum. And Mr. Crimson being the first French player to win the CatCon Cup. There's a lot of storylines to really build in regards to everything that's come together thus far. And you couldn't ask for a better story, really, when it comes to the world of Street Fighter. And we get to expand that in another version of Street Fighter with Street Fighter Duel. And I feel like we have something to tell you all. Oh? For the first time ever, we actually have a release date. Okay. Brand new information coming in from Street Fighter Duel, the release oh. date of the newest game in the franchise and our sponsor for this event, Street Fighter Duel has arrived. Street Fighter Duel will be available for download on the App Store and Google Play starting February 28th. It's about time. 
Yeah, make some noise, ladies and gents. It's coming out February 28th. I know you guys have been waiting for so long, but it's going to be finally here. You guys can game on a Street Fighter duel while watching Street Fighter on Twitch.tv forward slash Capcom Fires. It's going to be a juicy one, and you can live and breathe Street Fighter as if you've already been doing it already. That's how we're even here in the first place, right? That's why we're even here in the first place. Again, be sure to register now to get all of the bonuses unlocked, as well as the plethora of characters that already come into the game. 40 plus characters, I think. They're all going to take down Shadowloo together. Is that what's going to happen? Maybe they are. Maybe we will. Who knows? But I tell you what, we need to get a battle plan in place first. Okay. But to do that, I need a five minute break. And when we come back, we're going to come back with our final four players here at CatCon Cup. I need to do this one time. I need to do this one time. Let's go, everybody. Top four after this break. You don't want to miss it. When we return, it's showtime, baby, here at Capcom Cup 9. We'll see you in a bit. Time to Time distortions. There's the puking out dinosaurs all over the planet. So, Picatoa Island's been sealed up for three years, and Ibius won't own up to Leviathan's malfunction? Can you address the reports of Exo Fighter patrols on the island? Reports of Exo Fighter patrols are simply untrue. Ibius is committing all possible resources to the investigation. Exercise results locked. Sunsetting temporal instance. Come on back. Drinks on me. There are hundreds of exo fighters running around out there. Everyone's armed, and nobody knows what'll happen next. One minute, they could be helping you. The next minute, they're shooting you in the back. You need to keep fighting until we can figure out how to destroy the vine. It's trying to build stronger exosuits, so it's pulling any exo fire in their home back in time to these bloody war games. Like it or not, the exosuits keep it is alive out there. But the more we use it, the more it helps Leviathan. Well, that's not an option. One way or another. Value team members, prepare for dimensional integration in 10 minutes. You stay alive, man. Only you. If you give an AI like Leviathan the directive, improve our exosuits, it has to complete. It doesn't matter whether that takes a hundred tries, a million, all for the perfect suit. More than that. At least do me the courtesy of looking in the face while okay. she do it. So we read it all, okay? We got it. And then we'll probably do some fun to look around on the way out of the next break. Okay. When you guys okay. Pinky the... full finger. Back Yo, to middle. Back full wrist articulation. Then we do it in reverse. And what the hell are you guys doing? It's a okay. secret okay. robot handshake. Might check one, two. Hey! Just give me the mic.
time. Hollywood, baby. And it is come to the final four. David, super exciting times ahead. We have some exciting players here in this tournament. This is what we all boil down to, Capcom Cup. And I'm joined another by none other than Ultra David, myself, f -word here on the ones and twos, and so many juicy matches to get through. It's been crazy so far. Could it, it possibly get better? I think it could, and I think it's going to do exactly that because this top four is extremely loaded. We have players from different parts of the world. We got different characters. We got different play styles. We got runbacks, big runbacks. We also have players who are on the come up who we haven't seen in this situation before, but we also have folks who have very much been here before. So yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic top four. It's, it's just been incredible so far. You can't call it. There's been some amazing standout performances, but as you mentioned, players we haven't seen before, and needless to say, polar opposites in that regard. We oh, have yeah. a former Capcom Cup champion playing a plethora of characters, whipping out the birdie, representing the Dominican Republic and the opinion of many people here, the USA in Mena RD, going up against Zen, the 19-year-old from China, who's never played in an offline event of this, mag this magnitude ever before. And he is on, I believe, a 15-game win streak since the LCQ. He hasn't lost a single set since the LCQ. He won that from winners. He went into the group stages of the, of the Capcom Cup, won that 5-0. He is sitting winner's side here. Have you ever heard a story like this, David? It's unbelievable. The closest thing that I can think of is Nemo's classic run from the LCQ into deep Capcom Cup years ago. But of course, everybody knew who Nemo was at that course, time. That yeah. was not a fresh face. Whereas Zen here, he has been playing for a while. He has been around. We, it's not like we hadn't heard the name, but did we expect him not only to win the LCQ, Whew. no, did we expect him then to also make top four and, in fact, winner's finals of Capcom Cup? I think there were very few people who did expect that. But I will tell you this. At the beginning of today, when we were talking about who we think is going to win this thing, you know, a bunch of us commentators talked about it. We all had our various thoughts. Two did, in fact, pick Zen to win the whole thing. Yep, yep. I'm we, done doubting Zen. I, I, I've been doubting Zen. I'm like, you know, he's had a great oh, run. Let's go ahead now. At this point, it's got to be it, over. Dude, his o it's his offense. It's his offense. His, his defense, offense. David, he always stays alive. Well, he always stays alive. I mean, really what it is is that he makes decisions that very few other people are making. He makes a, a different kind of decision. For him, everything's on the table. For a lot of people, you know, you take things off the table because they're a little zany, but not for him. Everything's there, and so your typical reactions, your typical playbooks aren't going to be the same. That said, we're talking a lot about him. Mena RD as we come into the winner's finals here. A former Capcom Cup champ. He's killing it versus everybody today. He's starting very strong. He's looking like the champion form Mena. We saw take that cup. He's looking to close this first round out, and it is a very solid start. The crowd goes wild. Oh, execution error. Doesn't matter. When it's your day, it's your day, David. Perfect on the clock. When in doubt, jump it out. Mena RD off to a flying start here against him. What a tone to set right away. You're talking up Zen's defense, and I think with rightly so, but right there, it got exposed big time. Okay, here's the offense now. Zen in, Jeez. deleted right away. Get out of here. We saw the same from Angry Bird, whipping a DP out on the first opportunity, but Zen blocked that one. Is he finally going to guess wrong a few times? That is the question. Right now, Mena RD doesn't even want any part of that. He would much rather hold on to range here. Oh, and his first time, he presses the button. That forward fierce gets whipped, punished by Zen. He's in. Tick row. Has the corner here. Wake up, medium, and the perfectly timed jump from Mena. Gets the corner carry and the execution with damage. Pressure comes. Activates. And Zen hanging out. Caught in the corner. Nice, gets rid of that. EX Cycle Blast straight away. Still a little bit Looks of that left. Catches him trying to approach. He's still alive. That's dash. Is this it? Patience. Down oh, ball! Oh, yeah, it was too good. And Mena are deep with, I must say, a very convincing game one day. It's a fantastic round start for him. One. Obviously, that round one, great. But then in the second round, when it was a little bit closer, fought, he still is excellent. So Zen hit confirming there on the Fierce, we've seen a couple of times so far. With punish, opportunity, nothing though. Oh, wow. Oh, there you have it. Ready for the Bison Tings, side switch. And I look so ready to take this thing. Good hit. Trolling stuff! With. Still here. He's ready for everything! Oh my goodness, Mender is playing out of his mind right now. Zen needs to slow this momentum down somehow. Here's one way to do that. Pressure in the corner. He was worried about DP. It was a delayed throw. He was right about it. The bomb. The bomb! Activates. Oh, where is he? That should be a dead loop. 
didn't even need the rest of the V trigger Psycho Crush. And Zen gets his first round in this set. I mean, if history goes by anything, we know this kid plays heavy on momentum. Finally gets the whiff punish on the on the projectile. I mean, he whiff punish that? What a yeah, genius! Man, Come on. Come he on. plays match up so well. Another whiff punish. Man, has got to be careful here. Again, into the offense. He's always he's been doing something. Time, it's been perfect, David. Trying it out, plus frame still. Trying to back dash, got reset in the air. He's still here. Big plus frame. Oh my goodness, man, that's so good. He's been studying the defense of Zen, and he gives up the feature trigger. No! Oh, the Everything's denied! Punishes with the throw on Barrett. And again, another V reversal. Zen just wants to get his game going, but Mena won't let him. It's been a great life up on Mena's side, but he still feels like he's in control. Not for long, it's Zen in. Mena blocks it up. Back to the more comfortable range where he can zone, where he's not at risk of that Zen offense. Big jump in. That's dead. That should be a dead loop. Terrible fireball there from Mena. And despite a very convincing game one, it is Zen doing what he has done this entire week and getting himself on the winner's board. What a piece, David. He just continues to look great. Yeah, no doubt. Round one. When we saw him in previous, uh, well, really throughout his 3 0 and his 3 1 so far in this top 16, even when he has dropped the game, he still looked very strong the rest of the set. A little bit late this time. Oh, Cash is impressing buttons. Men are off to another flying start. The speed at which he plays that when he gets going. Oh my goodness, it could be another perfect here. Has to guess right. He checked it. Still in danger. Oh, he wanted that V trigger. He didn't get up to the tracks, mate. It's big damage it coming from Men. Will it be enough? No, he's going to save the meter. Within grab death, though. Chose to keep him and alive. Still here. Another perfect. We've had three games. We've had two perfects. He is doing such a good job of locking this kid down. I mean, loads of people have really struggled to close out the rounds. Oh, wow, that's a strange choice there for Mena. Went for the turn punch, didn't, make, didn't work out. It's cross count by the side quest. He's in the corner now, David. No. Down forward, Fierce may be worried about the V-shift. Instead, Mena dashes in and takes the turn. It's his corner. He gets dashed, yes. Oh, no confirm. Oh, that, that caught him off guard. Went behind this time. Goes for the meat. He jumps out of there straight away. What a choice for Mena. Yeah, and into nothing. He just was very safe about it. I love that escape. Yeah, aware that uh, Zen likes to overextend on those plus frames a little bit. Oh, he was thinking back to when he threw the fireball and got jumped on, but instead he gets got anyway. Here we go. Let's do it. What a choice. He's still in this round. Just needs one opening. And you know he gets the corner from that big whiff, not punished. He is so much more cautious about Surprise it. Surprise slide. Yeah, the block in front was there for Shen. Activation. Now. Gets caught, tried to do a reversal. Take command grab. We were talking about this downstairs, yes, David. Yes. I think I saw this kid miss one command grab the entire week. I mean, Final he's got to miss some more than this. I mean, it's getting ridiculous. What I love about that is that the safe option would be regular grab, but he's not cool with that. He wants to get the kill. He's playing to win very much, not to lose. Right, he's here in this third game. Cool, trying to dash it. Confirms off that crouch medium. He has managed to corner Mena RD, but every time he's got him there, oh, missed it. So it's another chance for Zen. Him low. He's got the cage going. Hey, bro, stun racking up here. What a V shift, what a time, what a choice. Doesn't get a side switch though. Interrupted. It's Shen. Will there be anything here? Yes. Wow. Mena. Oh, D. In a huge pivotal swing game, he's got the hit. It's not enough. And Shen in plus frames there. Again, the redux of the previous game. We saw that before on a replay, and now it's two Wait. games to one. Mena RD again. A huge swing there to be up or down Round two to one. one. Gigantic difference. So we're right back in. That wake up CA. What a choice. And he's missing stuff. He's not playing perfect, but he's playing incredibly well. Maybe the best he's looked all week, I must say. Mena RD. Yeah, and he has looked great before. So he for him to be at this be level here, exactly the right time. Yeah, that's a knockdown. Straight away. Oh, my towards heavy is stronger and faster than yours. Gets the corner switch as well. Nice jab check there into the EX. Neutral jumping on wake up. He cannot get anything going. He's keeping it incredibly tight. We've seen Zen get that like kick out in a lot of strings. It's not going to be the case here at the moment. Nice stand up into the stand medium to get an opening. Side switch. Yep, that's his preference there. Command grab as well. The trigger's gone, but he's in. Well tagged. Oh, that's going to hurt. Pop that's it. Coming. Can Zen close this out? He needs one more. It's not stunned yet. Oh, we backdashed. Oh my goodness, it what was the a wrong call choice. Out. And Mena RD is at match point wow. to get into grand finals on winner's side. He's been so good at guessing right. What a neutral jump. 
checks the dash though. Man, RD looks incredible right now. I don't know what Zen's got to do to get any kind of momentum going. It's the first time we've seen him in any real adversity in a while. No, it feels like when he plays offense, it gets neutralized right away. And when he's on defense, he's stuck there for what feels like an eternity. Okay, he just wants down. to jump out of the corner. He doesn't no, respect it at all. Not for long was he there. And RD battled out right away. Yeah, trying to bet. Yeah, he tries to react to the Psycho Axe. It wasn't a Psycho Axe. Yeah, Big scissors connects. And plus here again. Trying to jump out of the corner again. It's, I mean, the risk reward's worth it. If he gets the corner oh. back, activation Ooh, over hit. here. Knock down to the other corner, you go. Back throw. Meno. Set point here. Instead. And he backs off. Ooh, oh my god, he can't miss. Catches him trying to jump one more film, apparently. The Mike Watson anti air. Mena RD, so close to yeah. grand finals. He will. He's got it. Yes, he does. He's standing wow. up already. It's Mena RD. Three games to one. And for the second time in his life, he has made Capcom Cup Grand Finals. But the last time he did it, it was from the loser's side. And he had a long battle ahead between that and winning against Tokido. This time, he's the one who will start Grand Finals in winner's side. What a position here for the Dominican Republic. What a position for Mena. The first player this week to exact defeat on Zen. He has looked like an unstoppable train the whole way through. Always seemed to find a way to bring rounds back and get the win. But Mena, one step ahead, you could see he'd studied that play, yes. fully understood everything he'd looked for. That loop pick, absolutely spot on. And the reversals, he just couldn't guess wrong. He couldn't guess wrong, David. You know, I think that's a read on Zen, that Zen likes to be very active offensively. It's something we talked about even before the match started. And so Mena's idea coming into that, he shut down the very first offensive opportunity that his opponent even had. And so I think it's very fitting that even at the end, there were still moments when he shut down the offense instantly took his turn back, had stage control almost throughout. His own offense was killer. Yeah, this is the first round. I mean, this round was a statement. I mean, Zen tried to recover from this, but you could argue that the momentum was set from here. Yeah. Look at that, yeah. just perfect I mean, After all, space. this is not the only perfect that Mena had in this. That jump medium in the corner. There were just, like three of those, I think. That one actually friend. didn't get into the corner, but there were three jump mediums in similar situations, and they all worked. Just a perfect angle, catching Zen on ready. Yeah, here's there another it one, is. yeah. yeah. Been his go-to. We've seen him hell attack. We've seen him uh, dash underneath jump-ins. We've seen him do loads of creative stuff. We've seen him slide on the jump-ins as well, but just not ready on this occasion. This, this is a bit great of an opening enforced error. error here. Yeah, that down strong. I wonder if that was supposed to have been EXDP, but whatever. It didn't work out. That was a huge jump to take this uh, second game. Zen got himself back into it, but Mena just relentless with that pressure. And when he was facing pressure, just had the right call when it mattered the most. Zen dropping into the loser's bracket. Mena, win aside, as you said, David. Yeah. Wow, what an achievement. Gotta be feeling good about this. Zen, we're taking a look here at him with the offense. Another thing I like about his game is that he's willing to bring out that command grab, as I said, at the very end of the round. Oftentimes, command grab players will be cautious there, but not him. That is not his style of play. That's not what's got him into this position. And even though he's in losers now, he is still in top three at Capcom Cup, hanging out in losers finals. Again, it's not like he didn't have good series. We're taking a look at another one here. He was just a tick away from taking that. He had the corner here. He definitely was very much alive throughout. But as I said, Mena was able to neutralize the offense, schemed forward, and got the low, and the hit confirm was there, and he knows that he only needs to win one more set to be the very first two-time Capcom Cup champion. In SF5. So, winners finals in the books. We got another one though, down in losers side. Oh, we, we've seen this movie before, haven't we? We have, David? we have. We've we seen have. it a couple of times, mate, haven't we? We have. Yeah, this is of course going to be a, another match between Idom and Mr. Crimson. As you said, they have been playing for a while now in some high-profile moments. It's been back and forth. Uh, 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 we saw it at Red Bull Kumite. Yes. We saw it at Evo. Uh, we're going to see it in the loser's side again. Um, we also saw it at, in South Africa, where I must say, somebody's figured someone out. I'm not going to give it away, but mm. we're going to need to see some magic from one side here to prevent a train that we've been seeing run through this loser's bracket. Both of these guys were picked to go through strong loser's brackets. A lot of people were yes. calling them for a lot of their matches. The only real massive uh, hiccup opportunity there for Mr. Crimson was, of course, Angry Bird. We knew he was going to go to Rashid, but he managed to figure it out and, uh, and get him himself here. I don't want the flip side has been more dominant, apart from a couple of like losses in terms of games, but he's always been on the upside in the matches he's had, and he managed to clutch it out the one time he did face adversity. Both of these guys have done so well in losers. One of them will be playing against Zen 
in the losers final. Yeah, I think the group stage just didn't go quite according to plan for either of them. They ended up in losers, as you said. Since then, 3-0 over Valmaster, 3-0 over Takamura, 3-0 over NL, and 3-2 over Angry Bird mm -hmm. for Mr. Crimson. For IDOM, it's been 3-1 over Bukera, 3-2 over VX Bow, 3-0 over Vega Patch, 3-1 over Ending Walker. And now he's back. When they played at EVO in top eight, I can recall conversations we had with between many of us, in fact, that whoever was the winner of the match between yeah. these two, yeah. many of us thought would win EVO. Didn't quite work out like that. No, no, but the winner did make it into grand finals of EVO and put on a pretty good show, pretty good show which I was mean. IDOM. So again, as you mentioned, they have gone back and forth when they've played over the past couple of years. And what I love about this too is that I think this is the most dominant player in Europe, in Mr. Crimson. This is a guy who has been killing it for years at this point, especially this last year, he's been extremely dominant. Idom got first place at every single offline major he went to this year, except for Evil, where he got second place. So hard to beat that. And they battle against each oh, wow. other here in loser semis. USA versus France. Execution error early there from Mr. Crimson. That's not gonna help him in his journey. And Idom gets the party started. We saw impeccable defense earlier. I don't know if he can do it again here. He is stunned by heavily scaled. Woo. Looks a reset here. Yeah, he's ready for it. I mean, he used to play Laura himself. He saw by the strength of that fireball that reset was coming. Oh, unfortunate with the crouch fist, doesn't connect. But Adam goes in for the kill and he gets it. Great first round there from Adam. USA in the house. The lone representative. Looking to keep them on the map, but of course, Europe and France still in there in the form of Mr. Crimson. Mr. Crimson ready with the anti-air. It's time for his offense. Deadly Dalsam offense. Oh, nice walk back from Idom. Didn't get the whiff punish on the throw attempt though. Oh, that works. Ooh. Counter hit. In. Oh, look at this pressure. Lock it out. Okay, excellent timing. As always, his defense is killer. Yeah, let's get that whiff punish. There's that dash. There's that drill. Great defensive choices from Idom. Two fists in a row. Oh, there's a lot of great up there. Oh, that yeah, out. taken away, melted away by the fire. The awareness of Idol. He's gonna see eight, no? Maybe too far? That's an opportunity, no. Oh, activation dead. time. He's gonna hold this heat. It's gonna be a command grab. One more bet could be enough. Nothing. Super on his side as well. Dashing back. Oh, it's not gonna be enough. This is scary. He would normally slide underneath that kind of jump angle, but the projectile was right there in front of him, David. Had no choice. Checkmate play there from Idol. So clever to set up his approach there in that manner. And one game goes to Idom. Can Mr. Crimson figure out the machine that has been Idom? Especially Idom in losers bracket. I already said to you guys when I saw that Idom in losers is like shin Idom activated. Yeah. Oh no, oh, missed no, the Gale! Another execution it's error. a chance, not a lot of damage, but it is pressure. Oh, oh yeah. It is pressure. He has been missing the meaties, man, to be fair. And so Crimson gets another chance at pressure. The slide will come. Again, <laughs> continues to be his turn. I'm so good on defense though. He knows he just needs to stay in the round. If he can, if he can survive this. No, he doesn't. It's a tick throw and Mr. Crimson gets his first round of the set. And this is what gives Dalsim a chance in matchups like sure, this, David. Sure. As much as he's a keep out character, that rush down up there with the very best in the game. Again, just expertly targeting those dive kicks. He's in again. He can set up some plus frames. He's again, in again now, throw. plus yet again, a lot of advantage for him. Big whip, whip punish. Here, he saved super. Oh, he's in the corner though. Ooh. And he gets three reversal there, he put himself there. Offensive. Could be a trouble now. This round slowly turning around here for Adam. Has to make his opportunity count. This is his meat, it doesn't delay. Oh, yeah. Huge oh, turn goodness. taken and Mr. Crimson capitalizes about as well as he could. It's one more, it's oh, light kick and it's enough. What a piece here. Crimson. Mr. Crimson able to clutch it out after what was a strategic choice that I would disagree with there, putting himself in the corner for that mix up. Yeah, it worked the out. The delay on the crouch heavy after blocking that bolt charge. Yeah, his offense is no joke, not just the character, but you mentioned his history with Laura. He was, of course, the very first CPT event winner a thousand years ago in 2016. Oh, look at that. It's not your turn, it's mine. Can't seem to get going here, keeping him in plus frames. No view reversals here for Mr. Crimson. He's managed to survive this, that's all he needs. Trying to just keep that orange bar up. Oh, Adam's staying alive. He knows he just needs one opening. No, oh, where you going? Goes in. Buttons. What time to press? Can he get it started here? The delay. Get gripped. Stun no longer an issue. It's time to oh, press. No. Back. Just needs one opening here. Adam goes in. Delayed view reversal. Okay, the view reps are gone. But patience by me. Mr. Mr. Me, slide. He's in. Defense. Again. Oh Defense God, by Crimson. The slide.
slide gets hit again. Oh my god, he's gonna block this all out. No come on, grabs coming from Mr. Crimson. He gets it at last. He's gonna take him to the corner. Finally the command grab. Excellent defense, but still caught in the corner. Oh, oh, what a comeback. I don't please. I don't please. Rarely do you see such excellent defense in a losing round oh right there. God, he got got a million times, and yet I still think he was a genius for it. What do you get for all that blocking? I know. <laughs> Nothing, mate. I don't. Absolutely relentless. Beautiful choice of button there to get the party started early this time. And we've seen how important offense is for Mr. Crimson. Scenarios like this aren't going to help him out. He's Tries really to press catching, a button. catching good timings on Mr. Crimson's defensive choices. Oh, yes, again. Big damage incoming. Oh, Just going to yeah. take it. It's guess for game here. It's guess for more. game. Crimson Locks trying to hold on to the red Trust bar. The yeah, that's a great spot. Oh, oh. nice backdash. Here's the, here it is, though. I mean, it's, what do you get for it, though? Absolutely nothing. Just a slide. Beautiful choices from Idom. Much better there on defense than he was earlier. Just backdashing out of the pressure straight away. No reason to worry because the damage sure. isn't going to be that great. And he gets oh, yeah. himself to set game to get himself a match against Zen in losers final and represent USA here at Catcom Cup 9. Speaking of worrying though, I am a bit worried for Mr. Crimson on defense at this point as Idom has definitely solved some of the timing. There's another chance here to see if Crimson can get it right. He tries. There it is, yes. There, excellent work. That short has been his best friend. Oh my goodness. So aggressive is Mr. Crimson. Sorry, is an idol. Just all over him here. Has to go in there. Nice. That, that, that works out. Missed his drill though. That's going to get the party started. So rare. Here goes Idom again. This is all it takes. Delay view Russell doesn't hit. Back yeah. is out of there. At least Crimson's out. Yeah. Walking up and blocking so he the drill goes can't in. get as good Back as he could have gotten. Here we go. Oh, okay. oh it's again. Nice. Well blocked, Fear Vessel. Crimson's in. He can play tricky mix-ups here, yes. Still his turn, no! Oh I my don't god, he's dead! Oh my god, he is dead! What a choice from Idom. He pressed the button at the right time. He was in a terrible situation in the corner, but he reacted well, and he opens up the first set point here against Mr. Crimson. Are we going to have USA versus China in this loser's final? You talked about that offense that Dalsam has. I think we got to see more of it now. I like Crimson going in. When he's been on defense, it just hasn't been enough. So his own offense? Ooh, Easier he's... said than done to get going, of course. Yeah, he's starting to try to cross count those stand shorts. Here it is, here it is. This is what he's got. No, too early! Again, oh no! In the corner, this could be it! Like reversal. No, no, it's two. It's Red press head. buttons, though. Out of the corner, needs to make this count. Catches him low, that doesn't link. I don't like it. He's got no view reversal. He's got opportunity. Oh my god, this. For instance, he has a bar for V Rev or V Shift. No, oh, neither. It's I don't oh, in yet oh, again. One more bet will be enough. Chases the V Shift. There Anything else will stun. No, oh, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Was that intentional? I'm not sure what I don't went for there. That five wasn't me. Of the crossover. He went for the big trick, man. He was maybe getting a little bit too far ahead. But he's still at match point. Great that said, again, I love that Crimson's offense, yeah, looking good. He gets a chance to start it yet again. And oh, taking some turns in here as well. So good. So good. Look at that. What did he get for it? This is what Crimson's got to run. He's in again. Stun is halfway up. What a choice. Oh, honestly, item so good. The meaty overhead leaks. And look at the stun bar. Has to be a wrestle straight away. Slides out. Don't press bars up the slide. It's not your turn. Oh, is it going to be enough? I think it is. I think I don't done it. The defense was too good. The turnaround was too powerful. The awareness and the data he collected over the sets this year, just too strong. And Mr. Crimson, despite valiant efforts, David, will be bowing out of this tournament. Four item who's taken a very strong victory there. Talking about first place at Global Esports Riyadh, first place at CPT France, Spain, Portugal, first at the mix up, first at first attack. And it's not going to be another first again today for Mr. Crimson. It's a great showing for Crimson for sure, but not what he wants. That said, item again, as does happen, that Evo is the victor and moving forward, continuing his loser's run. Idom defended so well that final round. I mean, he knew exactly what Crimson was looking for. The strategic change to go offensive from Crimson. All the throws that were teched earlier from Idom suddenly weren't teched anymore. He just knew what Mr. Crimson was looking for and just blocked it out. Knows he just needs one bit of momentum to get going. And these are the kind of things that can happen. Once that happens, he's just a train. But, I mean, dalsam has got to guess right so many times. <laughs> he tried to enter here there. Yeah, certainly you think of Idom's offense, of course, when you think about his gameplay. But in that last game, that last round especially, there was a lot of offense from Crimson. Yeah. They're yeah. really, he, he built it very well. Yeah, it was and, and I don't blocked and he V-shifted 
through the flame to get his offense then going. So it was in significant part. Defense, actually. Yeah, no, it really was. That took it for Adam. It really was. That last round really impressed me. Not only did he defend very well, but he was aware of what Mr. Crimson was looking for. Mm. Probably because he played him so many times. We see Mr. Crimson make this change in strategy often and try to overwhelm his opponents to close out the win because Dalton can do that. But I was right onto it. It's like, I'm not pressing anything. I'm just, you can keep doing all this. I'm going to get thrown. I'm going to lose here and there. I'm not pressing a single button. I'm not going to get hit by count hit crouch fierce yeah. into crouch medium into ridiculous damage. And it just paid off because once he got his party started, we know that Dalton can't take the kind of pressure. Oh. Oh, that, that was clutch as well in the corner, Absolutely. man. So many moments from Adam. Yeah, this moment here. Oh, activation, that's Next all it takes. That's what I'm thinking of, it. yeah. Good lord, so scary. Gets that activation, goes in. The me, oh. EX, come on, grab. And look at the stun, look oh. at the stun bar. Where are you going? Now it's guess for game. And he survives this somehow. He does, he does, he does. I mean, come on, yeah, grab this, this sequence had been started by that V shift into the corner. Offense began. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's so uncomfortable. That jump light kick, very, very hard to anti-air, especially without a trade. And so I understand Crimson trying to get away from it. That said, not going to cut it. Yeah, I didn't see a single V-shift attempt uh, from uh, Crimson other than the one time. It was relying more on the V-reversals. But of course, as I said earlier, uh, I think yesterday I was commentating, I mean, Laura, one of the most deadly characters to try V-shift on. I mean, she can absolutely rip you to pieces for it. Yeah. Just decided to sit still. Uh, maybe something he could introduce in the future, but easier said than done. Adam always one step ahead. Just phenomenal performance from him. David, you got to be ecstatic right now. America is in the loser's final. I'm trying to be cool, man. I'm just trying to enjoy the match come with on, everybody come else on, here. Come on. I'm sure there's nobody else in the crowd who's completely a homer for the United States, right? Nobody cares, right? Dude, you guys had one American in the entire Top six, was it top eight? It was one 16, American, actually, yeah. but, it, but it was in the top 16. It was. You got, the, you got the most deadly American there, and now he's in the losers' finals looking to do what he couldn't do at Evo and turn this whole thing around. Indeed, indeed. Well, lots of new stuff happening here. We're going to see some new stuff in the next match when it's Gen versus Idol, but we're also going to see some new stuff here with Street Fighter Duel, which oh, is here. coming soon. It's kind of here but now. Very soon, in fact, the release date <laughs> of the newest game in the franchise and our sponsor for this event. Street Fighter Duel has arrived. Street Fighter Duel will be available for download on the App Store and Google Play starting February 28th. That's next week, 2023. This new mobile title takes you on an epic, brand new adventure through the world of Street Fighter as you create your own team of iconic fighters and embark on quests to take down Shadaloo. Street Fighter Duel features an original storyline, stunning graphics, unique battle system, upgrades and equipment, and countless game modes that will keep you engaged for hours on end. Ooh. You can also message in-app and team up with other players to take on even bigger challenges, making this a truly social experience. We're all excited for this game. Uh, I've already pre-registered for myself, I'll have you know, uh, in order to get those pre-registration rewards. I mean, it's been a long enough wait. Let's get it, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, we hope it'll be a complimentary experience for Street Fighter fans of all ages. Uh, look, we have checks notes. Two <laughs> matches left: losers finals and grand finals. And in those, Zhen versus Idom will be in losers finals. And then again, waiting in grand finals, the big boss of the event today, Mena RD. Stick around for that. Be disappointed. If these two don't give me what I want, I may have to come in there and bust them up myself. Amazing awareness there. She makes dangerous look so good. Gotta remember, a cornered animal is the most dangerous. Oh wow, someone just got turned into a hashtag. You I answer. This is where things are gonna get very interesting. Making him sweat with these shurikens. <laughs> we live for these kind of fights. They got the advantage. We gotta start clicking here. That's what happens when you have an irresistible force meeting an immovable object. Time for some good old violence. 
This is how you stay limber. You gotta crack every last limb. <laughs> what in the world did we witness? That was unbelievable! He was obsessed, you see, with finding an appropriate vessel for this power. Hmm. Showtime, baby! Prepare. Fight with all your heart! An honor, to be sure. so lucky to be at this event a 10 minute walk away from my very own home it's been a blast for me i'll tell you that to just be able to mosey on over have a great time watching this throughout the week seeing some of the absolute very best street fighter 5 action that we have seen throughout this game's lifespan and it's a very fitting situation for it considering that this will be the final capcom cup for it hard to imagine a better outro for that don't say it out loud david don't i mean you're breaking my heart here. Let's let's get to that later. We'll get let's to the rest of the later. It. Let's do it. Right now, as far as the present is concerned, we still have a couple of Street Fighter games left yes. to determine our champion and say farewell to Street Fighter 5 in terms of Capcom, Capcom Cup sense. And one of them right now is going to be an absolute banger. Now, we've talked about Zen's ability to read on defense. We've yes. talked about his ability to read on offense. That has been rivaled. I think the only person who's rivaled that to his level is Idol. Sure. I mean, this guy has been absolutely tearing through loser's bracket. Every time it looks like the round is over, he just needs one moment to get it going. And of course, the addition of a command grab mm. adds a, that additional layer to what's yeah. been an extremely reliable defense for Zen. 
That's right, we'll see if he can make it happen. He has in the past. Let me tell you about his 2022. First place, Combo Breaker. First place, CEO. First place, ECT. First place, Defend the North. First place, NEC. Second place, EVO. But that's pretty good still. Listen, David, could you do the same for, for Zen? Just, just read me through his, please. First place, Capcom Cup 9 LCQ. <laughs> I mean, hey, again, hey, that's a premiere in itself. Oh, no doubt. No doubt was one of the hardest tournaments of the year for sure. But again, not like he's brand new. He's been playing. He showed up in the China CPTs before. But in terms of this kind of a big showing here at an in-person, offline, international major, this is the first time, well, really, LCQ the first time, but this is the result of that. Losers finals for Zhen here from Shenzhen, China, studying in Newfoundland, Canada, and soon to be in Toronto, Round Canada one. as well. And of course, Idom from New York City. Losers final, make some noise, let's go! Woo! Zen starts off swiping away that fist. He knows he can't let the party start with Laura. I mean, we've seen what's happened to others. Back that shit out. Not quite there. Oh man, that ankle not been working for him. It's been so reliable. That was Oh my goodness, I don't believe. It's a big chance for offense right away. Yeah. Straight away with the This does give trigger to Jen. Oh, that's what's out. May not even matter. As soon as he saw that whip, he went straight into the fears. Big damage on this kill. Wait, hold on the level. <laughs> not quite, oh. but still. Oh, oh Jen. Big chance. Can he do it? Big chance. No, doesn't get the probe out. She's blinking. Side. Pop, oh, yes. Oh, what's he pressing? Us, yeah? Again! Oh, again, he can't miss, I told oh, you. He could absolutely make it. Again, he doesn't take again? it. Again? He maybe okay. just was waiting for offense here? Yes. Oh, what a choice of fighters. Zen, are you serious? He didn't be reversed the cycle two. action. Instead, he blocked right. and pressed the medium afterwards. These guys have been brave. Studying. I'll tell you what, it gets harder to win the way he wants to win it because some of being given away. These guys have been studying his sets and plays and plays. Starting out pretty well for him. He's mostly towards the corner. Yes, enforcing it now. Jump around for the funky uh, hurtbox and movement on that option. Confirm uh, comes in. He does take the first A tiny wall back. It's not over yet. Wow. Yo, and not just the perfect carry, but if you think about like maybe a half of the previous round two, where he also dominated in the corner, he just didn't have. Quite yeah, enough to do it, but he's, he's had like a round and a half that's been killer. I still absorbed that though. Okay, Jack this time. Great right, throw range from Bison. Gets lowered down to the, to the corner. Oh, he's Woo! adapted his anti air choices. Look at his kid adapted on the fly. He gets hell attack. Idom doesn't want to use that for your boss. He needs it for the comeback. Oh, he's not ready for the dash. So unusual. And even Idom's getting caught off guard. Maybe. Oh, grab for kill. Oh! No! Zen, listen, you called it. From, from that first round onwards, all the way to this point. Yeah. Absolute win. momentum in Zen's corner. Looking just like the guy we round saw on that incredible win streak this week. But right. there will be a period where Adam gets the party started. And I, I'm curious to see how he handles it when he does. Okay, Adam a little bit there first. Oh. Okay, dashing in. He has stolen a million turns this evening. His dash has been the option for him after the elbow. Stun racking up. Again. Okay, oh, way too far. To it down. I don't want it that round to be over with. Try to spare out of each shift. Doesn't come. Patience oh, there. But. Plus frame. Again. Again. Not there. Oh. <laughs> Underneath this item. Trying to get things going. Nice. The link will come. Take the knockdown. Such a good buff. She gets that now. And you're going to get grip stuff. Item. Gets himself back in the momentous position. Getting around back here, Round slowing two. down some of this Zen pressure. Back to neutral we go. That's not quite. Oh, get caught on the EX scissors. Collapses it with a standing roundhouse, David. That's out sad, of there, though. Yeah, Zen's defense. Oh, that's nice. Not OK, well, the funky works. timing on roundhouse. Again, he checks it. I don't know, he's, I, I have a tiger here just seeing everything Zen wants. Oh, Backing off window. to the perfect spot for Zen. Fucking man grab set up. Goes. Trying to set up tricky stuff. He has V-Skill too. That's oh, exactly what he brings up. Oh, he didn't realize. Didn't go for the second command grab. Just holds up back to Zidal. 
And there's no fear of Russell option here if you can get the party started. No, yeah. Item is just hoping for one hit to get things going here, and he may not find it. Oh, wow. Sen with all the right reads. I mean, even going in like that presents its, its risks. Final round. But it was the correct choice. He closes out that round. And he's been fine with that. He has been fine with taking risks. Wow, he's pressing the buttons, boy. Hey, Ilan finds well it. Punished. He should be correct again. Again, it is the, that crouch medium after the block two normal from Bison. Yeah, oh, he called that. He called that. Invincible to projectiles, but not to this. As in corner yes. there. Are we going to have one apiece here, David? I don't want more bet. We'll do it. And I'm looking for it way oh, too far. Think like back to that wins. first round when Zen almost made the comeback. He's looking for the same thing here. I don't got to oh play strong goodness. defense. Just taking the grab. Block. Famously, oh it rarely attacks, but he's in trouble. Big damage. I don't think he can kill. Okay, he can't kill. He's got one more cycle. So he's going to reset with a command grab. Takes the knockdown. Oh, he knew. He knew. He went for the command grab. And finally, finally, somebody bets it. And bets correctly. <laughs> I called it. It was almost a bit too obvious. Though, well, you know, yeah. Easier to do up here for sure. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> but yeah, that has actually oh, been a really important round closer for him. We've seen low, short, or just regular command grab at the end of rounds many, many times throughout the week. Then. That stand up backwards. It's a stand medium to whiff punish. It's so clean from Jen. Building up that gray life. Some. Again, Idom just finds the button at the right time. Missed his meat. He doesn't matter. Gets the reset. Look at the stun bar. Hoping the force movement. He does. Yeah, just gets the recovery. He's in the corner now. Gonna activate. Ooh. Oh, that's a bad trade. Again, he reads out. Oh, doesn't get the punish, though. Oh, but I don't have to take advantage. Good block. Back this is out. Yeah, this time. Expecting it. Dashing Delay, it. The party started here for Idom. Oh, he's just holding up. Good block. The throw. EX cycle blast. No. Just no. goes in. Oh, that was a bad choice. You do not challenge that. I think it said, did that say cross up? <laughs> did I see cross up? No, that was disgusting. That was behind her head. Zen making the bet there with an EX head stomp. Shen keeping it slow. Same with the Idon. Both comfortable to play at this pace. They both know that once things get going, it's going to go a mile a minute. Same idea. Great option to get in. He's got Oki. He's got pressure here. Okay, he's and still, Idon caught. Oh, still stuck. Activation. That was ambitious. Oh, this time he gets it. Walks forward this time with a stand medium. Adjustment in oh. real time from Idom. No, oh, he missed his punish. Again, it does say cross up. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Jen, please. Jen, please. I mean, what I don't understand, David. Look, we saw him against Kawano earlier. I had to speak to the kid. I went up to him and I said, you played that Colleen match like you play it every week. And I asked him, who's the Colleen in China? He said, I don't play Colleen in China. I just watch them on YouTube. Mm. Are you serious? He's clearly watched a lot of Idom. Yeah. And he's implementing what he's watched into this game. But easier said than done. Watching is never enough. No, no. Clearly, it's for Zen. And not really a privilege that other people can have when playing against Jen. There's not that much footage of the guy. He's in the corner yet again. He's got big advantage. Here. Already half-life down is Idom. That's meaty. Idom's going to make some kind of right read here. Yeah, he's looking for the meaty to get started. Here's Jab oh, instead. He finds the right time to press that button. He's in. Big Whoa, read! Jen's out of there. The EX is not enough. He needs a little bit more. That. Oh, and he was provoking it to the jab block. Jab block just in case of the EX. It's match point for Zhen. Idom's got a long road ahead. My goodness, the crowd trying to get behind Idom here. Oh, get clattered. That medium finally gets caught. Zhen in pole position to get a stun here. Idom doesn't press the button. Oh, he gets clattered again. Huge. It won't be enough, but this will be close Adam to being the out. final. Oh, come Oh, the reset. Stuck still. Stuck still. Zen smells blood. When will Idom move? When can oh he move? Oh my goodness, the EX what a bet. Tacked right away, throw. neutralized right away. Yeah, Idom would yeah. love to get things going, but Zen moving forward is trying to prevent that. Not quite. Yeah, doesn't want to let him get that fireball. He's trying to get that medium. Beautiful V reverse. V shift story. Oh, get out of there. Okay, V shift's gone now. He's used them all. This time he's in. Here we go. Idom gets the party started. He's Knocked just got to run it. Oh, he's not ready for the V-Shift again. The block! The punish! Is enough! Shen will take it! He will move on 
to Grand Finals, eliminating Idom in third place. The wow. 2019 Capcom Cup champion. His title defense is no more. There will be someone who doesn't repeat, but not necessarily someone who's new, as we'll get into the Grand Finals shortly. But Zhen, wow. Fantastic match that he played right there versus Idom. And again, it's not just that he has excellent offense, although clearly, clearly excellent offense, but in those moments when Idom needed to get things going, he was able to neutralize it a lot. The last round was a perfect example of that. And he, even in this round, when Idom started out so well, Jen almost made this complete comeback. This was close. And that really set the tone. Yeah, and that crash medium that was his best friend for the early stages of the set finally got clattered twice in that final round. Adjusting his timing did Zen to punish it. There's that tiny walk back to with punish that stand medium. And Idom adjusted later with a tiny walk forward. Adjusting his anti ears after yes. getting caught by jump medium so many times. I mean, this kid is so ready, so aware. Yeah, that next option's always there. And now he's going to be oh. going up against Mena RD in the grand finals. It's China versus the Dominican Republic. It's Zen, the newcomer. The LCQ qualifier, David, who's booked his place, loses the side, and will look to try and get the run back, reset the bracket, and do what no one has ever done before, win Capcom Cup from an LCQ, mm. and as your first ever major tournament. What a story. I mean, I'm <laughs> no surprised Idol didn't, didn't respond to that. He even did the frame kill with the crouch heavy. Yeah, there, again, there were some great moments here for that both. Horrible, but that was horrible. So you could see Zen mixing it up really well had just consistently strong offense. And again, you know, not like Idom was entirely out of it, but so many of these moments when typically Idom would really get going, really start raging. Yeah, this is a couple of stand strongs that didn't work out for him, that's no. for sure. Uh, typically when he could get things going, here's an example, right? Uh, he just didn't quite get as far as he usually does. Again, neutralized by Zhen. Also wasn't able to punish, punish any of the V-shifts, you know? We've seen uh, Adam and Laura's in general make an absolute meal of, uh, of predictable V-shifting. Mm. But Zen's guessing on defense was just too strong. And, he, and honestly, despite oh. the fact Adam had some great moments, Zen yeah, was comfortable yes. in this matchup, which really surprised me. Yeah, the comfort of him in general, I think, has been fantastic to watch. You can see him up on stage. Doesn't look like he's too worried. Doesn't look like he's too nervous. But again, throughout this, and I think the end of this round is a fantastic example as Adam felt the need to take the risk of yeah. that overhead. It's just really a sign that like the offense has been neutralized more than he wanted. Zen, just a fantastic performance on every side of the match. David, we've seen some amazing things happen. I mean, I remember Capcom Cup when we had so many blowouts in the first round, everyone was stunned. Have we ever seen anything quite as crazy as this? Zen making the run from the LCQ to the Capcom Cup group stages yes. to this point. Losing to Mena, okay, but he is in grand finals of Capcom Cup 9. This is insane. Have we seen anything like this before, David? I can't recall it. So if you're thinking about the group stage, he beat Big Bird 2-0, Giko 2-0, Momochi 2-1, Mono 2-1, Mortsi 2-0, and then you can see in this uh, top 16, he continued to have can I just say before fantastic continue? performance. 3-1 over Kawano, 3-0 over Angry Bird, and then, yeah, it's only been Mena who's shut him down so far. That group you just called out, those names you just called out. Yeah. I mean. It's quite a group. Yeah. I, I mean, if you go back to that mono match, I mean, that was super close. That was probably one of the closest we saw the team It losing. was. Yeah, that really could have gone either way. But for Zhen, it went his way. Now, Mena RD, you know that he's the Capcom Cup champion back in 2017. He also, this is his fourth time in Capcom Cup. He was here at 19. He was here in 2018. Of course, 2017 is the one that he took first place in. So this is his fourth Capcom Cup. It's, of course, the very first Capcom Cup for Zhen. If you want Mena RD to take this thing from winner's side, let me hear you. And if you guys are rooting for young boy Zhen to do the impossible and reset and win this, let me hear you. Let's go. Zhen versus Mena RD. Zhen loses side. Mena RD, winner side. Of course, they played before. This was the winner's finals. Mena RD, three games to one. Not expecting any differences here. Nope, exactly the same stuff they're loading in with. 
Man, when Mena played, his Luke was killer, right? Remember back to how much control he had, he how he shut down insane. the offense right away? So we'll, we'll see if that same kind of stuff continues. We are loading into Grand Finals here at Capcom oh, Cup 9. Let me hear ya! Let's go! Starting out with advantage. He could shut down. Oh, he's ready. Quick rush to the buttons. And it's a familiar position here for Zen. Is he ready for this offense? He struggled against earlier before. He is a, it's going to be another stunning start from Mena RD. The opening here. What a start by Mena. Every little interaction, seemingly. He jumps back when he no longer felt like he had control. That. He wants to get back that. to where he feels comfortable. And this is a comfortable spot. Meets him in the air. Not only did he stop throwing fireballs wow. in case of jump, the man dashed in and did jump forward. He knew exactly what Shen was up to. What an incredibly dominant first round. By early days here, can Jen make the adjustment he needs? Well, he's playing slowly now. He's trying to get that B skill. Not easy to do versus the fireball from Luke. <laughs> trying to control oh, stuff. He's pressing them buttons in the string. Nice whip punish. And it backs off. Oh, okay, big whip there. Yes. Oh, it's a button. He was going for the late roundhouse. It didn't work. Has to put that jump in, it's the throw straight away. Oh, it's just decision making on offense, which has been ridiculous. Oh, nice choice. We didn't see that the first set. Big oh. bait, switches sides. We didn't see that the first set either. He's going to do it again. No, he doesn't. Oh, and Zed finally makes the correct read. We could be in for a long haul, David. We I think, could be in for a long one. Man, I think you're right. Just based on how those interactions went right there, the reads are absolutely informed by what we saw before, and they're already on the next layer. Throw it, unfortunately, lost the piece of fireball as a result, but that's cool for Jen. Moving forward still. Yeah, Menace is pressing the buttons. Again. Oh, what a V-shift. Big punishing coming. Charged up. Doesn't get the side switch, though. Walk up throw. He's playing so ridiculously well. Ooh. Too far, but still doing all right. Oh, that unfortunate nerf from Bison. That doesn't work anymore. Needs to be a counter hit. That works. Yeah, Jen's in. He gets advantage. Yes. He can still press here too. Ooh, WCA. He did oh, it anything? He did, it again. He did yes. it again. Mena, you have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Last time we got the wake up CA, he was able to close it out. Will he get it this time? The activation is guess for game. Protect. He backs off. He yes, spots. he was stuck for so long throwing the V trigger. It's Jen in. He oh. finds the hit. He finds game number one. That was huge. That ability to guess right, recover from that activation situation, take the throw, he made the right call, and then get it back in his favor. Then reacted with the EX headstorm. Great awareness, great reactions. Then one. one up here, but he is still in loser side. Right. Mena shouldn't be deterred though. Playing incredibly well and really making Zen uncomfortable when he can. Look yes. Another great start to a round. The opening from Mena RD. Time to harass Zen though, putting up the wall. And so fine, Mena RD. Sees the pressure's over, no big deal. Back to where he also feels good. That range. That oh, that works. Oh, okay. Finding the frames of infall in the middle of that dash was Jen. Oh, just able to block that. Almost caught the button. Great timing on that jump from Mena. He gets caught walking forward again. That's him trying to jump out. He can make a drink. Oh, nice button from Mena. Oh, good confirm. Mena again trying to stay away. Trying to play One patiently. Oh, Back my strong. Mena, please stop. Again, the, the frames. Button. He's going to the psycho. He didn't want to have the corner. He's going to get in the corner anyway. Jen's defense has got to come into play. We've seen it before. It looks good. Try to start. It's gone. Psycho has gone. He gets hit. That's that. He's going to get. Oh, oh. The early wake up back throw. Mena just getting his spacing wrong there. Or wasn't anticipating that. Maybe went for some kind of delay, David. I believe that's right. Yeah, but Jen was right. He got the grab right away. Right, that's well tech though. Oh, that's gonna hurt. He had not pressed the button in a while, and as soon as he did, he was right. It was a crush counter. Oh, oh, okay, oh, oh, already. So the cycle is coming. Oh, it's a great effect. Is that crash medium confirmed? EX confirmed. Jens up yet again. How many times have we seen this already? Here's the chance from NRT. Yeah, managed to use that really well to slow down this moment. He's mixed up his defense so well, David. Is it going to be a button? Is it going to be a wake-up DP? He's got fireballs on deck. 
Triggers on deck. Mena trying to neutral jump as you can see over maybe activation point. Wow. The super comes again. If you're gonna take this bet, wow. why not do as much damage as possible? Mena is in complete drago mode. Went for the stand for a bait, didn't come. Not ready for that. Oh, oh that is Jen wow. trying to grab. You got suppressed. <laughs> suppressed by the skill too. Mena RD so deadly when he gets going. Gets himself another round. And he only does that when there's no meter there for the V-Shift. He's not used it outside of that. Yeah, he's very disciplined. He's respecting Zen's reactions. That's what he should. Finally box the X's and tries to dash forward afterwards though. Hey. That works. Towards heavy connects. V-Shift's out of there, does Zen. Mm -hmm. Priority just to be away. Now he's in though. Delayed bro this time. Wow, wakes up Ooh. with a back roundhouse against the surprise jumping. Wake up buttons finally works. Was then what on earth in the middle of your string? Right? And big moment. CA. He's about to get super. No. Oh, it's it's just a, it, yeah, the combo route doesn't work for that. Oh. See, eh? Hey, out of there. And again, as we had talked about before, that's been a scope on Zen. The round ender is command grab if he has V trigger up. And now we've seen in back to back matches, Idom and Mena have gotten out of it just at the last second to take their rounds. Finally, round at one. last, we're seeing people Fight. with the Zen command grab. One apiece here, two games away, David, from being your Capcom Cup 9 champion, Mena RD. And the crowd behind him here as he attempts to do it. Taking his turn right away, and again, just so comfortable. Not just with fireballs, but as we've seen, he's jumped in, he's looked for anti-airs, he's dashed in too if he thinks that Jen's not looking for it. It's just everything that he has uh, available to him here. Yeah, the whip one is just gonna awesome. work. Of course, he didn't have charges, he walked forward. There had to be hell attack, couldn't be scissors. Nice Still just totally him. in control here as Menace, looking for scissors or slide. And here on comes Jen now. Oh, it's a fact that's this time. Meta makes the right read again. Nice stand up, stand short, stand, stand jab there. Just jump out. Then it will look to activate. Here it is. In the back throw. He actually got punished there on that jab. He didn't convert it. Yeah, pushing his opponent out again. EX again. Of course, we loop that trigger from slowly back, but not when you get hit, it goes away. Jen's in now. What a button. Hey, You're big hit. Here, though. That should be it. Cycle good. Oh, there you go. Zen bringing that round back, but you almost feel scared for Zen. Is, he's a, is, he's a, is it just me? No, yeah. I almost feel like, watch out now. Because Mena has got, again, he does it at the right time. It's that strategic awareness from Mena. Cool for Bison to deal with. Without the V-Shift there. He does have that now. The V-Skill Fireball. Load it up, there it is. And Jen in. Yeah, this was started off, by the way, by his... Wake up, okay, stand, yeah. medium punch, David. Wow. Side switch? No, not quite. He has the meaty throw, though. Pressure. Just two Zen moves in. Hoping to see Fireball. Nothing came like that, but it is his turn still. Ooh, I thought he was going to hell attack that. That's a risky neutral jump. Timing on that Psycho Crusher. He's still going meaty there with the CA on... Uh, yeah, he's doing nothing up the Psycho X. Man, that's definitely conditioned him, but he's going to get open up. Too far! And has a little bit of that trigger left. Slowly creeps up that gauge. Whereas Jen's doing the opposite, slowly going away. Crusher will be gone shortly. Oh, nice. And as oh, soon as it was, Mena's moving. One of Look at the time. Takes. He's got super. He's got enough meter to kill. If he finds the right hit, Jen's already in trouble. Yeah, Zen doesn't want to go to 1 1. He wants to try and get this 2. Oh, it just reached. Oh, why not? Why not? And what? Mena RD found it. Unfortunate for Zen. Mena wow. takes advantage. That could be a huge swing. Look, to be up 2-1 right now if you're Zen, huge. Listen. Instead, it could be Mena, who is a game away from taking Capcom Cup. David, it's one thing being in a finals like this when you've never played a tournament of this magnitude. It's another thing being in a finals like this and being hit by something like that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how, how he's going to recover, if at all. And Mena can been able to it. settle himself down, but yeah, yeah. Mena back to the game plan. And Zen, his credit has been walking forward a lot more. Just patient. Trying to get B-Skill up occasionally, but other than that... Oh, oh no, misconfirmed! Work. It's going it's well Mena. for Mena. That wake up CA has suddenly turned things around. That's fine for Shen. Didn't get too much out of it, though. Again. Oh, oh Mena! Goodness. Mena, so correct with the read. So, so slippery on defense. 
crowd's going to be heavy worse this time. Not going to be the toughest strategy catch and try to approach. That should be it. Mena RD. One game away. Snatching victory from the jaws of the feet with that CA reversal on Psycho Axe on hit. What a call. He knew the distance was too far to link. And now he gets himself two tournament points, and it's a great start. Indeed, he's oh, looking the for the big stop out. here. Stun right hit. away. Jen is in huge trouble. We have seen him make comebacks as we saw versus Idon, but man, right now, Mena seemingly can do no wrong. Plus frames yet again. And Jen, to what effect though? Okay, he's out of the corner, but that's fine for Mena. He still has had control here. No, Jen. Into the corner, scheming now to try to find something good. Command grab, he oh was out of there again! Goodness. At the end of rounds, that oh has been the go-to. Mena RD is one round away from being the very first two-time Capcom Cup champ. Wow, he's playing so good, Mena. A man possessed after oh, cursing. Commentator's cursing. Shut up, F-word. <laughs> You're jinxing it. It's a lot of red up there, but shen has got the corner. He's pressing, he's hoping to bait the V-shift. Wow, Instead, catching the dash again. was Mena RD, the awareness. Off the charts right now, looking for V-Skill, nothing. Again, he's so clever with his choices. That's the whole this, the jumping surprises. Zen, he's in the corner, this is where he's got so much mileage. No hell attack on that neutral jump again. Anti-air is even. Try to pay it out, gets the hit. A few more guesses will be enough, this could be it here, David. That's a big oh, opportunity, yeah, though. Yeah. Shut down, trying to choice. find it. Still Zen. Alive. Oh, he and actually dashed forward lives. and pressed the button. He actually dashed forward. <laughs> he still lives. It is not good night quite yet. Oh, no, that's not a good start, though. Misses his whiff attempt. I think it's a good start here. Controlled by Mena RD. The knockdown, he will take advantage of it a little bit. But this has largely been about him having control in mid range. Then look at the knockdown. Okay, into what is the question? Yeah, watch out for that jump. Menas used so well. Here we go. Stun mounting. Well, Tex. Menas defense so good. Still alive. Oh, he guesses right again. He's gonna look to activate buttons. No ex for Menas. That and so instead, it's jump. Yeah, that's been key for him. Jumping There's over the, the ball under. with punish. Block confirm here. Mena RD has again. it. Expecting the fireball. Oh my God, could this be it? One more opening for Mena RD to become your Capcom 9 champion. Backs away, it lags, he's got two more of those. No meter for Bison. He's trying to bait something out here for Zhen. Zhen is stuck on the ground. Feet planted as he tries to move forward. More, Activation, why not? Psycho from full screen is going to be okay. No, never mind. It's Mena RD. 2016 was Knuckle Dude. 2017 was this man right here. 2018 was Gachigun. 2019, Ida. And 2023, Capcom Cup 9. Champion, two-timer, Mena RD! Take a bow, he played like a man possessed. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your two-time Capcom Cup champion, Mino RD!
of course, this trophy is not the only thing that's coming back to the Dominican Republic. Maureen, I think you have something else for our champion. Let me take this for you for a second, brother. One more time for our champion, Mena R.D. Come on. Mena. Mena, Mena, Mena. Mena, 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 Mena. All right, Mena. For the second time now, we have seen your family, your brotherhood, your country rush the stage. Is there anybody in this crowd that you would like to shout out? The only shout out I would like to give is to the fighting game community. All of y'all, all of y'all are my family. When I first, when I won the first one, I didn't really know anybody. And it, I was all about the DR, but it's all about y'all now. It's all about the FTC. Thank Great you so much. That our mic wasn't on. And I'm... Wow. Capcom champ right here. Now, Street Fighter V has come to a close, but I've always wanted to ask you, what has Street Fighter V brought to your life? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, I remember I used to dream about being able to travel and I couldn't imagine it. I, I never went outside of the Dominican Republic and just thanks to Street Fighter, I was able to see the world. Mena, you are officially the only two-time Capcom Cup champion in the history of Street Fighter. What does this moment mean to you? It's actually, it's, it's just the beginning. I really want this to be a message to the next generation. I already had a chance back in 2017, and thanks to God, I'm here again, but I just want every kid out there, not only in the Dominican Republic, out there to see that if you really try, if you really do what you like, things can turn out like this. So keep going, never stop. We need to blow the roof off of this place. One last time, give it up for your Capcom Cup 9 champion, Mino! Vicious let you all know earlier, the hits do not stop there. I think he has something to say. Vicious, where you at, bro? Make some noise for my man. Give it up one more time for your champion of Capcom Cup 9, Men RD, ladies and gentlemen. The best to ever do it in the realm of Street Fighter V. As I told you all earlier, I have somebody very special with me for a big announcement to come for the future of the fighting game community as well as the world of Street Fighter. None of this would be possible, of course, without your guys' support continuously being there, event after event, in the chat, in person, watching the streams, the entirety of it, all thanks to you guys. And I have a very special somebody to say thank you to each and every one of you. So with the amount of energy you just gave Men RD, I need you to help me introduce my special guest. Let me hear it one more time for the Capcom president and COO, Sujimoto-san.
ず最初にカプコンカップ優勝おめでとうございます。Before anything, we would like to congratulate our Capcom Cup 9 champion, Mena RD. まだ世界各国のファン、コミュニティの方々、大会オーガナイザーの皆様、1年間を通じてカプコンプロツアーを盛り上げていただき、誠にありがとうございます。We'd like to take this time to recognize our fans, the players, the tournament organizers around the world for making this season of the Capcom Pro Tour so special. Thank you very much. And as many of you are expecting, the next season of the Capcom Pro Tour will feature our upcoming game, Street Fighter VI. This season's biggest milestone. カプコンはこちらの施策を特別に用意しました。今日は映像を用意していますので、ご覧ください。And to make this next season of the Capcom Pro Tour as memorable as possible, we have some special plans that we'd like to share with you today. Please take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially at the Capcom Pro Tour. Make some noise! Shall we begin? Ain't no giving up, that's a no go. No excuses here, just a let's go. I, I don't speak no other language. If you wanna be safe, stay dangerous. To celebrate the launch of Street Fighter VI, we are supporting Capcom Cup 10 with a grand prize of one million dollars. With a total prize pool of over two million dollars. Mirasan, 2023年は新しいタイトルストリートファイター6の大会を世界中のファンの皆さんとともにぜひ盛り上げていたいと思いますので、ぜひともご協力ください。よろしくお願いします。The next season of the Capcom Pro Tour will be played fully on Street Fighter VI. We hope you'll help make this as make the season as exciting as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, nothing but love and appreciation for you guys. Make it up one more time. Let me hear some noise for yourselves. That concludes Capcom Cup number nine, baby. See you next season.
David, David, how much did they say? Did I hear that? Did I, did I hear that correctly, bro? I mean, I think there's a typo on the screen. I think there's one zero too much. I got news for you. That's no typo right there. Over two million dollars in total Damn. prize pool. First place gets one million dollars. I hope you are ready for that and what that's gonna mean Ooh. for people getting involved in this upcoming Capcom. Pro Tour, amazing announcement there. I'm also super hyped to see the announcement of offline premieres coming back. I'm oh, looking forward to that good. stuff. That sounds good. And of course, the return of World Warrior that exposed us to all these corners of the world and all these amazing players hidden away. That's back as well, David. Great news. Yeah, I love all those announcements like that. Again, congratulations to Mena RD. Mena you know, RD! There are, there are different ways to be the best throughout a game's lifespan. There's winning first place at everything, and then there's winning when it really counts and Mena RD won when it really counted at Capcom Cup 2017 and tonight at Capcom Cup 9. What a way to go out for him and what a way to conclude Street Fighter V and Capcom Cup 9. My name's Ultra David. I've been here with F Word. Thanks a lot as always, Such man. Such a pleasure, man. Such a pleasure. I hope you all had a good night. We'll catch you next year for the Capcom Pro Tour number 10.
Thank <laughs> you.